What is up, everyone? I am your host, Sporadic Erratic. I hope y'all have been enjoying Questing for Glory, Hope, and Healing 2. And if you are just joining us, welcome. I hope you are having a lovely morning or evening. Whatever time it is for you, we are here raising funds for the National Alliance on mental illness and coming right up we have an awesome speed run of shin Mekami tensei for the neutral ending i just want to remind y'all that we have an incentive that is going to cut off real real fast at the beginning so now is the time to snipe if you want to name the main character in the lead at 50 dollars is Pokechu in second place at 35 dollars is he ho and in third place at 30 dollars and 30 cents is mothman you know i have some strong feelings about both he ho and mothman so if y'all want to make my little heart flutter please get those donations in type exclamation point donate in the chat to see where you can go to donate right now but that run that run is ready we're ready to go so here is freedom pulse with shin megami tensei for neutral ending yo what up what up everyone hello hello hope we're all having an amazing night evening daytime whatever time it may be for y'all uh i am freedom pulse frito free p Whatever uh, derivative of freedom that y'all decide to choose, there's several going around chat, but appreciate y'all being with us. This is Shin Megami Tensei 4. We'll be going for the neutral ending, and we'll be explaining exactly what that means in a little bit. But uh, without further ado, let's get started with this run. We uh, will have plenty of time to kind of explain everything that's going on. So uh, if we're all ready, I will get started in 3, 2, 1, go. So uh, this game starts out like uh, all great RPGs with a uh, with a disclaimer. I was gonna make a make a joke about the opening cutscene, and then I remembered there there is a disclaimer here. And uh, this is Shin Megami Tensei Four. It was released in 2013 on the 3DS. It is was at the time the newest entry in the long running Shin Megami Tensei series with uh, a brand new game, depending on where you live in the world, uh, already out. Where I live, it's going to be out in like 20 minutes. So, very excited for that. This game, along with the disclaimer, starts off like all great games with us uh, randomly flying through the sky. Whilst uh, strange voices decide to uh, just kind of yell at us. It's probably nothing, probably no significance. We are just a, an ordinary, uh, ordinary character after all. I will need to know uh, the final name for the main character, though because that will be coming up in a couple seconds. Okay, well, I'm going to refresh the page one more time. And it looks like Pokechu is still our winner. All right, we got Pokechu coming in. I have it up so I can spell it. Okay. Choo. Looks right. All right, we are the uh, regular ordinary man, Pokechu. With uh, with a very deep voiced man, very happy to uh, to hear our name. So, like the uh, we mentioned earlier, we're going to be going for neutral ending. This game features four endings, three main endings, and one kind of bad slash joke ending. It's more bad ending than joke ending. Uh, the bad ending is called uh, nihilism or white ending. Uh, where we basically skip the entire end game. And otherwise we have law, chaos, and neutral endings. Law and chaos ending each feature their own unique final dungeon and final boss, whereas neutral ending we do both the law and the chaos final dungeons in one run. And uh, then we, uh, we party, we raise the roof in a very literal sense. In a few hours you'll see what I mean by that. But we start off our dream, suddenly takes a turn for the weird. We're uh, this strange medieval-looking dude, and we enter into a modern city that's uh, very much on fire. It's uh, quite, the, uh, quite the hot establishment, if you will. And meanwhile, this other dude introduces himself. He's like, hey, we're going to be like best friends. I'm Walter, and we're going to change everything. I'm like, all right, seems legitimate, cool. 
Uh, suddenly, we find ourselves in this very strange desert place. You know, vast wasteland reminds me of my home state of Arizona. Uh, sand as far as the eye can see. Desolation. Probably a cactus somewhere. Not a real homie. We introduce, uh, introduce to our second friend. Uh, this guy's name is Jonathan. And he's like, yo. You see this place? Isn't it great? You should, like, side with me and keep everything the exact same way it is. Because it's great here. We're like, all right. It seems simple enough. Our vision then fades to a different scene where the strange little girl speaks to us in a very rabbled speech, being like, hey, Pokachu, you should revive me. And with that, our, uh, our very strange dream suddenly comes to an end. get so many feelings and i see the atlas logo right this uh a little background on this game for me personally uh like i said this game came out in 2013 at the time i was between sophomore and junior year in high school and this was like the first rpg that really got me into just rpgs in general i had enjoyed some rpgs before uh like mega man x command mission some of the final fantasies etc uh, and had played Persona 4 and really, really liked that. Was kind of into Persona. But then I saw E3 that year happened, and they, the year before happened, and they were showing trailers for this game called Shin Megami Tensei 4. And I knew about the series due to Persona and also because Dante was in uh, a little known game called uh, Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. But I saw the E3 trailer. I'm like, yo, this game looks legit. I want this game. So I picked it up on release and. Uh, to call it a life-changing experience might seem a little overblown, but considering I'm currently sitting in front of you all at 9.45 at night playing speedrunning this game for charity, uh, might be a little, little accurate. That's such a cool origin story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I absolutely adore this game. Happy to be running it for y'all. And, uh, our dream apparently ends by a, uh, very, uh, very friendly lad. And, uh, the sheep in the background. Shoutouts to that sheep that's just chilling in the background of this area every time you visit it. It's a very lovely sheep. But, uh, this dude here, his name is Issachar. He is, uh, as we are told, our childhood best friend. He's like, yo, I'm gonna give you some exposition. We're, we just turned 18 this year, and in this place that we're at, the Eastern Kingdom of Mikado... On the 18th birthday of everyone in the kingdom, they are required to go to the capital and take what is called a gauntlet right. To become something that's called a samurai. We're not really told what a samurai is right now, but apparently they're pretty awesome. We're also introduced to this uh, this world's caste system. There are 2.5-ish casts in Mikado. There are the luxurers, who are the very wealthy. There is casualries, who are the, the poor... The poorer people, which is what Flynn and Issachar, or excuse me, what uh, Pokachu and Issachar are. And then the, like, 0.5-ish are the samurai. They're very special, kind of looked up to by everyone. And when they serve their time and retire, they are granted honorary luxury status. But we uh, come to the capital, which is just Mikado, and enter the statue plaza dedicated to the first king of Mikado. And we are told to approach for the gauntlet right, where uh, our entire life and future will suddenly be decided over the course of about five seconds. I wonder what's going to happen. What do you think, chat? You think we'll pass the gauntlet right? What do we all think? I don't know. It's a, It seems like a kind of scary thing. It has a pretty high failure rate. Heard this run is pretty reset heavy, so uh, who knows? We might just randomly lose the run right here. Nope, everybody's saying no. Run's over. Yep. We're, uh... It's not looking good for us. Uh, apparently Issachar failed. So, uh, there goes his plan to, uh, you and me, but mostly me, our lives together. But it's okay, because we get to now take the gauntlet, right? Uh, fun fact, that first decision there, uh, actually gives you alignment points. So the way your ending is determined is based on an alignment scale. We'll possibly get more into it later. 
Uh, but funny enough, that very first decision as to whether or not to extend your hand for the gauntlet right actually slightly affects your alignment. Not enough to be worthwhile at all, but still rather amusing. So we uh, we poke the button on the gauntlet. Very uh, interactive touchscreen mechanics here. This was a 3DS game after all. And hey, we passed the test. Surprise, surprise. Imagine passing a test as an RPG protagonist. It's crazy. Hey, Freedom, would this be a good time to remind everybody of the donation challenge that you were going to do for this run? Yes, absolutely. Thank you for reminding me. So this game is known for being rather difficult and uh, a tad volatile. So in order to, to spice things up a bit and uh, get some positivity going in uh, a game that uh, might be a little down and dreary sometimes, we're going to be doing a little bit of a donation challenge here. So for every single death that I take this run, or death-like situation that results in me having to reset the console, uh, I will be donating $2. For every fusion accident, those of you that are familiar with this series know about uh, demon fusion and that there is a slight chance that every time you do a, fu a demon fusion that the fusion can accident and suddenly you'll end up with a completely different demon that you didn't want, uh, I'll be donating $5 for every fusion accident. Uh, runs can be 0 to 5 fusion accidents on average, and around 8-ish deaths per run. So, uh, a lot of money could be going to charity here. That's what we like to hear. Or death-like situation. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of situations here. Uh, the game over system in this game is notorious for being obnoxious. <laughs> Uh, where if you die in this game, you get this cutscene with this dude named Karen who's like, Hey, the, uh, the Underworld's kind of booked right now. Want to pay me some money to... Want to pay me some money to skip the afterlife? And you can do that. The cutscene's really slow. It takes forever. And so it's actually faster to just reset the game and reload whatever save we'd made. Because we can save anywhere in this game. Uh, and there's some situations where we might as well just lose the fight rather than trying to soldier through. And so that's why I clarified death-like situation. But uh, here we were introduced to our other samurai. Turns out there was five people who, or there's a total of five people that actually passed the gauntlet right out of the hundreds who took the right. Uh, these five people were ourselves, uh, our good friends Walter and Jonathan, who seem to remember us, even though we've never actually met in person. Uh, this uh, very uh, haughty and pompous dude by the name of Navarre. And our uh, best, our soon-to-be best friend, Isabeau. Who, uh, Isabeau, uh, Jonathan, and Navarre are, were all luxurers, which causes some uh, initial conflict amongst the group when it's revealed that Walter and us were casualties. That'll be uh, surely sorted out later. But we get into the tutorial, which... Those of you that are familiar with this run know that about uh, probably 50% of all of my resets uh, happen in the tutorial. So that uh, that death count might get a might get a nice little head start here. But this first fight, thankfully, is pretty easy. So the the game is like, hey, if you hit enemies with your sword, you can ambush them and go first, and then we do so, and then the enemies go first. So that's exciting. But <laughs> We uh, we turn on auto battle here, and the game plays itself for us in this case. Uh, get used to seeing the the auto battle animations. We'll because attack animations are kind of slow. Whenever enemies get turns, you'll generally just see auto battle, which is a bunch of just bonking animations. But we uh, we pull out ahead, and we put our first level into agility. Uh, this run goes very very heavy into the magic stat, but we do put a bunch of points into agility to make sure that we go first in every fight. And now they're like, hey, something else samurai do that's pretty cool. Not only do you fight demons, you also get to recruit them. And this is where some of the uh, some of the shenanigans can can occur. We uh, as part of this first little trial here, we do have to recruit three demons of our own. Uh, we will be recruiting four here as part of the uh, part of the speed run route. Fortunately, the first one's basically guaranteed. I've only had it fail like once or twice. But 
First of all, the game gives us a little bit of a rundown. Basically, we talk to the demons here, and there's two stages of every demon recruit. I don't want to give you that. Oh, nice. There is the... Uh, the conversation phase, and there's the negotiation phase. During the conversation phase, you're given a bunch of kind of randomish questions, and you have to answer them. Uh, the answers are random, or the their response to the answers are random. Demons have uh, different personality traits depending on uh, the clan they belong to, and so certain personality traits tend to respond a certain way to certain answers. Uh, however, you can give the same answer to the same demon three times in a row and get three completely different responses. You can get an attack, an auto-recruit, or a run. All sorts of wonderful things. And now you uh, might be beginning to see why a lot of runs happen to reset here. But first uh, first demon on our list of recruits here is uh, Mr. Uh, Angry Sock Puppet here, McCoy. So, take care of the Napaya there, get a smirk on Centaur. Human... Yo, we got an auto recruit. Let's go. Sometimes the game is just nice and automatically gives you a demon recruit for no reason. So that was cool. He is one of the easier of the ones we have to recruit, but getting getting McCoy in our party is nice because it means we have an extra body on the field, which is always helpful. Hopefully we get the last two here. All right, here's one of them. This is Landirg. Because you're cute. Lifestone. I don't have Nagi Lifestone. I'll give you my money. Nice. Okay. Uh, there is a slight chance that when demons ask for a bunch of things in a row that they'll just scam you and run away right afterwards, which is always lovely. All right. There's the training exercise done. We do have to recruit one more, though. Uh, everyone's favorite demon, Fushi, who is this... Uh, Old man head superimposed onto the body of a bird. Uh, he is my absolute favorite demon in this game, and I'm not uh, speaking through seething sarcasm or anything when I say this. Uh, definitely have not lost more runs to him than almost anything else or anything, but uh, we have to find him first. <laughs> seething. <laughs> Strong feelings. <laughs> Just a bit, but uh, we do have to find Fushi. Sometimes he can be... A little rude. He could have showed up in either of those encounter configurations. Uh, unfortunately, not in this case. Fortunately, once you have a demon in your party, you can talk to any of the same demon and they will just leave. Sometimes give you items such as money there or... Yeah, they'll give you money, items, heal your party, etc. Ah, yes, I shall explain the battle system. So this game and many other games in the series, including the, uh, the brand spanking new one that just came out, uh, uses a battle system called the Press Turn Battle System, where you see we have now four icons in the corner that indicates the number of turns that we can take per round of combat. Essentially, one per each character. If you hit an enemy weakness or get a critical hit, that one turn will turn into a half press turn, which means you get an additional turn. Uh, also, you can get a half press turn by passing your turn to the next person in your party. Uh, however, if you miss an enemy, hit something that they null, drain, or reflect, you will lose press turns according to the severity of what just happened. You will lose all of your press turns if they drain or repel whatever you hit them with. You'll lose two if you miss or hit a null, etc. This game also features a mechanic called Smirk that is unique to this and for Apocalypse, where when you hit an enemy's weakness or get a critical hit, you can uh, your character has a chance to Smirk. Which in this game means that your next physical attack is a guaranteed critical hit, and you get a. You're basically guaranteed to hit, and you suddenly gain 75% evasion. Which is pretty busted, and will. Excuse me, hopefully come in very use, in a lot of use later. This game also, the method of learning skills onto uh, Pokachu here is called Demon Whispers. Whenever a demon learns all of their skills, they will whisper to you, meaning you can learn any of their non-passive or non-unique skills that they know. So there we got Bufu, which is an ice skill, and Needle Shot, which is a gun skill, which we will be uh, making use of uh, for a little bit. Uh, yeah, I haven't been fighting things with Fushis in them. I keep seeing birds. Uh, we do have a secondary objective here where for a quest later on, 
Why are we putting points into agility? We want the main character to go first. So the first two levels we're putting into agility so that we can have... Uh, so that MC can go first. And then after that, we'll uh, we'll be going pretty much all into magic with every five levels being another agility level. Since we're not getting any magic, really, for the first couple levels, there's not really a reason to, to spec into magic since it'll be a tad redundant. Yeah, we're, uh, Fushi's a uh, little missing in action at the moment. But it's okay, we got our three, we got our three griffins, which is important. We need to, we need to kill three griffins, uh, in a little bit. About 10-15 minutes from now, we need to have three griffins killed. So, if we do it now, it saves us time later, which is nice. What is, uh, not nice is the apparent extinction of Fushi that happened shortly before the beginning of this run. Uh, truly a tragic worldwide event. Where is Fushi? Again, he can show up in either this little, uh, this little mouse. There he is. There's our friend. Let's take a second to get rid of this McCoy. Uh, negotiations do have a chance of going very poorly, where they will then attack you, so like this. So I want to get rid of as many demons in the encounter that I don't need to talk to as possible, so that... Uh, any sort of retaliation will be as little, have as little impact as possible on us. Ooh, nice. Okay, that was a good recruit. Getting a little scary there. Fushi's really hard to recruit. Of all the demons we recruit in the run, he's probably the one that's the most difficult to get, so getting him on the first try is nice, even though it did take us a hot minute to get him. But we got all of our demons now, which is awesome. Believe it or not, there's only one more demon we have to recruit for the rest of the run, and then we will be recruit-free, which is wonderful. We're currently going on our way to fight a little bit of a mini-boss, so if we have any donations or things we want to plug, then uh, now is an excellent time for that. I tell you what, all kinds of donations are coming in. I have this one from Munioki who sent in $15 and says, awesome run so far. I have one from Fritzkin for $33 and 30 cents. It says, hi, Freedom. Good luck, have fun. Don't get lost. Please tell everyone why Ice Breath is your favorite skill and so statically good. <laughs> Thank you for it. <laughs> uh, we will, trust me, we'll, uh, we'll get into Ice Breath later. It is... Truly a tremendous skill to behold. And uh, we'll uh, we'll get into Ice Breath and the joys of statistically good skills. Uh, in a bit, in like an hour and a half. But trust me, there will there will be plenty of Ice Breath fun for, for the whole family to enjoy. First, this is the first mini-boss of the game. Uh, for those of you uh, in the chat who are Witcher fans, uh, this is the Wild Hunt. Normally a level 53 demon. But for some reason, we're just, you know, fighting them level 8 or level 3. You know, it's it's fine. Uh, if they do attack, they will one-shot the main character. Fortunately, this is one of the few fights in the game that the game that the main character is allowed to die. And it's fine. That is one thing about this run. Uh, the main character dying is generally really bad. Later on, we'll have the ability to revive the main character. But the MC is pretty much all of our damage. And... Uh, we take very few random encounters in this game, despite what the last uh, 10 minutes have indicated. Once we get out of this lovely cave here called Naraku, we will uh, be trying to take zero random encounters for the rest of the game. Gross. So that means all of our experience will be from bosses and quest completion. As a result of this, if uh, the main character dies to a boss, he uh, is not exactly going to be getting experience from that. And it can cause lots of problems. This is what I meant by death-like situation. Oh, that's unfortunate. By death-like situation where, yeah, the main we could probably win the fight from that point on, but it wouldn't be worth it because main character's dead. Nice one TNL. Very cool. TNL means to next level if you hear me randomly throw that out. Uh, you're dead, but that's fine. We are almost level four, which is what we need. Doing a quick grind here to hit level 4. Uh, this game has a mechanic where when you complete quests, the amount of experience you get from quests is based on your level. So we want to hit another level here so everyone gets a little bit more experience points. 
We want to be fighting the uh, the beast or dog uh, configuration of enemies here because they give the most uh, potential for experience points. Because Chagrin is level 6, which is the highest level of anything in this area. So Chagrin plus something else is really good. Chagrin being the little Pikachu-looking enemy. Yeah, that's spooky. Uh, thing about this game you'll see me do a lot is when you save your game and then load the file immediately afterwards, reminder, you can save anywhere, uh, the game will reload the area, which in a lot of cases will despawn every single enemy around you. We use that to get away from uh, a lot of encounters. Yes, Malcolm is in the next stratum, which will be in a little bit. Yeah, the uh, there's a very fun nickname for this game. Uh, it's it's a type of rocket tag essentially. The uh, Atlas had some very funny ideas about balance when they made this game, and so basically we take tons of damage from everything, but everything else also takes tons of damage from us, and neither us nor the enemies have much health. So death happens quickly and frequently to us and uh, those who oppose us. So we complete the test. Uh, that test was a race to see which of us could actually complete it fastest. We won, uh, mostly because if you found, if you went to any of the side rooms, you'll find everyone else is just kind of hanging out in rooms. But uh, you know, we don't talk about that. Don't wanna, don't wanna rat on our friends slacking on the job or anything. But uh, our fellow samurai are very happy about it, except for Navar. Navar is uh, a little peeved. Eh, but it'll be fine. I'm sure he's not building any sort of resentment towards us. Meanwhile, Jonathan and Walter are like, yo, we're like bros now. Let's go to the roof and hang out. So we're like, sure. So we have this nice little cutscene here where we get to look out over Mikado and enjoy the view. And uh, during cutscenes is always a really good time for uh, for more donations. I was going to ask if it was a good time. Well, Geister Carlson in $15 says, Greetings from Germany. It is morning here, so a good time to support your night shift. Keep your coffee close, winky face. Ah, guten, guten Morgen. Morgen. Yeah, guten Morgen, Geister Carl. And we have another donation here from My Hero Zero sent in $25 says settling in for a great SMT4 run while I wait for five to release. Donation to name the Palico in Monster Hunter World Mr. Kitty after my own Palico companion. That is adorable. And uh, I hope you win. I'm going to be hosting for that particular run too. So. <laughs> Very nice. So we, uh, we hang out on the roof and then we uh, go to bed. Flynn is a very sleepy boy during these uh, these early parts. He'll usually do like one thing and he'll be like, yeah, I'm tired. So now we have a dream about uh, Walter and Jonathan again. Walter's like, yeah, see how bad everything is? You should like change that. Then we, we have another dream about Jonathan. And he's like, no, everything is awesome. Everything's totally cool. We should keep it this way. Once again, very vague foreshadowing as to potential future roles. Ah, uh, yes, we also get a get a friendly, uh, friendly hoy from our boy Walter. He very emphatically greets everyone with a with a very happy hoy. Finally, a protagonist I can relate to, right? Not to be confused with the hee ho. That comes later. So we're we're suddenly awoken by Jonathan and Walter in our rooms, being like, "Hey, uh, hey, sleepyhead, we uh, got a summons to to go to this tavern for more training." You know, the best place to, to do any sort of training, of course. And as we enter the tavern, we're introduced to this uh, to this lovely fellow by the name of Kay, who is uh, teaching us about some of the, uh, the glorious pastime activities that we can do as a samurai, such as hunting demons and collecting supplies and hunting demons for supplies. Truly, the life of samurai is very varied and interesting. Also, Navar gets uh, shut down some more. But we are introduced to the side quest mechanic of this game. We'll be seeing this a lot because one of the requirements for the neutral ending involves several mandatory side quests. Which, a uh, bit of an oxymoron, but we'll get to that later. Navar issues a challenge to us and Walter specifically to be the see who the first person to complete the three hunts on the board is. So we, we accept this challenge. We've already completed two of them, though, so we uh, got a little bit of a head start on that. The... This is where I needed to be hunting the griffins, and I also picked up a couple of items on the way. 
that were uh, deep green moss. And those are one of the requirements as well. Here we'll be visiting Q, who is a blacksmith. Nice little James Bond reference there. And we'll be buying some new armor. Armor in this game is pretty bad. And uh, because it really doesn't do a whole lot other than move your stats around, or move your resistances around a bit. So the default armor we were wearing made us resist ice but weak to fire. And we're about to fight a dude that uses a lot of fire skills. And that's kind of spooky. So we're buying this armor, the Mikado Black. It's the one armor we'll be buying in the entire game. And it makes us resist electricity, but weak to force instead. There is one other piece of armor we'll be wearing as far as body armor is concerned that will uh, that the game will give to us. And then there's some other assorted things that we'll just pick up and equip because the game gives it to us for free. But uh, now we get to hear the very funky and very exciting quest music. This game does have a great OST. Big fan of it. Uh, Ryo Takazuka, or Kaduka, depending on your translation, did an amazing job with this game's OST. I believe it was his first outing as the main composer for an SMT game. Uh, feel free to correct me if I am wrong on that. But he did a phenomenal job with this and gave us some amazing tunes. And there's a beast. While we're running down here to kill Orthrus, we do need to take some encounters, so until I get to Orthrus, I uh, could read off a donation or two. Excellent. Well, Blast sent in $20 and says, Hey, Pulse, Blast here. I wanted to wish you good luck on your run and hope for Larpus to not show much today. Do your best. I'll be cheering for you. And don't forget to put on a good show, Samurai. Much <laughs> love and good luck, Beans. All right, so that was a little unfortunate what just happened. Uh, like I said, things die very quickly in this game, including our bird friend. Uh, we need him to be alive so that he can whisper Xan, which is a force skill to us. Uh, it's all good. Yes, hopefully this run will be relatively Larpus free. Uh, to explain, Larpus is a uh, Frank or Z emote of uh, the Pokemon Lapras, who uh, during some times of people complaining about Pokemon Sword and Shield, without getting too much into it. Oh, this might be our first death. Um, yeah, so, uh, that's, uh, that's two bucks. That is, uh, two dollarinos for charity right there. Uh, just because I used my one revival item on Fushi, I really didn't want to have him dead again. Yeah, Smirk is a, is a very balanced mechanic, as you can see demonstrated. So this is Fire Breath. This game is being absolutely lovely right now. All right, let's, uh, we'll just deal with it. I will have to revive Fushi upstairs once I get to the chance to. This is a much more favorable fight. So, like I was saying, Lapras, or Larpus, uh, this dude was like, wow, I can't believe, okay, that's, uh, that's two dollars for charity. Or that's another two dollars for charity. $4 Orthrus for is. Charity. Yeah, Orthrus absolutely loves charity tonight. He's a very, very charitable person, especially when it comes out from someone else's pocket. But we don't talk about that. Uh, from Orthrus's standpoint, he's like, "Yo, this dude's donating charity. Let's do it." So, uh, the Lapras story, right? So someone was like, "Yo, I can make." Lapras in like five minutes in this really fancy 3D animation studio. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to prove Nintendo wrong to not make original 3D models for their games or whatever. Uh, the result was concerning. And uh, thus La uh, Larpus was born. Uh, someone in chat has a slightly modified version of the end result. But uh, it was just a, a, lar a Lapras that looks very, very concerned about uh, what is happening. So uh, as a meme now, whenever something concerning happens, it's kind of replaced something like Monka ass as a as a like a concern. Yeah, the result was a massive meme, pretty much. And so now we uh, we like to throw out Larpus to our to our lovely friend. So uh, if anyone in chat happens to see people start saying Larpus when something scary happens, that's uh the explanation. All right, so we beat Orthrus there. We have already completed the requirements for the other two quests, so we're going to go turn those in real quick, get some experience. Then we'll go back down to grind level five. 
So we deliver these. Oh, welcome, Three Griffin Talons and the Moss. Might have to do a little bit of grinding, unfortunately. All right. So here we turn in the quests, we win, uh, and then this other samurai dude who looks very, uh, well, see, he looks very trustworthy. I mean, obviously, why would we, why would we doubt another, a fellow samurai? Gram slice into charge. Very cool. Uh, we'll be taking no skill changes in this game, by the way, even if it looks super tempting. Uh, the way we do fusions in this game is we auto fill. Uh, all of our skills for fusions, and so if uh, if we have a skill change, even if it's a skill that's completely useless to us, that can still cause problems for uh, the autofill, and so it's better to just it and safer to just not take any skill mutations, even if it's something tempting. Charge into grab slice into charge wasn't particularly great because we'll be using very little physical in this run, but just for for future reference when you see something crazy like null mind into Tersagion or something crazy like that why i'm not taking it as tempting as it may be all right so we we find out from this very trustworthy samurai that navar has gone missing which is you know can't have that he's he's our comrade he is our allegedly friend so we ha we have to go save him obviously and uh, the dude also was like, hey, by the way, don't tell anyone else about this because it could be very shameful to his family. So, uh, you know, even though you're brand new into this whole samurai thing, I'm just going to tell you confidentially and uh, don't tell anyone, which, you know, that's not suspicious or anything. Like I said, why would we have any reason to doubt our fellow uh, fellow samurai? All right, we finally learned Zan so we can swap Fushi out for McCoy. And we'll need to do a little bit of grinding. We have to hit level 5 on this floor so we can go down to the next floor and recruit a Malcolm. Code worker acquaintance, yeah. He is evergreen. He, uh, definitely green is a, uh, is a good trait to describe uh, Navarre, especially down the line. Alright, we hit level 5. Getting our magic stat up. And time for the uh, the other probably biggest reset point, recruiting Malcolm. So uh, this room is kind of special. Basically, that little archway thing you see right there is a uh, is a trigger point for a boss or for a forced encounter. That forced encounter is really scary and will completely murder us. Also, we float on the we float slightly off the ground here because the texturing was not. Uh, Correctly done all the way in this uh, room, so that's exciting. Burrows. But, uh, so basically what we have to do is we have to wait for Malcolm to come to us, which means we have to stand here until an enemy spawns, runs at us, and we have to hope it has the right thing in it. Uh, this can happen either immediately, and we can be super happy, or not as immediately, and... Uh, we get to be less happy. Yeah, the uh, the the two Nagas, who is the, the fight that's coming up, is a pretty. For a lot of people, it's the 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 first like beginner's uh, roadblock for this game because they're only weak to fire. Nothing you can recruit in the first two stratums learns fire. It's basically the game expects you to mess around with fusion. And even then, some things. All right, this is a uh, this is another forced reload, so that's uh, six dollars. We're uh, racking it up already. Uh, that fight is a samurai horde. Hordes are awful to fight in this game. They take forever. They don't give you very much experience. And uh, that particular one can inflict sick, which is a really nasty status ailment. So that fight we're just going to not take. Oh, I missed. Oops. And there it is again. Woo! Got $8 for charity. Oh, yeah. Yeah, th this game is early game is rather infamous. It's uh, the difficulty pacing of this game is like a sheer cliff that you start kind of at the top of where you have the the very beginning of the game is ridiculous and then as soon as we get past a, a certain infamous boss fight the game becomes quite easy uh or at least a lot more manageable so the guy in the middle there is a, is our soon to be friend Malcolm he is a he is a gentleman and a scholar and uh we shall continue to shower him with compliments 
including admitting we are a fool to uh, to earn his trust. And we got him, which is amazing. Uh, my practice runs for this marathon, uh, a lot of them got walled at that recruit, so that's actually a huge relief that we got him pretty quickly. Nice chakra drop. McCoy has been showering us with chakra drops, which is amazing. So that's the recruit done. We now have Malcolm. That is the final recruit of the run, which is weird to say because that wasn't true like three weeks ago. This game has gone through a lot of route changes over the last year and even just over the last month. The uh, a year at this time last year, world record was about a, a 738 by uh, by our friend Coolzo. Then uh, things kind of changed from there in about March of this year, I dropped that down from a 738 to about a 718. Which uh, awakened the de the uh, awakened the beast, so to speak, caused Kuzo to come back to the game and absolutely destroy this game, doing a bunch of reroutes, lots of quality of life improvements, etc., dropping world record down to a 651. Uh, and then from there, I was taking a break from the game, came back, got a 651 of my own, and uh, Kuzo came back, did more reroutes. Now world record sitting squarely at about a 640, some uh, low 640. Uh, 641-ish. So this game has changed a lot in the last year. And uh, it's actually a lot more of a pleasant run. You'd think that with a run getting, you know, dropping an hour in its total runtime, that generally that would mean something like, oh, now we take a lot of more risky fights and horrible things can happen if uh, at the drop of a hat. But actually it's the opposite, where uh, this run is a lot more... Uh, a lot more consistent than it was before, and honestly, even more beginner-friendly. This game is, uh, despite its length, is actually a pretty beginner-friendly run once you get past the first, you know, hour. Uh, and we have a really awesome and supporting community that are very much more than willing to help out with any questions you have, helping learn the run, etc. Yeah, Malcolm is very important to get. He's pretty much required for that fight. Unless you're doing some challenge run that specifically doesn't use him, in which case you'd use something like Pele. But yeah, Malcolm is very important. Uh, we used to recruit five things in this run. We used to also recruit a demon called Dwarf a little bit later on. Uh, but he was awful to recruit. He was the other big run killer. He would occasionally just not show up, and then you would lose a run like an hour and a half into the run right before the hardest boss in the game. So, uh... Coolzo cut him out of the route. Now we fuse him instead. That's why we recruited that uh, McCoy earlier, because we're about to fuse ourselves a dwarf to cut him out of the route. There is also a brand new route that doesn't recruit Malcolm either, since he's also kind of annoying to recruit. However, uh... Did I happen to get it? I didn't. Okay. Uh, however, Malcolm uh, doing so is kind of expensive and causes some weird stuff with the money route. That means you... This next fight we're about to do, we can only do with three demon or two demons, which is kind of spooky. Uh, and I didn't feel comfortable doing that because that change was made to the route like two weeks ago. We so that? we're uh, we're doing the what we lovingly refer to as the dwarf cut. That is a very nice, very very nice route. So this is fusion. Yeah, it's not not very marathon safe in comparison to like this route, which is pretty safe. So this is demon fusion. We we got our boy Mito here. Uh, and this game is a disembodied head. We're gonna do some fusions. Mito is a very... He's very excited to uh, be involved in this process. Let's out very excited. Oh! Whenever we uh, confuse new things. It's a very uplifting... Uh, uplifting and positive experience hanging out here at the Cathedral of Shadows. So here we're fusing, uh, fusing everyone's favorite uh, duck, who is now a muck. You could say the goose is loose, or the bird is the word, even. Uh, who used to be a fairly big part of the route, unfortunately, now he uh, gets immediately fused into a dwarf. Oh no, Ducky, that duck design was amazing. Yeah, I, I love that, uh, love that design, especially because some of the skills he learns are pretty, uh, pretty amazing at clearing out large groups of enemies. And he just has this very deadpan, like, this is not a face of mercy expression on his face. <laughs> just the most unhinged duck you'll ever see. And uh, is an amazing battle companion. But now we have Vodunik here instead. Which is nice because Vodunik has Mazio, which is our first area of effect skill. 
And that will be doing some serious work in this upcoming fight. This fight used to be really scary if we didn't get a lucky drop from uh, with the enemies we were fighting. We did actually get a drop, which is cool. But this fight used to be absolutely terrible if we did not get said drop. We did, uh, but we doesn't really matter anyway since we do have Mazio on Vajinik now. So here, this is Wendigo. He is the most neutral of all demons because he's all about raising the roof. Once again, uh, we will get context for that shortly, but he really wants to raise the roof. Most neutral demon of all. Which duck is unhinged and which is the most unhinged? You just gotta see it in their eyes. Trust me, that, that duck is not a duck that shows mercy. Yeah, so now we have this fight. This is the fight I was referring to that's really spooky. Uh, we do have a Mazio stone, so we can throw it here, do some extra damage. Uh, nice thing about horde encounters is that if you have a Ma skill, which is the, the notation this game uses for area of effect, it hits hordes three times, doing lots of damage. So we can, uh, we can take this fight out pretty quickly, thankfully. And there we go. Yeah, uh, so fun fact about that, uh, the enemies that make up that horde are all weak to fire in their actual, like, configurations, but when they're all assembled together, they are not weak to fire, they're only weak to elect, despite Naga being resistant to elect normally. This game makes a lot of sense. Alright, so here we find out the dude that's been sending demons at us was actually another samurai who uh, Navar kind of bribed into doing this. You know. Gotta gotta throw some some redeemable character traits into our uh, into our friends. But we have uh, now been joined by Jonathan, Walter, and Isabo. This introduces the partner partner mechanic in this game, which is kind of negligible at best. Uh, we're basically for any fight that's not a challenge quest, we will have a partner with us. Uh, they will take a one turn after we finish our turn, and they'll usually just do an attack or something. It's pretty negligible 90% of the time. Uh, there are some cases that, uh, <laughs> that that can kind of be a problem. There is one specific example that uh, is rather well-known that features our good friend Walter being, uh, being the ultimate friend, just maybe not to us. Well, uh, we might get into that later. We'll see. But we find this strange portal here. The samurai was like, hey, by the way, Navar's ahead. Uh, if you have a problem, go talk to him. And we find this strange portal that takes us into uh, this weird dimension, which uh, our, our friendly neighborhood Burroughs, who didn't explain Burroughs. Burroughs is basically an AI that lives in our gauntlet. The gauntlet is the means that we use to be summoning and talking to demons. Uh, Burroughs is like, yeah, this is a demon domain, so there's a really powerful demon here that's uh, probably really dangerous. And we're like, oh, well, that sounds lovely. Let's uh, let's go explore and see what that's about. Well, inside we see the strange little girl from our dreams. Very interesting spot to uh, be seeing that. Uh, fun fact, these cutscenes all despawn enemies, which is very nice. Any cutscene that pulls up a character portrait, will despawn any enemies in the area. In fact, most cutscenes will. There's one exception to that that we'll uh, see later. And we're also introduced to uh, this uh, this strange man in a wheelchair whose name is Steven. Uh, of course, any any resemblance to, uh, to real people, living or deceased, is purely coincidental, of course. Uh, but Steven's like, yo... Uh, that little girl is really important. Uh, also, by the way, the uh, the head of the domain is further up ahead, so if you want to take her on, you got to do that. Uh, also, if you want a full heal, just come to the room I'm chilling in. You know, not really explained why a, why a paraplegic man in a wheelchair is suddenly in, a, in this strange demonic domain, also wearing a full suit in a medieval setting, but, you know, it, it's fine. Truly, really, there's there's nothing going around, uh, nothing going on with that. He's definitely not some super powerful interdimensional being or something that shows up in like most of the other games in the series or anything. Uh, but here we have our first uh, real major fight, kind of a boss, kind of not. But we find uh, we find Navar and some other dude have been ensnared, and we're introduced to Alarane, who, like I said, our first quote unquote boss in the game. 
Uh, she's very concerned about the amount of people that she'll be eating and uh, expresses desire to start dieting. Uh, she, unfortunately, will not quite get the chance for that, but uh, we'll, we'll help her burn off some fat. It's fine. Hey, how do you feel about me mentioning a few of the incentives for this very game that you are playing right now? Go for it. This is a perfect time. Awesome. Well, coming up fairly soon, in fact, you can tell me how soon we will need to cut it off. We have a bid war to name the terminal. About how long would you say we have until we're going to be cutting that off? Uh, so we'll be cutting off the terminal uh, sh right after the Minotaur fight. Uh, we'll be fighting Minotaur in about mm, 25, 30 minutes. Mm, so you all have about half an hour to get your donations in. Currently in the lead is Isachar. I hope I'm saying that right. And then uh, Isakar, but yeah. Isakar, Isakar, and then at forty-five dollars. And then in second place at thirty dollars and thirty cents, it's Mothland. So not too hard to snipe that one if you have some feelings about it. Of course, we also have the incentive to unlock the Yaso Magatsuhi cutscene that we have not met yet. We are looking for $400 and we are sitting at $327.70. So if you feel strongly about getting to see that cutscene, which, uh, Creepy, maybe you could tell us a little bit about the cutscene and why people would want to donate towards it. Yes, so like I've mentioned before, this game is full of a lot, a lot of in-jokes and very funny moments. Uh, and one of those very funny moments is the cutscene we're referring to. During the, uh, Later on in this game, just over halfway through the run, we'll, uh, we'll come across a, a very interesting demon uh, that has a, a very strange power. And uh, as a result of the, the meeting with this demon, some very, very funny lines that have, I've seen a couple of them get thrown around in chat already uh, get spoken by our party. It's a very funny cutscene, very meme-y. Uh, those of you that love memes definitely don't want to miss out on it. Those of you that don't like memes, well, it's still pretty funny anyway, so you should uh, check it out anyway. Burrows. And oh, Sorry, go ahead. Uh, and that'll be just over halfway through the run. I'll uh, point it out when we get a little closer to that, but... It's a, yep. a cutscene we'll see anyway. I'll just be playing out the dialogue instead of skipping through it. Very nice. So if you want to donate, please hit exclamation point donate in chat, and that will get you the link to donate to the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Yes, absolutely. We're uh, we're chilling here. We're having a good time. But do remember, this is for an amazing cause. Uh, mental health awareness is very, very important and uh, very happy to be here raising money for that. All right, so we so we save Issachar and he kind of has a bit of a mental breakdown. Uh, turns out he didn't really want to be a samurai. He was pretty happy with his comfortable life at home and just kind of chilling, but then he got picked to be a samurai, and it's kind of mandatory that you do that or you bring shame to your whole family, something, something. So he's kind of forced to be here, so he's kind of lashing out at everyone because of that. Uh, so we're kind of like, oh, well, that kind of stinks. So Jonathan Jonathan escorts him out, and uh, that's base, That's going to be the last we see of Navar. Was I saying Issachar? I meant Navar. Uh, yes, I was meaning Navar. Uh, that's the last we're going to see of Navarre this entire run. Uh, to get some background on what happens to him from here, he does kind of lock himself into his room until his dad kind of gets him dishonorably released from the samurai. Then there's a quest later on in the game where you have the option to help him out a uh, little bit, escort him from some people that are hunting him. And that's the last we see of him in this game. Uh, this game is a pseudo-sequel slash spin-off for Apocalypse. He plays a much larger role in the game uh, posthumously. Meets, uh, meets with a little unfortunate fate that has a chance to more than redeem himself for uh, for past sins and is actually a pretty cool character in that game. But that's the last we see of him here. After uh, our daring rescue, we find out we actually have a day off, and so we receive the hardest quest in the game, the quest I regularly fail in real life a lot. Uh, we have to get breakfast. So uh, it's going to real focus-heavy quest here. We got we to gotta go to a bakery, got to talk to this baker dude, he tells us that he's been reading books. Apparently, there aren't really books around here, but he's found some books, specifically literature. And he, he's very excited to tell us about all uh, about the literature he's reading. But we're just like, but we want to bread. So we we obtain our bread and we're like, yo, we need to eat this bread. We're like, well, where, where do we eat bread? Obviously, the best choice to uh, 
of a place to eat bread with our new best friends is to go to the place that we used to hang out with our old best friend to uh, really solidify that. Also, the sheep. The sheep is important. But uh, we see Issachar here, and he's like, hey, uh, I've just been kind of chilling here, you know, since I didn't get accepted and you did, but, you know, I'm not mad or anything. But, uh, you know, I'm going to go home now. We're like, huh, well, that was interesting. Surely uh, surely he'll go on and live a nice, productive life. But uh, let's go hang out with this sheep and eat some bread. Which we do. We, ha we have a short discussion about the uh, the literature that we have heard about. And this, this conversation tuckers us out. So uh, we decide after this conversation is done that we decide to go to bed. Also, I mean, that's what happens if you just eat a whole loaf of bread for breakfast. You need to go to sleep afterwards. There is a very important cutscene coming up. If anyone has any Ayaya emotes, please spam them in chat. This is a very important cutscene, very important tradition. We need to see lots of Ayayas in chat. Uh, Isabeau apparently has discovered, uh, discovered something called manga. And uh, she is very excited to share it with us and makes a very happy face because of it. So, uh, she has, she has discovered manga. Fun fact, the manga she is reading is The Rose of Versailles. Excellent choice. And while she is gushing about her, her love of manga, uh, we, we find out that apparently our hometown is currently on fire. Uh, so, uh, we're like, hey, uh, we kind of lived there. Can we go help? And we're uh, granted permission to do so. Ah, oh, yes, it is a, a, a manga about the fictional kingdom of France. Yes, it's a very important line. So, you know, as if we weren't a prominently a RPG protagonist as it is, uh, we now find out our hometown is burned to the ground and uh, our parents are presumed dead because, you know, gotta, gotta really nail in that, hey, you're a protagonist sort of uh, dealio. But we're sent into the forest to help rescue any survivors. And this will be where we will be doing the final grind of the game. Which is weird to say, less than an hour into the run, but it's true. And uh, now is a perfect time for, for more donations. We'll be doing just a bunch of required fights and some grinding, so... Can I uh, get through a lot of donations and other plugs. Awesome. Well, I have a donation here from Dorman who sent in $7.77 and says, Monthman Comfy Vig Larpus. Yo, what up, Dorman? Very comfy. Adorable. I would like to remind everybody that we have some really cool prizes that you can win. You can be entered to win when you donate, including for a donation of only $5, you'll be entered to win the red Bluetooth wireless pro controller that was donated by Game KMD. Thank you so much, Game KMD, for your generosity. If you're interested in Game KMD, you can check them out on Twitter, uh, twitter.com uh, game underscore KMD. They are also on Instagram under the same name, game underscore KMD. That's $10, by the way. The uh, the minimum donation? Yeah, the uh, this uh, this innocent uh, horde here, that's the name. Uh, oh. that, uh, very much did not like my uh, my friends, my uh, demon friends, and so they... I see, I see. They, they very kindly escorted them out of the forest and uh, kind of need them around. Do you uh, have you time can... to talk about yeah. the other prize that we have available? Yeah, keep going. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Yeah, no worries. All right, so we have a Shin Megami Tensei Five Switch Steelbook Edition. That is available for a minimum donation of $15. You'll be entered to win that one, which uh, we were talking about earlier has just released, right? Yeah, it's out uh, 30 minutes ago where I live. Yeah depending, yeah, depending on your time zone, it either just came out or it is coming out very soon. Uh, no, for it, that was not lost. That was just death. There, there's, a, there's an ailment in this game or a, a status effect called lost where whenever you get hit by a force attack, there's a 1% chance that the person that got hit with the for with the attack will just be kind of kicked out of the fight. Uh, and then you have to go find them. Uh, I am rather infamous for uh, my experiences with this, uh, with this status effect, but that wasn't what happened. Just thought I'd answer that question real quick. 
Yeah, no worries. Do we still have time to talk about all sorts of things? Yes, we got plenty of time. We're uh, we're still going for uh, another few minutes. Wonderful. Well, just a little reminder that we're here supporting NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, the nation's largest grassroots mental health organization whose work is focused around three pillars, education and support, awareness, and advocacy. What does that mean? Uh, NAMI participates in na nationwide awareness opportunities like Mental Health Month, Suicide Prevention Month, and Mental Illness Awareness Week. NAMI has partnerships with a wide range of companies and organizations, for example, Fox Sports and Google, that NAMI uses to get their name and mission in front of new audiences. And NAMI would like you to remember that you are not alone. Thank you, thank you. There we go. All right, this is Strix. Strix is a pretty uh, easy fight. Might have done a bit of an oopsie in auto battle because I forgot that I go first in this fight. It's fine. Been running this game for like over a year. Don't remember who goes first against Strix. It's fine. All right, we got like another minute or two if you have more uh, more donations. I do. Keanu sent in fifteen dollars and just says hugs. Yo, Keanu, thank you, thank you. And we also got an anonymous $25 donation. Nothing to say, just generosity. Thank you so much for your donation. Yo, much appreciated. And with those donations, we are crawling ever closer to unlocking that Yasuo Magatsuhi cutscene. We're now sitting at $352.70 out of the $400 we're looking for. So less than $50 to unlock that cutscene. Yo, let's go. Let's get that met. It's going to be really good. Trust me, it's worth every dollar of it. All right, this is the... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, please. This is the last required fight of the uh, of the section. We do have to take some more fights. Uh, ideally, I'm looking for the gorilla configuration of enemies. So if you see me entering and exiting this room over and over again, I'm uh, scumming for a certain spawn. Uh, the gorilla type enemy has Spriggin, which gives the most amount of experience out of any enemy in the first bit of the game. So we're looking for that. Uh, sometimes they spawn in droves, like right there. Other times they uh, they take a little bit. So you see me leaving and re-entering. That's what's going on. And uh, back to back to you. Right. Well, I just wanted to talk about the one other bid war that we have open for this run, which is the save or kill the hunters. I actually was hoping that you would talk a little bit more about that and exactly what that means. And just to let everybody know, save the hunters is in a healthy lead at $75. Kill the hunters very far behind at $20. What does that mean? Yes. Why would we want to save or kill the hunters? So, uh, like I mentioned, as part of this run, we have to do a bunch of random side quests, two of which are the Hunter Tournament, which is, you know, your your typical anime tournament arc. We got to prove that we're the very best like no one ever was. And as part of that, we have to do a bunch of gauntlet fights that involve battling the uh, a group of other hunters. And at the end of each of these fights, uh, we are given the option to spare our opponent or to finish them off. Uh, sparing our opponent is technically the faster option because it's the default choice. Oops. Uh, okay, this is fine. Uh, but it is greeted with, uh, with jeers and boos from the, from the crowd. Uh, however, killing, again, like, a tenth of a second slower or something, greeted to thunderous applause. Uh, when I do runs of this game, I generally opt to kill all the hunters, because hunter tournament is, by and far, one of the most frustrating parts of the, of cleanup, which is when the, we're doing all those quests. Normally, those options would affect your alignment, but because we wait to do them until we're already locked into our ending, uh, there's no alignment to be affected. So really, any option we pick will will work. Like I said, I generally go for killing because it's kind of therapeutic and kind of funny because weird sound effects. But uh, if you want to save the hunters, if you want to, to inspire hope in the people of Tokyo by sparing their champions instead of... Uh, hope through fear then uh then that's your uh, that's your incentive we have time for another donation here absolutely we're just looking for some gorillas right now who are not feeling very uh very sociable at the moment all right well i have some exciting news 
I hope I say this person's name right. Servieche sent in $50 and says, Yaso, <laughs> Yaso Magatsuhi, 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 and that has been met. We will be watching the cutscene. Let's go. Yo, thank you so much for the donation and the, uh, and the very riveting comment. Much appreciated. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all so much for donating for that. Very excited to be showcasing that cutscene, and also hopefully excited to be uh, finding some gorillas here, because they're uh, apparently on a vacation. Uh, the gorillas went to the same vacation that Fushi went to, apparently. There's a, there's a huge get-together today, I guess, for the launch of SMT5, and uh, guess, uh, our, uh, guess our friend Pokachu wasn't invited. Alright, still, still looking. Might start taking other fights, though. But I'm scared of fish. I must tell everyone. Exactly. Lots of fun lines in that. All right, feel free to feel free to keep on going. We're still still looking for some gorillas. Gonna start fighting other stuff though, because we need to make up this experience somehow. All right, well, though we have met that particular incentive, we have all kinds of incentives still open, including for Persona 5 Strikers to fight the Reaper Super Boss. We are looking for $750 for that, and sitting at only $15, we have a ways to go. We also uh, have an incentive for Persona 5 Strikers Fuse and Use Mothman. I do believe that might mean something to the folks who are watching now. We have absolutely no donations towards that. Zero out of the $500 we are looking for to unlock that particular incentive. And then, of course, the new incentive that was just recently unlocked, the Final Fantasy X AI Task Showcase, which I am told you do not want to miss we have a ways to go on that one looking for twenty five hundred dollars and we have fifty dollars so far but i absolutely believe that we can unlock that before the end of the marathon so please was... do get those donations sorry go ahead go ahead oh no finish, finish up i have a short comment but finish up what you're saying no no yeah so please do get those donations in exclamation point donate in the chat will take you exactly where you need to go I was talking to Tatsuya, who's one of the one of the races of that run, and he is very excited to uh, hopefully be using Mothman. So please, uh, let's help him meet that incentive. Uh, let's rep our boy Mothman. Gotta gotta make everyone proud. Gotta show off the glorious Mothman. Right, more love for Mothman, please. Very nice. All right, we're almost done with this dungeon. I have all the experience I need. Took a. Took a little bit of an extended vacation, but uh, the gorillas have returned. So now we're gonna we're gonna go say hi to a to a good friend of ours uh, as soon as I deal with this fight. There we go. Have just enough experience. I need to be level nine with a certain amount of experience to my next level. All right. Theoretically, I should never ever die to this fight. Uh, I have died to this fight three times ever. I have seven chakra drops. What is this run? All right, that's exciting. Uh, all right, time for our, uh, so we uh, we journey through the forest. We haven't seen our friend, and suddenly Issachar shows up, and he's like, "Yo, wasn't expecting to see you here." And we're like, "Hi, Issachar." We uh, we found out apparently uh, someone was someone who came from the city and basically gave a bunch of books to the to the casualties. And that is what has caused demons to attack the town. Apparently, uh, a bunch of people started reading these books, got really angry, and turned into demons. Uh, and uh, Issachar apparently is one of them. He brought the books to this town. Uh, just a friendly reminder, books are evil. Literature is bad for the uh, bad for the soul, according to this game. And so uh, we, we got to take care of this problem as we're... Uh, for, you know, before it springs up at all. Oh, chat says that Isekai has shown up, so watch out for the big truck. <laughs> so here, we're going to tell him that we're a casualty still, which makes him lose his turn, which is very good. Uh, Isekai likes to spam Critical Wave, which is a uh, high, crit, high crit rate, low uh, 
uh, accuracy move, but because he's a boss fight, that means he'll basically hit the entire party with it, because, of course. Uh, so making him lose a turn is good, and there we go. We have won the fight, and uh, have uh, kind of uh, ushered our friend out of the plot a little bit. It's fine. But uh, he's like, hey, don't forget, we're like best friends and stuff, and I'm really angry because everything here kind of messed up, so you should like change that because I'm your friend. One final reminder, here we finally get Mazio learned, which is a phenomenal skill, as I mentioned. We also found out, apparently, everyone has been getting all of the books and the manga from a... Uh, from an individual called the Black Samurai, who is actually hiding out in this forest. So we're given orders that uh, everyone is supposed to try to capture this Black Samurai and figure out what's going on. And uh, we just so happened to uh, to bump into her right here. What do you know? So here, we're introduced to her. She's wearing this very, uh, some would say, strange attire that uh, some would go uh, journeying in. And they're like, yo, we got, uh, I got books. And uh, we're like, hey, you probably shouldn't be doing that because people are turning into demons. And she's like, oh, awesome. That's exactly what I want to happen. And uh, if you want to catch me, you should, uh, you should come to the underground. But uh, I'm going to leave you with this, uh, with this, uh, with this group of demons to take care of you. And uh, they kind of overwhelm us a little bit. They, they inflict the charm status to us, which uh, isn't in this game, which is why it's so powerful. And we uh, we pass out. I'm sorry, did you say isn't in this game, which is why it's so powerful? Yep. Charm is not a status ailment in this game. It is in For Apocalypse, but not this game. But uh, we pass out. We're greeted by uh, Mr. Wheelchair Man in our dream. And he's like, hey, that little girl is to the east. The game doesn't tell you this, but you start facing north. Uh, thanks, game. So we, we finally meet uh, the girl who talks to us a bit. Basically is like, hey, you should, like, help me out. Because uh, if you help me revive, then, you know, everything will be good and stuff. And everything will get better. And we're like, all right. I don't know what that means, but cool. Yeah, Charma... Because Charm was not in this game, and then they added it to 4A, basically, a uh, rule of thumb for anything with 4A is if it, something was not in 4A, or in 4 that they then added to 4A, it's usually broken in some way, shape, or form. Uh, Charm is no exception. There are some very fun uh, some very fun exploits you can do with the Charm status ailment to, to uh, do some level grinding in, four, in 4A, rather. So we, uh, we come to... Isabeau is like, Isabeau is the only one that didn't pass out from, uh, from that and is like, y'all are kind of useless, but, uh, we got orders to, to go back. So we have completed the quest. The Black Samurai got away, but she did tell us to go to the underground, so that means she might be in the underground, whatever that means. And we, uh, we complete our quest and get some, uh, nice experience. And then have more dreams. Here, uh, Walter's like, yo, let's go underground. That sounds sweet, dude. And then Jonathan's like, no, we shouldn't go underground. That's really bad. It'll cause things to change. Change is bad. And then, you know, in the next cutscene, Jonathan will uh, immediately say that he thinks it's a great idea to go underground, but, uh, you know, it's fine. Mild and consistent there, but uh, it's all good. We love Jonathan anyway. He has very floofy hair. It's just not like I wanted you to go to the basement or to go underground or anything, Baka. So here we're uh, we're awakened by an emergency summon. Uh, the events of the previous night have rightly caused some upheaval. People turning into demons tends to be something concerning. So an emergency meeting is had. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to the entire cast of people that did ensemble voices in this game. Uh, the ensemble noises in this game are great. 
I love all of them, and they add lots of flavor to uh, the noises. I love uh, sighs of concern. There's a there's a particular line later on I'll probably point out that's uh, uh, disbelieving female. Lots of uh, lots of glorious quotes that can come from the ensemble. But here we meet uh, Hugo and Gabby. Uh, Hugo, you know, totally not shady-looking uh, priest guy is like, yes, you need to go underground to the kingdom of the uh, Unclean Ones. And they're like, but the Unclean Ones' territory is forbidden. He's like, I don't care. We need to do it. And Gabby's like, yeah, he's right. So all the samurai are, uh, that are able are dispatched to basically uh, complete Naraku. We haven't gone through all of it. There's five stratums. We've gone through three. Complete Naraku and uh, enter the Kingdom of the Unclean Ones. Which I wonder what kind of place that is. I'm sure it's some very, uh, you know, given the uh, given the setting, some very stingy backwoods place with uh, no technological uh, accessibility whatsoever. Uh, let's see, normally I'm supposed to sell all but one, but I have so much money, I'm going to sell four here. And sell these. I'm going to sell this early, just in case... This. All right, so this game is, uh, despite what I mentioned about the sequel to this game being fairly glitchy, uh, there's really only one sort of glitch that we take advantage of in this game, and it's an out-of-bounds, and we're going to do that right now. This game is very well put together overall. Uh, very, very few ways that you can break this game due to the quest system kind of controlling all of your progression. Uh, however, there is one nice little thing here, so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of, as soon as I save or load this bird away we're going to uh we're going to admire this corner this uh this is a very nice corner it's a very lovely isn't this just a great corner isn't the floor just awesome you know ignore it. my my legs kind of getting stuck in the ground don't worry about it there we go and uh oh well this is interesting we uh seem to have discovered the void uh someone uh Someone get X death on the phone. We have discovered the void. Uh, I'm, I'm sure this is fine. Really nothing's nothing's wrong is going on here. Uh, this is mildly concerning. What's uh, what's it's just a Tuesday, you know? Yeah, you know what's going on here? Oh, hey, we're suddenly on the other side of that door. That's cool. So uh, the the physics system in this game is a little interesting, where uh, the game kind of always is forcing you downwards, and the floor is the only thing that's stopping you from doing so. Uh, however, if you manage to get yourself wedge yourself into a corner that also has a stairway uh, on one side of it, you can kind of get your leg into the ground. Uh, and then from there, you can just kind of fall out of bounds. This is only useful exactly there. Uh, there is one other spot in the game that we know of that you can actually clip out of bounds. Uh, however, it has zero use because the room is very separated. The only reason why that room works is because the entire floor is loaded in at the same time. And uh, what we just did was we took a shortcut to the fourth stratum so we don't have to walk all the way back. Uh, here we're going to do more fusions. Uh, so feel free to plug some donations while I'm doing this. If uh, if there's any donations, uh, anytime I'm doing yes, fusions, it's a great absolutely. time. Absolutely, no. I just wanted to send out thanks, actually, to the people involved in our foreign language restreams. Our German restream at Twitch.tv/Germensch and our Japanese stream at Twitch.tv/Japanese underscore underscore restreams. If those restreams can help you enjoy the marathon, go check them out and send them some love. We uh, we just fused our good friend Zutunsha, also known as Pig. He's a very important pig. We'll uh, we'll see use of him later, but uh, just know that that pig is a very good boy. Uh, you can keep going for a little bit more. Absolutely. We would also like to thank our logo and promotional banner artist, Kevin. You can find him on Twitter at KbuttsCorner. That's K-B-U-T-Z. K-O-R-N-E-R. -E he has done all of our artwork since the first Questing for Glory in 2017. Thank you, Kevin. All right, so coming up, we have uh, one of the most well-known fights in this game. And uh, as a... Uh, you might be sensing a pattern here. Anytime I say something is well-known, it's usually not for a great reason. 
Uh, we have uh, we have our best friend Minotaur coming up, uh, who is everyone's absolute favorite boss fight. Everyone loves Minotaur. No one has ever created any sort of meme footage based on Minotaur or uh, the interaction he has with one of our party members if we happen to roll uh, a specific party member for our partner here. There has been zero meme footage created of uh, just absolute party-wide dis party destruction due to uh, this boss. No, none whatsoever. And if you can't tell, I am lying through my teeth. Uh, Minotaur is, uh, is quite the fight. So we have uh, we have that coming up. We'll uh, we'll play out everyone's favorite line from him, and we'll hope we don't get Walter. Uh, getting Walter isn't the end of the world. It's not something that's like reload worthy or anything, but it does add a little bit of a spice and flavor to the to the battle. Uh, it makes uh, it makes the fight go from like a habanero to like a ghost pepper in terms of spiciness. Not quite Carolina Reaper levels, but. Uh, might get there if uh, some things happen. No. Yeah, this is uh, this is Minotaur. It's a really cool design, by the way. Like, wanna wanna point out Minotaur's artwork in this game. Once it there it is, is really cool. Well, uh, I heard you say Minotaur, and I just remember that that means the cutoff for our next naming incentive is coming right up, isn't it? Yes, as soon as this boss dies, we will be, uh... As soon as this boss dies, we'll need to cut that off. So, uh, he tells us to put on a good show. Uh, and, uh, hopefully we will not get punched in the face. Is I realize I did forget to play the line, so if he kills me and we have to do this again, I will play the line. <laughs> this is your chance to name the starting terminal currently in the lead. It's Isakar at $45. And in second place, it's Mothland at $30.30. So if you feel strongly about the name of that terminal, now is the time to get your donations in. Type exclamation point donate in chat for the link. Ah, good. So remember when I said Smirk gives you like a 75% dodge rate? Generally, that means nothing hits you, except Minotaur. Minotaur doesn't care. He hits you through Smirk when he feels like it, as uh, demonstrated. All right. We want to see lots of smirks on the second attack of each turn because of that evasion boost. All right, good. We got the second dialogue prompt. Second dialogue prompt gives him a secundo, which means his uh, accuracy is now lowered, which is nice. Uh, all right, we'll be going into the second round of combat smirkless, which means lots of lovely things can occur. Like him critting is... Nice! Uh, so this is one of, like, three fights in the game that the main character is allowed to, to die in, and we don't have to worry about the EXP. Uh, surprisingly, uh, despite his infamy, Minotaur really doesn't give that much experience, so if, uh, if MC happens to take a dirt nap during this fight, it's actually not the end of the world. Uh, however, uh, our prospects in this fight might be a little interesting. We'll, we'll see how things go. I'm gonna safety heal Lin and Sheed here, just in case. Alright, that's really good. Ooh, that's really good. That's very, very good. All right, uh, I think one more turn. Oh, he did uh, He did knock out Isabeau. Thankfully, she did tank that hit for us. All right, have to bonk him here. I think this last Bufu will do it, and we did it. We won. Uh, we beat Minotaur first try. Uh, he did one-shot Flynn, yes. <laughs> he did, in fact, one-shot Flynn. Oh, I just realized I didn't put on the red earring. That's fine. But, uh, yeah, whatever. That was uh, That's Minotaur done. That was a really good fight. And so we will be uh, we'll be cutting off that uh, the naming incentive now. By the way, we have to equip that. Burrows. So we have a couple cutscenes. Then we'll be introduced to uh, the terminals. What was the line? Uh, so when that fight start, he's like. Now come, Samurai, put on a good show. And then usually proceeds to just cause pain. Uh, that line is rather famous as uh, actually being a pretty good battle cry when you're coming against a boss that can just kind of kill you if he wants to. But uh, fortunately, even though uh, even though Pokachu got, uh, had to take a little dirt nap, it's fine. Our demons clutched it out. Pokachu's feeling nice and refreshed. 
ready to take on the world. And uh, here we find a strange relic known as a gun. As Burroughs uh, informs us, this is a gun. And now we get access to gun attacks, which we'll be using none of, because, well, no, that's not true. We will be using guns once in this run. Uh, much later. But uh, we're finding some very modern-looking structures as soon as we uh, as soon as we get past the Minotaur, which is uh, a little strange. But you know, it's it's fine. It's not about to be some strange uh, setting shift or anything. All right, and uh, I'm gonna need that terminal name. Sure thing. Well, it is still Isakar in the lead, so Isakar it will be. Great. All right. In honor of our, uh, in our of our dearly departed friend, we will be naming this terminal after him. As soon as uh, the game's like, hey, this is like a terminal. It can magically teleport you places, and it just so happens we have one in Mikado that no one else knew about. But that's pretty neat, right? And so we're like, oh well, that's cool. We can warp back from here. We also find out that uh, the unclean one's country has them all over the place. It's a very nice fast travel system, and we will be naming Issachar. ISS A C H A R. This is the Isakar terminal. There we go. Gotta bring my notes back. And we can now warp back to sleep, because, uh, you know, we just beat a difficult boss, gotta go take a nap. As one does. <laughs> I mean... That makes sense. When you, uh, when you die in a fight, you get revived with one HP, and, uh, don't really want to spend the resources to do that, especially because no one leveled from that fight. Uh, everyone gets a full heal on level up in this game, but... Considering there was no level ups, we do need to do need to heal for the for the upcoming fight. The uh, the other rather infamous early game boss in this game is coming right up. Uh, everyone's good friend Medusa. But thankfully, we have uh, we have a pig. It's our secret weapon, the greatest secret weapon at all—a pig that nulls gun attacks. Also, this is the one cutscene in the game that doesn't delete enemy encounters. Fun fact, uh, and it's the cutscene where Steven tells us about Street Pass. You know, everyone's favorite uh, mechanic from the day. I know a lot of people that got m big amount of use out of it. I uh, don't think I ever used Street Pass a single time with my uh, 3DS, but now we have Street Pass, which is pretty neat. Oh, Street Pass. Nostalgia. But uh, unfortunately, Steven didn't have the, the consideration to delete the enemies for us, so we still have to dodge them here. And uh, coming up soon is uh, is a cutscene that's uh, fairly decent in length, and it's actually one of, like, two or three bathroom breaks I get in the run, so I'm going to take advantage of that as the cutscene is playing. Uh, feel free to read donations or just let the cutscene play out as you see fit. Uh, but I'm going to hop out for a second to uh, take advantage of the break uh, as soon as I load away this uh, encounter that's trying to Mario me by jumping on my head. And I will be right back. Very nice. Well, I would just like to take this opportunity to remind everybody that it's really important to stay hydrated. I know that you hear it a lot during these marathons. You hear it a lot during streams, but really a large number of people are dehydrated. If you haven't had something to drink, recently get yourself some water some tea your beverage of choice and hydrate i myself have my this? hosting tea right here there are stars below us Ooh, i'm seeing in chat some people have tea some people have lemonade excellent i'm very proud of you I have a donation here from Jaxiel who sent in $25 and says, never played a Shin Megami Tensei game and this is the first time I'm really following a stream of it. Looks pretty awesome, should try it out soon. Great event. Thanks everybody that's involved. Keep it up. Ooh, 
Message to stay hydrated just as you're taking a sippy. <laughs> Everybody, get a little sippy, a little sip, sip, sippy. Yeah, I took a took a chug of water as I got back because I realized I'd been talking the entire time and hadn't uh, had water yet. Reminder, hydration, very Excellent. important. Yes, yes, that hydration, extremely important. So, Take care uh, we of yourselves, y'all. Sorry, go ahead. So we discover the, uh, the territory of the unclean ones is actually the city of Tokyo, which is uh, somehow under, like, you know, several meters of rock. But, uh, you know, it's fine. This is basically just the plot of the Simpsons movie, just uh, with uh, fantasy demons instead of uh, Simpsons. But here we are, right before the uh, right before the next major boss of the game. Gonna save Road really quick. Fun fact: the uh, the bird enemy configuration in this room has a chance of having Mothman in it. So uh, for you moth friends out there, this is your uh, this is your chance. They can also have Kamazots in it. Kamazots is the bat dude we saw earlier. Uh, one of my least favorite demons in all of Shin Megami Tensei, due to uh, previous experiences in a in a different game in the series. Uh, Digital Devil Saga, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Here we uh, get to meet our friend Medusa. Which, uh, you know, have lots of statues around here, kind of foreshadowing it, but here we're greeted. And she's like, aha, I'm going to turn you into statues because that's what I do. Haha, -ha, I'm evil. You know, gotta gotta give compelling uh, compelling character development for these for these bosses that we're gonna one-off fight. But uh, this is Biker Medusa, as she is lovingly referred to. She comes back in the sequel uh, in less biker type attire. But she is weak to force, and we uh, she likes to use lots of electric and gun attacks. The uh, the gun attacks are a lot nastier than the electric attacks, so that's why we have our good friend Zutunsha here. Zatunsha is our, uh, is best piggy, because best piggy happens to be immune to gun. And fun things happen when, uh, she tries to shoot the pig. Which, uh, right there. And our piggy smirked. Also almost, you know, one shot, uh, Pokachu here, but, yeah, it's fine. Mundo uh, Angel being stunned is a little concerning, but it's fine. Uh, I'm going to take a turn to throw a healing water. I doubt it'll make a difference, but just in case. So as always, fishing for smirks at the end of the turn because evasion. Here she talks about how we're working for this group of people called the Ashura Kai. And we're like, what is she talking about? Surely she's just kind of going crazy because we're kind of what my what that kind of mopping the floor with her. Uh, Definitely not foreshadowing anything. All right, if Angel could unstun herself, that would be great. Awesome, thank you, Angel. All right, should be getting our final dialogue option here. So something I didn't mention, this game during the boss fights likes giving you dialogue options that can affect the course of the fight. Generally, there is a, a correct answer, a wrong answer, and a neutral answer. Uh, the correct answer will usually give you some sort of, uh, some sort of buff or get, debuff the enemy. Incorrect answer will generally do the opposite debuff you buff the enemy or she'll uh or inflict like an ailment on you and that was a really clean medusa fight let's go she did shoot the pig once though so we we got her meme in this is another fight that the main character is allowed to die in so there have actually been several occasions where she's wiped my entire party except for zatuncha and then zatuncha's ran out of mp so i just turn on auto battle and uh the pig 1v1's Medusa in a slap fight. It's pretty great. And with that, we have finally made it out of uh, what we lovingly refer to as Naraku Percent. First hour and a half of the game is uh, the scariest part of the run. Now the run's uh, getting a bit comfier. Uh, you have a blanket nearby. You can feel free to uh, blanket up, get comfy, because we're... Uh, we're still in for the long haul, but it's a lot comfier of a long haul. Extra comfy speedruns brought to you by Questing for Glory, Hope and Healing 2.
All right, we have another cutscene. If you don't take a break at the Medusa cutscene, you can take one here instead. Uh, this cutscene is slightly shorter, but you get to uh, see the party's second impression of Tokyo, which is a little bit less of a glowing review than the first time. Apparently at ground level, they're not as impressed. Yeah, this game's difficulty curve is very much like a parabola of sorts. Starts up at the top, goes very low, and then the, the post-game stuff in this game is very difficult. When you start doing, like, some of the DLC fights, some of the optional super bosses, fiend hunting, the game gets really difficult again, but for uh, for a while, the game gets much easier. With uh, some, some spikes in difficulty with some of the later fights, but for the most part, the game is much easier once you get past Medusa. Despite this being one of my favorite games and favorite RPGs, that is one complaint I will levy against it, is the difficulty pacing in this game is rather atrocious. Uh, again, 4A improves on that by having an actually like really good difficulty curve, but I still absolutely love this game. It's filled with shenanigans, but they're uh, pretty hilarious shenanigans, so even, uh, even some of the weirder negative things you can find some positives in. So here we're told by Hugo, who contacts us, hey, uh, you should look around the city, try to find the Black Samurai. It's a really big city. Uh, so here, here's a here's a quest to locate a place that might give you some useful information. So now we're kind of set free into Tokyo. Admittedly, this part of the game can be pretty lacking in direction. Uh, Tokyo is a little infamous to navigate because there's very little indication where anything is. But thankfully, because I've played this game, uh, you know, a handful of times in my days, I do fortunately know where I'm going. Uh, the squiggly things are the enemies. Ideally, I don't want to get in any fights on the way over. And we can head to our first town, Ueno, or Ueno. Pronunciations are weird sometimes. We also get this cool effect every time we enter a new area. I hope you all really like this effect. <laughs> because we get to see it every time we enter somewhere new. It's quite lovely. All right, now is a great time for donations. We're just going to be doing some, uh, hitting some story flags here. All right, well, I did want to remind everybody that every time you donate, you are entered to win prizes as long as you hit the minimum donation. Right now, we have a red Bluetooth wireless Pro controller available that you will be entered to win for a minimum donation of five dollars and that particular prize was donated by game kmd if you would like to see more from game kmd you can check them out on twitter at game underscore kmd and also on instagram at the same location game underscore kmd we also have a Shin Megami Tensei 5 Switch Steelbook Edition available for you to possibly win for the minimum donation of $15. And that prize was donated by the staff of this very marathon. All right, there is the one time in the entire game that we, uh, the one time in the entire game we have to talk to someone in the bar. Every other time in the game that we go to the bar, we either... Oh, speaking of things we do in the bar, I need to actually heal. Forgot to do that. Uh, we either just heal or we grab quests. That's the one time we actually talk to NPCs there, or that it's required we do so. Yo, thank you everyone for all of the good lucks. And yes, hopefully Ice Breath will be kind. We're uh, we're approaching the infamous Ice Breath here in about the next uh, 40... Uh, about the next 30, 40 minutes. We'll, uh, we'll find out what Ice Breath is all about and why... Uh, some people who are a little more familiar with my streams or familiar with the run have been uh, foreshadowing it. But we uh, we receive a quest. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, of uh, cool horsey demons uh, called Pelide, or uh, called uh, sorry, Brain Kelpie. Kelpie is the uh, the pony that really really want this demon called uh, Pelide dead, and Pelide's hanging out here. So we accept a quest to kill him because they said if we will, then they will ferry us across the lake or across the river to uh, do Kasumagasaki, which is where we're the, the the base that we're looking for is located. So here we have Pialide. 
He is usually a pretty easy fight, unless he does one specific thing, and so, uh, of course, uh, hope we're ready to donate more money to charity, because one specific thing is always, a, is always a fun condition. So he starts off with this uh, by summoning a bunch of Moyo Rios that we can Mazio away. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot one-turn these, and on their turn, they have a chance of casting an ability called Mudo. Mudo is, uh, an insta-kill spell. Um, okay, cool, it missed us. Uh, it has a, I believe it's a 25%, 25 or 30% proc rate. Uh, and if it kills us, we do not have a means of arriving the main character, and this fight gives a lot of experience, so... Uh, losing the main character here would be absolutely terrible, and would be a uh, would be a reload. Once again, a quote death-like experience or a new a, uh, a death equivalent uh, reset. Fortunately, didn't get mudoed by the uh, by the group, so we are sitting pretty there at least. This guy can still do some weird stuff. I'm gonna preventatively heal just in case. Nice whiff. Oh, lovely. No, my pig is confused. That was the wrong ability. All right. Pig being confused ended up not mattering. Uh, panic in this game is kind of weird. It's supposed to... You basically have a random chance of either uh, not doing anything on your turn, of using a random skill, or just acting normally. Uh, in that case, we actually got to act normally, which is really nice. It's a pretty minor status ailment. It's almost not worth uh, paying attention to. However, it is annoying enough that later on in the run, we will get a preventative means to cover for it. Here we put uh, put points into agility again. We're getting to the point that our demons are actually going to would start out speeding us if we didn't. And we always want the main character to go first because we want MC to go twice if possible. Uh, as frequently as we can because main damage dealer. So we, we gotta keep our uh, keep our agility up. Alright. Overall good fight. And we'll just be uh, watching some more cutscenes. Apparently this dude does not smell very good, so... Our party uh, kind of uh, hot potatoes around this dude's, uh, this dude's remains until we get to be the, uh, the sacrificial lamb to haul this thing over to the ponies. And we get to do our first side quests. Like I said, for neutral ending, there's a there's a story element that we won't discover until we get locked into the neutral ending. Where in order to face the the final bosses of the game, we basically need to acquire the hope of the people of Tokyo. We need to we need to be seen as their hero, their leader, or their the person that's gonna help them out here. Uh and so the game's definition of becoming the hero of Tokyo involves doing lots of side quests. Uh, there are 18, I believe 18, specific quests that the game wants you to do, that you have to do in order to move on to the neutral ending. We'll be doing a lot of them right at the end of the run, but there are about mm, seven or eight of them that we will be doing before we get to the end of the run, either because the reward we get from them is really good, or they're just in the way. So like this one, for example, uh, we're about to do a quest called Deliver the Film, where we'll get introduced to a reoccurring character. Burrows. And doing this quest now is required both to meet this character and unlock their specific quest line, which will be a lot of the quests that we will that are required for neutral. Are uh, There's four quests, including this one, that involve this character. Uh, as well as unlocking photo quests. There are... I believe four or five photo quests we have to do as part of the ending requirement, and in order to gain access to them, we get to, we have to get the camera from this character. So doing it now is very useful. Uh, we also get some money, which is always good. We uh, we need money to fuse to uh, fuel our fusion habit, as we will be doing a lot of fairly expensive fusions here really soon, and we can take all the money we can get. Money in this game is kind of hard to come by since random encounters don't drop any. You only really get money from completing quests and getting relics. Relics in this game are really bad, give you very little money. So most of our money is going to come from rel uh, from quests and from selling uh, all of our valuable items. Here we're introduced to Nozomi, the uh, 
who will be a, again, the reoccurring character. Surely will not play any sort of important role in a later game. Uh, for now, another hunter, also an avid photographer. And she gives us the camera and thanks us for uh, giving her her film. So now we can go and carry on with the terminal quest as we head on our way to Kasumagasaki. We'll be hitting up most of the terminals since there is a lot of backtracking in this game to previous areas. As a result of that, uh, getting as many terminals as possible is nice. Also, most of the terminals uh, are guarded by a mini boss that will give a lot of experience. Yeah, this game gives you very much floods you with very expensive healing items that you really don't know what to do with, and so selling them is really the best use for them. All right, so here we'll get introduced to our uh, friend, the Terminal Guardian. Uh, the deep lore on this character, because we'll, we'll see the Terminal Guardian, but he'll shape shift a bit. Uh, the deep lore on the Terminal Guardian is that this dude just really likes cosplay. Uh, not even joking, that is actually his story. He loves cosplay so much that he is willing to to uh, assume random different forms, including uh, later on the uh, to uh, appear as a teenage girl just to uh, fulfill his passion for cosplay. Also to make some money protecting these terminals. Uh, unfortunately, we uh, kind of need these terminals, so we're gonna gonna rag on his cosplays a little bit. And we have another walk here, so uh, great time for uh, for more plugs and donations because we're gonna just be walking over to Kasumigasaki now. Yes, yeah, so the the voice line when he pretends to be a girl is pretty great. Sure thing. Well, we still have those incentives that we are trying to meet for the Persona Five Strikers Fight the Reaper Super Boss. We're looking for seven hundred fifty dollars to unlock that. We're sitting at fifteen dollars, so we have. A ways to go and then of course the persona 5 strikers fuse and use mothman we're looking for five hundred dollars to unlock that and we have no donations towards that yet so when you're getting your donations in do remember that we have a variety of exciting challenges and bid wars for you to put those donations toward also the one for this very run the shin megami tensei for Save or kill the hunters. The hunters save the hunters is still in a healthy lead at $75 and kill the hunters very far behind at $20. Why might people want to donate towards killing those hunters, Creepy? Ah, yes. So the hunter tournament quest, normally it's supposed to be one of the quests the game gives you that can move your alignment one way or the other. If you if you find yourself a, a little bit too law leaning or a little too chaotic leaning. Or, you know, you're just looking for a little anarchy in your life. Uh, you can get some points to your alignment by doing these quests. However, since we do these quests so late into the run, we're already locked into our alignment by that point. And so, due to that, we can do whatever we want. Uh, in that sense, we can either spare or kill the hunters. However, the hunter tournament quest is uh, rather obnoxious and has uh, caused a lot of death. So, it is very therapeutic to... Uh, to uh, show the hunters their end. Also, if we got some uh, some chaos fans in chat, got to uh, got to rep the uh, got to rep the alignment. And you say also that the crowd will cheer for you if you decide to kill the hunters, and they will boo you if you spare them. Yes, the crowd is uh, quite bloodthirsty and gets very very uh, very happy if you if you opt to to take on the. Crowd, one sec. I need to make sure I'm doing. Right, okay. That fusion's order can get a little weird depending on... Uh, sometimes, even though we do autofill skills and the order is supposed to be consistent, sometimes the order can get weird. Uh, so I just had to double-check that fusion, make sure it was good. But yes, uh, thunderous applause from the crowds if we opt to uh, if we opt to slay our opponent. So uh, if you want to be a crowd-pleaser, we uh, gotta... gotta they bye bye to the hunters. Yo, and we got a nice raid. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, Shin Megami Tensei it translates to uh, New Goddess Reincarnation uh, because this game was originally actually a licensed video game from uh, from a book that was just called Digital Devil Story Megami Tensei. Uh, the series started as a licensed video game, surprisingly enough. 
uh, and then eventually sprung off into its own thing. So in order to separate itself from the story and the events of that light novel, they just added the Shin or True title to it. Yeah, Megami means goddess uh, in Japanese. But yeah. We, uh... Da -da 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 -da. So here this dude's like, yo, this area is blocked off. You can't be here. And we say uh, no, and so he summons a giant enemy crab to fight us. And uh, we all know what to do with giant enemy crabs here, right? We gotta, we gotta attack their weak point for massive damage. And uh, fortunately, this crab is weak to uh, force. We also get access to taunt when we fuse uh, this oni here. Taunt is a very special uh, buff slash debuff. What it does is it gives the enemies two stacks of a defensive debuff, or Rekunda, and two stacks of an attack buff, which sounds really spooky. Uh, but remember, nothing in this game has very much health. So as a result of this, generally, we just opt to taunt them anyway and don't worry about it. Uh, unfortunately, he got a turn and kind of killed my angel, so that's uh, rather unfortunate. Gonna, gonna take a little bit of extra time to revive her just because I don't want her EXP to fall behind too much. But, uh, you know, giant enemy crab has uh, been dealt with. Am I going to taunt a certain boss later? If I know the boss you're talking about, no, I will not. I will not be taunting the final boss. I don't care how much Coolzo makes fun of me for not doing it, I will not be taunting the final boss. You said there's a giant enemy crab, and I, you're like, what kind of attack? And I'm like, lemon and melted butter attack? <laughs> that too. Goes very well with crab. Goes very well with giant enemy crab. Really brings out the umami in the uh, giant enemy crab. Indeed. Alright, so there are the... Uh... Those gangster dudes are from the Ashurakai. Uh, friendly reminder: we are in Tokyo, but they do talk in a uh, they do talk in a typical like mafia, like Godfather type accent. You know, for uh, accuracy's sake, we got the Japanese gangsters talking like uh, talking like they're from like the the Italian mob. But here we finally get to Kasumigasaki. We have found the base and. Uh, Walter uh, is very emphatic about the, the thought that we just found the Black Samurai. Uh, turns out it's not, it's just an empty suit. And we find what is totally not a Strange Journey reference. Nope, this game never references Strange Journey at all. Even though these things are called Demonicas and they look exactly like Jack Squad's outfits in SJ. It's totally not a Strange Journey reference. But uh, either way, we get access to them. This is the the other piece of armor I referenced that we'd be wearing. Uh, we'll be wearing the the black demonica for most of the most of the rest of the run. We're not going to put it on immediately because we do want the uh, some of the other resistances we get from the armor we're currently wearing. But we will be swapping to that soon enough. And we have lots more cutscenes as we do some uh, surveying of this area. So. Uh, more uh, more plugs and donations are absolutely good here. Lovely. Well, I would like to remind everybody that we are here supporting NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, the nation's largest grassroots mental health organization, whose work is focused around three pillars, education and support, awareness, and advocacy. Via their 48 state offices and more than 650 affiliates, NAMI offers a host of signature programs, presentations, and support groups that are available free of charge. This includes a national helpline that can provide information, right. resources, and a compassionate, understanding, trained volunteer to support anyone who calls in. These programs reach more than 300,000 people a year and are life-changing opportunities for education, connection, support, and personal growth. That is the organization we are raising funds for here today. So if you are able to, please consider making a donation. Yes, absolutely. It all goes to an amazing cause. Uh, mental health awareness is a cause that's very important to me personally as someone who's dealt with mental illness both with myself and in my own family my whole life. So it's a very important, very awesome cause. It's always important to know that you're never alone. There's always help. There's always someone that cares. Oh, that's a lovely miss. All right. Um, hmm. This is an interesting predicament. 
Oh, something I forgot to mention. One of the other things to, to note about going for neutral ending in this game, uh, I mentioned it before, but this game tracks your alignment kind of on a number line. And uh, the way it kind of keeps track of that is basically depending on the value you are on that number line being the answer you give to certain questions. The game sets your alignment. Basically, if you are at uh, negative eight or below in your alignment number, you are considered to be chaos. If you are uh, positive eight or higher, you are considered to be law. And if you fall between that zone, then you're neutral. Uh, this can be kind of obnoxious to track, but very fortunately in this game, we uh, do have a very easy means of tracking that. Where uh, basically we just pick the first option in almost every conversation. And uh, just give the first line of the first option in every conversation that affects alignment, and we'll get neutral every time. <laughs> Which is good because uh, those of you that have played this game know that getting neutral ending uh, on a on a blind playthrough can be kind of difficult at times. The the final decision the game gives you for before you you're locked into your alignment is a basically a yes or no option that has no neutral ground, and it gives you 10 points to your alignment. Yes, eh, it's a lot. And so if you actually end up in the middle of that, uh, in, in the middle of that uh, plus or minus eight range, uh, you can be too neutral for the neutral ending. Which is uh, a strange predicament to say the least, and I definitely uh, have several friends that have come into this, uh, ran into this issue. Uh, but fortunately, like I said, it works out that if we pick the first option in every single conversation uh, that affects your alignment, that we just get the neutral ending. There's a few other things we have to do. There will be a series of questions the game will ask us later about our alignment as either like a yes or a no sort of uh, sort of thing. And uh, we have to go with the, or as a, like a law or chaos decision. It's uh, called the hallway of ethics. We pick the chaos option for all three of those questions. And then there's a split later where we have to side with a character uh, that again does not have a neutral middle option. And so instead we pick the law choice there and it uh, evens out to a nice neutral. So rather than, you know, being the person that truly seeks neutrality, we just kind of seek to side with everyone equally kind of play both sides to our benefit in that case. So we, after that cutscene of dialogue, we find out that uh, we can find more information about where the Black Samurai is in a area called Shinjuku, which is where we are now. We've arrived here at Shinjuku to look for more leads. Yeah, can't be too neutral if you're going for neutrality. It's unacceptable. And we're gonna meet a very cool character here, very trustworthy character, in fact. Uh, this is Hikaru. Hikaru is a very innocent, trustworthy, uh, unnotable schoolgirl that uh, just happens to know exactly who we are and exactly what we're looking for and exactly where the Black Samurai is. You know, no, uh, no reason for that. Just, you know, just trustworthy schoolgirl Hikaru here. Yes, uh, the girl's name is Hikaru. Uh, ignore the fact that that translates to light. In, uh, in English. You know, she knows all these things. But, you know, Walter thinks she's cute, so that works. So, you know, obviously we can trust her. She helped us out. For you. I'm gonna go over here. Here we're gonna be accepting a quest. This is, uh, one of the photo quests we have to do in order to get neutral. And, uh, we're gonna be accepting that quest here. It's gonna be the second to last quest we finish. So she wants us to take a picture of Kasuma Gasaki and then give it back to her. We were just in Kasumagasaki, and we'll take that picture in a little bit, but uh, yeah, we're, uh, she, she might have to wait for it a little bit, you know. The reason she wants us to take the picture is because she's kind of shirking her duties. She's like, yeah, I'm supposed to get this picture to inspect Kasumagasaki, but like, I kind of don't want to go because it's a little out of the way, so can you do it for me? So, so you know, being the, the very nice but neutral-minded people that we are, we're going to do the quest for her, but we're uh, going to make her wait until the end of the game to do so. 
here stopping by the Hunters Association to pick up a quest. This game has this weird thing where sometimes it gives you side quests that you actually have to accept to progress through the story. This is one of them. Uh, here we have to examine the bulletin board. Every time you examine the board, it opens up any side quests uh, that are available for the area. And we have to accept corpse disposal. And this is going to be where we're going to be catching up on our levels a lot. Uh, we are somewhat under leveled at this point. Uh, but thankfully, the fights here uh, give a lot of experience points. So we'll go from being pretty under leveled to being at about appropriate level. But uh, this is more fights, so uh, uh, we'll show off one of them, and then we have seven of these things we have to kill, and then at the end we do have a boss fight. I'm gonna save. Definitely did not lose a practice run to not saving for like 20 minutes here. So yeah, these are the corpses. They're weak to fire. We burn them. And... Uh, that's, uh, that's really all there is to say. During this quest, Angel will evolve. Uh, the Divine... There, a very special thing about certain types of demons in this game is that several demons will actually evolve into other demons when they hit a certain level. Uh, the Divine Line specifically is very special in the sense that the Divine Line uh, evolves up through the entire line of demons. We won't be seeing that as much, but Angel will evolve into Archangel and then into Principality. Older routes would then evolve that into power, but we're going to be stopping at Principality. Burrows. But, uh, we will see Angel evolve shortly. If her EXP was correct and she didn't die a ton, she would have evolved at that fight. But, uh, Angel's kind of been taking a lot of dirt naps lately, so she'll evolve here. Which is fine, it just means I need to make sure that Archangel just evolves into Principality in time. And uh, we're good for more uh, more donations. Again, this part's pretty, uh, pretty cut and dry. Just find the thing, kill the thing, and uh, watch Angel miss a bunch. <laughs> all right, well, we have all kinds of awesome vid wars still open for games coming up later in the marathon, including for Monster Sanctuary, you can choose the character's costume. We have absolutely no donations towards that whatsoever. So it would only take you a single dollar to choose if you want the character's costume to be the Monster Keeper outfit, the Keeper Master outfit, the Winter Explorer outfit, or the Old World Tycoon outfit. You can be the first to donate towards that bid war. We have a bid war also for Yakuza Like a Dragon to choose the language the game will be played at. The choices are English and Japanese. Again, no donations towards that bid war yet. So if you would like to hear that game played in a particular language, it would be a wonderful time to get a donation in. And your donation will be the donation in the lead because we don't have any donations towards it so far. Friendly reminder that uh, Japanese is always the correct language to play Yakuza in. And if you disagree with me, you should uh, donate to make sure that that's not true. It's definitely time to start a sub dub war in the chat. Let's go. I'm generally uh, one of those people that's pretty big fan of dubs for games, but uh, I will... Uh... We'll say, gotta play, uh, gotta play Yakuza in Japanese. But if you disagree with me, feel free to, uh, feel free to, you know, put your money where your mouth is on right. that and prove Vote me wrong. Right, with your wallet. <laughs> Go. We can keep going, we still have, like three or four more minutes of this. Sure things. Well, you may have noticed, talk about incentives and prizes. This means you get to vote with your wallet to name characters, get our runners to complete difficult or ridiculous tasks, or help pick which story you get to see in certain games. You can also become eligible to win prizes donated by community members. And all donations go to NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. NAMI wants you to know it is okay to not be okay right now. For more information about how you can donate, type Three exclamation point left. donate in chat. And for more information on NAMI, you can type exclamation point N-A-M-I in chat. Yeah. 
We still have time. Yes. I would we... like to send out some thanks to the people involved in our foreign language restreams, our German restream at twitch.tv slash Germansh, and our Japanese stream, twitch.tv slash Japanese underscore restream. If those restreams can help you enjoy the marathon, go check them out and send them some love. Yeah. Interesting Mahama stone, but all right. Oh. We'll probably sell that. Two targets left. So fun fact about this area we're in in uh, Shinjuku, it has some uh, rather infamously difficult enemy uh, encounters. Specifically, the uh, the large man configuration uh, has an enemy in it called Macabre. It's uh, everyone's favorite uh, scythe wielding grim, grim reaper like fellow. And uh, Macabre is has a skill called Blight, which is an area effect uh, physical skill that inflicts poison. Blight is kind of strong in this game, <laughs> to the point that, you know, we're a little underleveled now, so if we get into an encounter with Macabre and they go first, we're absolutely dying. However, the same holds true if, for example, we were to come back here at, like, level 50-ish, uh, you know, maybe during the end game while we're doing quest cleanup. If we were to, you know, get jumped by that encounter, there's a... Uh, Definitely uh, still in danger of dying to that fight, so uh, very spooky encounter. Macabre being a level 23 demon yet, uh, being more than a match for a level 50-something party. Uh, unfortunately, Blight's pretty terrible if you actually use it, as is the uh, general rule for uh, RPGs. You know, all the great skills that enemies kill you with are basically useless when you get it. And we only have one more left, and then we will be fighting Dolahan, who is the next boss fight we have. Uh, nice uh, hitbox on that pole. Very cool. Game has uh, some very lovely collision. Sometimes it's just like, well, there's nothing here, but uh, there's a wall anyway. So that was an example of that. And here is the final fight. The... Pretty similar to the rest of them. It's after this that things get uh, get a little spicy. Stuff like Iron Claw being uh, in Nocturne being an exception. Uh, Shoutouts to like everything that has Iron Claw in Nocturne and the uh, the uh, the high body count that that has uh, accumulated over the years. All right, so this hunter shows up and he's like, hey, you're the ones that killed the corpses, right? Well, that was kind of not cool. Why are you doing that? I'm kind of mad at you. So uh, I'm going to eat this red pill and turn into a demon now. And uh, does so. You know, just casually is like, suddenly demon. So this is Dolahan. Uh, Dolahan is uh, part knight, part bionicle as uh, shown by the ball bearing at the top of their head. So uh, we're gonna kind of have to deal with this. Can't have more uh, more random corpses around. That's kind of unsanitary. Got to take care of that. Uh, fortunately, this fight's pretty fast, which is good. Dullahan's another fight that likes to throw insta-kills and uh, target specifically the main character with them. Uh, and Pokachu, you know, kinda doesn't like dying, because death is, turns out to not be a good thing. But we, uh, we beat Dolahan in one turn and we finish her off for some, uh, some alignment points. That fight is 99% of the time a one turn, sometimes, uh, sometimes weird things happen if you get low damage rolls or weird turn orders, but... But, uh, thankfully, that was not this attempt. And with that, we have, uh, somewhat earned the respect of the Ashurakai. Again, the, the mobsters we've been running into. And as such, that means they will allow us to do a little bit of a task for them. Uh, that task also will have the, uh, something called the Jiraiya Talisman as a reward. Haven't talked about it much. Basically, the entire reason we're running around here is if you were to go to Ikebukuro, which is where uh, Hikaru told us the Black Samurai is, 
Uh, if we were to go to Ikebukuro now, there would be a firewall, like a literal wall of fire there, and uh, a person there would be like, hey, you need the Jiraiya Talisman to open this uh, barrier. And so here we find this dude that's like, yo, if you kill this demon for us, we'll give you the Jiraiya Talisman. And we're like, oh, well, that's awfully convenient. Let's, uh, let's go kill that demon. And uh, if this was about a month ago, that's exactly what we would do. I mean, I live in Arizona. I basically have, like, walls of fire everywhere. It's a pretty common occurrence here, so gotta mix it up with the home decor. <laughs> but uh, picking up some more camera quests, because obviously the best way to become the hope of Tokyo is to become Tokyo's greatest photographer. But uh, as of a month ago, we would uh, be fighting the demon here. However, uh, things have changed. This is the one time in the entire game we will not be selecting the default answer for a, uh, a dialogue. And fortunately, it does give us some extra chaos points, but it's not enough to cause any sort of concern with uh, response routing. But uh, we gotta head on over here and not get attacked by the gorilla. Because uh, as it turns out, the, the fight we're about to do is Quebico. And Quebico is usually an easy fight, but sometimes he can just kind of punch you in the face and because everything in this game is a wet piece of paper, uh, not exactly a livable experience. So uh, after having this happen multiple times in a row to multiple runners simultaneously, uh, it was uh, determined that the other encounter we can fight here against... Uh, a group of harpies is actually faster and a lot safer to fight. Uh, the only downside to this is that we don't get paid by the Ashurakai for killing Quebico. We still get the Jiraiya Talisman because Quebico has it and just gives it to us. Uh, but the Ashurakai doesn't pay us, so we do have to pick up some extra money. Uh, but this Harpy Horde is much, much safer to fight than uh, the alternative of fighting the big, uh, the big coral monster or whatever he is. Uh, but first we get this little nice dialogue where, uh, this is Quebico, by the way. Uh, I could not begin to, to tell you what he is supposed to be. <laughs> In fact, my split for this, uh, part used to be, uh, what even is this? Now it's just there was a boss here. But, uh, yeah, if someone can tell me what this is supposed to be, that'd be great. He looks like some sort of combination of a, of a rock monster and some coral or something. But, uh, we're, we're not gonna kill him. He's kind of spooky. So, uh, instead we're gonna... Even though this guy was, you know, paying us to, to fight, uh, we're going to say no. We're going to fight this group instead. Uh, this fight is pretty... Even though they just killed Tobu, uh, rest in peace, our snakes and our uh, gourd snake. It's pretty unanimous in chat. Everybody believes that boss is an onion. Except for one person who believes it's a green onion and garlic, which I, I like that interpretation a lot. Yeah, that's a very appropriate set of seasonings. I like that uh, that interpretation, but yeah, we uh, we beat the we beat the harpies, and then he's like, "Oh well, uh, cool, thanks for helping me, but you killed a bunch of things here, so this place is kind of unclean now. So I'm gonna take my family and leave." But uh, here, have the Jiraiya talisman anyway. Thanks, bud. So we're like, "Oh well, we tried to protect the demon, but uh, he's kind of gone anyway." Cool. <laughs> But it's fine, because we, we got the Jiraiya Talisman, so now we can move on to uh, what I mentioned before about how after we beat Medusa, how the game is pretty easy for the most part, with some exceptions. We're about to get to two really big exceptions. Uh, I believe we're currently sitting at $10 for, uh, for charity, if I'm correct. That is the last thing that you said out loud. <laughs> All right. So, your uh, personal donation challenge is what you're talking about, right? Do you want to remind yes. everybody in case people just tuned in what that yes. challenge is? Yeah. So for those of you just joining us, I'm donating $2 for every death or every death-like situation, meaning a fight that basically winning it would result in me die in a massive inconvenience that basically might as well be a death anyway, such as MC dying to a fight but me still winning or... Uh, getting into an encounter that I can't win or that I could win, but it'd be slow or would cause problems, etc. Uh, and so $2 for every one of those 
and $5 for every single fusion accident. We are currently at zero fusion accidents, but we've had about five deaths, quote, so far. So uh, that number is at five, which is $10. Uh, this next fight might uh, might make charity a lot of money. Uh, the next fight is Ose. It's one of those fights. This game has this theme going where all of the inconsistent fights in this game are inconsistent purely because they go before we do. Uh, this next fight is one of them. Uh, it's everyone's favorite uh, uh, cape and thong wearing uh, kitty cat, Ose. And he's kind of rude as an understatement. Uh, it's not uncommon for runs of this game to have one or two deaths to this guy. Uh, I heard I hold the current record for deaths to Ose in a speedrun. Uh, that current record is uh, nine consecutive Flag. deaths to Ose. So I'm gonna go peel first. So yeah, now we're wearing the full demonica, and we'll be wearing this for most of the rest of the run. So uh, we're basically speedrunning Strange Journey now. It's a speedrun in a speedrun. Uh, so. Yeah, we might be uh, racking up that donation total here in a in a bit, depending on if the if the kitty is feeling cooperative or not. The National Alliance on Mental Illness thanks you. All right, run through here, and the source of our uh, of our sorrow is the Terminal Guardian. Once again, this time he goes from uh, his. Uh, I believe he was, like, kind of a trucker dude before. Now he's uh, just some dude in a hoodie. And uh, he summons the kitty. And the kitty does not like my piggy. Okay, and that is a... Uh, all right, cool. That's uh, $12 to charity. Fortunately... You, kidding. you super weren't kidding. <laughs> fortunately, dying to Ose is very quick. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> he can make this last as long as he wants. Like I said, he can make this last as long as he wants. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so that's 14. You know, this cat actually reminds me of this character from this wrestling manga. It has, like, huh. a cat mask. I'm blanking on the name, though. Oh. All right, round three. Uh, hey, we lived. We get to do one turn. What a time to be alive. All right. Thank you, Chad. It's Tiger Mask. Thank you. All right, so we're going to throw up a Rakundo, which is a defense debuff on him. If he detects any debuffs on himself, he will take one of his turns to remove them. Uh, so we only have to survive one round of attacks instead of two. Also, he targeted Jonathan there, which is really helpful. So, if I play my cards right here, I'm going to taunt him. That may seem really silly, but uh, hopefully he just kind of dies here. Uh, he will hopefully die here, or Jonathan will kill him. All right, we did it. We beat Ose third try. So that was the first of two fights in this uh, short stretch that can go rather interestingly. Uh, the next up is a, is a fight called Shi Wang Mu. Shi Wang Mu is uh, a mostly scripted fight. She is scripted trademark. Uh, as long as nothing goes wrong, the fight is entirely scripted and free, and I should never die to Shi Wang Mu. Uh... However, sometimes everything does not go all according to plan, and you do die to Shi Wang Mu. And Shi Wang Mu is unique in the fact that it's the uh, single worst boss fight to die to in the entire run, uh, in terms of time loss per death. So deaths to say they were relatively fast. No, no big deal. Uh, Shi Wang Mu, if she decides to kill me near the end of the fight, that's about a five minute. Uh, Five minute chunk of time because there's a lot of cutscenes in the middle of the boss fight. So, uh, 
Y'all have any uh, bless emotes? We're gonna we're gonna need all the good luck we can get for this fight. Again, should be scripted, but uh, should and is are two very different words with uh, vastly different meanings in this case. But uh, while we are marching on over there, this is a excellent time for more for more donations, so that we can get. Uh, for more donations, more plugs, because we have uh, probably going to be doing a bunch of explaining during the during the next bit. Lovely. My cat has decided this is an excellent time for pets. However, she's just going to have to wait. Kyo spent in, sent in, excuse me, $15. Says, hi, Freedom. Keep up the amazing work on your wonderful run. I expect nothing but excellence. Best of luck, homie. Yo, what up, Kios? Thank you so much. Much appreciated, my dude. Shoutouts to Kios. Kios is an awesome person. Pretty much my uh, my main introduction to uh, the RPG speedrunning community. Went to uh, I went to RPG Limit Break back in 2018, knowing no one at all. Zero people. Very uh, fairly quiet, shy person. Knew no one. Uh, happened to bump into Kios doing uh, his practice run for uh, Final Fantasy 15, and. Dude just immediately uh, was super nice, started talking to me, introduced me to a bunch of other awesome people. Definitely uh, as involved in the RPG speedrunning community as I am uh, directly as a result of Kios being an awesome dude. So shoutouts to Kios Little Monster, also part of the uh, part of the staff for this event, doing a great job putting this uh, putting this event on for an awesome cause. So here's the, the firewall we were talking about. This is Kaga. She is a, a unique character in the sense that she has a portrait and a name. Which, you know, obviously means she's going to be very important for, like, the rest of the game. We're going to see her a lot, have plenty of interactions with her. Uh, very relevant to the uh, to the ongoing events here in Tokyo. But uh, she's like, wow, hunters are usually kind of weak, but you, uh, you surprisingly managed to get the Jiraiya Talisman. Kind of impressed, but... Uh, Definitely wouldn't recommend fighting Shi Wang Mu because she's kind of powerful and she just leaves. So here we're going to take a picture of this car uh, for one of the quests we accept. We accepted. We're going to gonna hop down here. We. All right, we're really quick. Uh, donation plug if you got one. We got a little more movement before I have to start explaining uh, again. Okay, well, I just want to tell everybody about Nami's social media accounts. If you were wanting to go and check them out, you can find them on Facebook at, at Nami, on Twitter at, at Nami Communicate, on Instagram at, at Nami Communicate, and on Tumblr at notalone.nami.org, and also ok2talk.org. That's ok, and then the number two, talk.org. All right, so here we have uh, we have a domain. This is where Shi Wang Mu is. We do have a mini boss we have to fight. That is uh, a cow. And uh, cows in SMT are uh, rather prevalent. This one is uh, a cow that's flying on a uh, on a flying Nimbus. It's uh, the Goku cow. I'm just never expecting anything you say. You're like, oh, we have a fight and it's a cow. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sometimes you just you just gotta roll with uh, roll with whatever the game throws your way. We've had the duck, we've had the pig, we got the cow, yeah, Exactly. Got a got an entire barn here in uh, Shin Megami Tensei Four Land. Uh, however, uh, this cow is one of those fights that's either completely free or we just die. Well, or an enemy encounter could attack me like two steps from the. Uh... Oh, that's lovely. Or you know, an enemy can swarm me two steps from the from the place. That works too. Well, I can fight this really quick though shouldn't be too much of a problem as long as uh long as pokachu here can uh un paralysis themselves uh, i forget what is going a week to ice okay that's what i figured all right um da -da 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 -da. i don't want to use zeo because of uh by shizen there uh hmm. what did you just oh <laughs> like what did Jonathan just do? I was so confused. He uh was a bro and removed my uh my stun. Alright. Well, extra fight there just for funsies. And this is why we don't take random encounters, because that was uh 
not exactly the swiftest uh, fight in the world. But uh, like I was saying, we now get to, uh, yeah, like half a step. Uh, this cow is either going to be really free or we're going to die to him. Uh, reminder, skills that are really bad for us to use are usually really good for the enemies. This cow has Megaton Press, which is another one of those low accuracy, high crit rate, high crit rate skills. And, uh, meaning uh, that this cow might just, like, crit us into oblivion. I'm really Hopefully appreciating though. how many monsters in this game just randomly have beards. It's, uh, gotta rep it. It's No Shave November. Gotta, gotta rep the beard. I, uh, <laughs> rockin' one myself, though. It's less for No Shave November and just, I'm generally bearded, but, uh, you know, gotta, gotta rep the cause. And there we go. The cow was nice. We had a very amicable, uh, amicable cow there. All right, and now we get another fusion chain. This one's fairly long, so uh, like always, take it away. All right, friends, did you know that NAMI operates a national helpline available Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which provides information, referrals, resources, do, and a compassionate, understanding, trained volunteer do, to support the caller? That's actually really, really awesome. <laughs> we got uh, some very excited Mito there at that news. Uh, this angel. There it is. We're only putting one skill on this harpy here because we'll have to buy her from the compendium later. And buying things from the compendium, the cost is based on what skills they have. So since we have to buy that harpy later, we want her to be cheap. You can keep going, this chain goes for a bit. All right, all right. Well, I just want to remind everybody that we have some lovely prizes for you. If you do decide to donate to NAMI right now, available for a $5 minimum donation, you will be entered to win a red Bluetooth wireless pro controller that was donated by Game KMD. Thank you so much, Game KMD, for your generosity. If those of you watching would like to know more about Game KMD, you can check out their Twitter. On Twitter, they are Game underscore KMD, and they are also on Instagram under the same thing, Game underscore KMD. We also have available a Shin Megami Tensei 5 Switch Steelbook Edition. You will be entered to win a copy of that for a minimum donation of $15. And that was donated by the Quest for Glory, Hope, and Healing 2 staff. Thank you so much. Awesome. Yeah, we, uh... So we fused two elements during that chain. Elements are a very special type of demon in this game, where... Whereas there's, like, this really complicated system as far as, like, this type of demon plus this type of demon will generally get this other result of demon. Uh, elements are special in the sense that they will always rank up or down a, uh, a demon within the same, uh, within the same clan, so to speak. And so we used Eros there, we'll be using a lot of Eros to, uh, rank up Oni into Azumi, and then we're using a Flamus for this fight, which we'll be using quite a bit later. Alright, this is Shiwang Mu. Uh, again, should be scripted, mostly is, kinda depends on what Isabeau decides to do here. Uh... This boss is has a unique element to it. You'll notice I'm hitting her with a weakness, but it's doing one damage. Uh, this fight has a story trigger in it in uh, that after you hit her three times, it starts a plot device. We want our party or our partner to hit the to get the last hit so we can focus on buffing. However, uh, sometimes your partner misses and if your partner misses, you basically just lose the fight there. So there uh, had to rely on Isabeau hitting. Thankfully, she did. Uh, friendly reminder, Isabeau is the best character in this game and uh, is doing a great job at proving that. She, in fact, has even killed uh, the final boss for me a couple of times. She is that awesome. 
But uh, here we get this cutscene where, uh, oh no, Kaga, the, the very important character is uh, getting, uh, got, uh, became snack time, essentially. However, the uh, Kaga and the rest of the Ring of Gaia, which is this, basically this group of, uh, of humans and demons that seek for power, uh, were so determined to defeat Shiwan Mu that they actually fought her from within her stomach, and now she lost her protection, and so we can... Uh, now uh, actually do damage to Shion Mu. So this is why if uh, bad things happen during this fight and we miss, like, it, all it takes is missing, pretty much. Missing twice. Uh, this fight costs a lot of time to, to have to redo, because we have to rewatch that cutscene every single time we do this fight if there is a uh, unfortunate miss during the events of uh, this kill here. So her first, uh, her first turn that she takes is always scripted. She will all use an ability called Orchid Garden, which is uh, basically Luster Candy, which is an, an all buff. She'll use Orchid Garden, and then she'll use an ability that uh, drains HP from the party. Uh, so those attacks aren't dangerous at all. That's why we want to make sure that we kill her this turn now, because her other abilities are absolutely terrifying. She has uh, access to uh, Megaton Press, which again, very spooky. Also, Flynn missed. That's also very spooky. Hopefully, Flamus can kill. Uh, that's interesting. Okay, Isabeau is the best character in this game. Friendly reminder. Just saved the run. That would have uh, been potentially scary. We did have two people smirking there, which would have made the situation less terrifying, but that was... Uh, <laughs> That was almost quite, uh, quite bad. So, uh, Isabeau's awesome. Also, now we're gonna learn Ice Breath. Uh, <sighs> we've been hinting at it before. Uh, Ice Breath is a unique type of skill that has the, it has the power level of Bufu, but it costs, uh, like five times as much as Bufu. Due to the fact that uh, Bufu can, or Ice Breath can hit one to four times at random targets. Uh, if it hits uh, two times, it's equal to the strength of a Bufula. If it hits three or four times, then it's about the strength of a Bufu Dine, which is the heavy damage version of it. Uh, it has the potential to be really good. In fact, it is, uh, statistically, it is quite a good skill. And that is not something you can argue with however <laughs> in practice you you know you you think oh yeah Bo ice breath great skill hits a lot you know all this good stuff uh and you know until in pre until you're playing the game and you have a run where you suddenly get like five or six ice breaths in a row that all do single hits and you're basically just using like the the fancy name brand version of bufu and uh suddenly are out of mp because you've been casting uh Expensive Bufu at everything. Uh, in some cases, this can get you killed. In other cases, it can just lose lots of time. And so uh, we have a saying in my uh, in my chat whenever Ice Breath decides to misbehave, where we uh, we like to throw out statistically good skill in all in all caps uh, to remind ourselves the that <laughs> the skill is supposed to be good. So uh, we we have about five or six fights, uh, five or six bosses or so that we have to ice breath down. So uh, hopefully ice breath behaves tonight. Uh, why don't I take the Buffalo Whisper from Yuki Joro? Uh, the problem is that Yuki Joro doesn't have the skill slots uh, to have Buffalo and give us Ma Buffalo because we learned Ma Buffalo from her, uh, a demon we will be fusing later. Uh, the problem is we don't have the skill slots to learn Bufula, and uh, by the time uh, Yuki would whisper her skills to us, uh, we're past about half of the fights that we would Ice Breath, and most of the fights after that point are a lot easier, and a lot less like, oh, Ice Breath did bad things, you die. So as nice as it would be to, to swap it for something like Bufula, it's just, uh, Ice Breath is just too convenient, and it just has the potential of being so good that you just kind of have to have to deal with it. Uh, who is running? Uh, I am Freedom Pulse 97 uh, exclamation point runner. You can see my stuff.
I gotta say, Bufu is my new favorite spell name ever, and it's really fun to hear you talk about expensive Bufu and Bufula. Yeah. Uh, spending too much on that expensive Bufu. You can work yeah. on that Bufu habit. Right. It's very fun to just, like, just start saying repeatedly. It's one of those, like, say it five times fast, and it just kind of loses all meaning. Bufu, 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 I can't do it. All right, so Prince. Of, so thankfully, even though Angel is behind on EXP, Principality still evolved at the proper time, uh, which is awesome. So we have Principality, and that's as far as we're taking the Divine Line. But also, we got Mazanma from uh, our girl, Sh uh, not Shikome, uh, Senri. There we go. So uh, Mazanma is really cool. It's uh, Area of Effect, Tier 2, Force skill. We'll have it on Flynn for the rest, or excuse me, we'll have it on uh, Pokachu for the rest of the game. It's that good. And uh, we also got Recarm as well, which is a Revival skill. Uh, we'll have that on MC for like five minutes. The, the only reason we grab it is because Augie's kind of useless at this point. Fire is uh, surprisingly the worst element in the game. Which is funny, because you think, like, you know, being able to throw literal fire at your enemies would be pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, uh, all of the bosses had the same idea, so most bosses in this game uh, use fire and therefore have uh, have resistance of some sort to it. Getting more saying things five times challenges here yes. in the chat. I would say if you want me to say silly things, please donate for it. Oops. All right, so here we're gonna uh, we're gonna be getting our revenge on the Lilums from earlier. We uh, we finally caught up to the Black Samurai. We found out she was in this bookstore here. So uh, she is uh, she has sent her uh, her group of pretty girls to uh, dissuade us from proceeding. Uh, fortunately, this time we're uh, we're we're immune to their out of game mechanics. And so we can just uh, Mazanma them down. They are weak to ice. However, ice breathing them isn't great. I will do that with uh, Princey, though, here. So, But Mazanma just does so much damage that it's just kind of better. No way. Lame. Once again, the ensemble voices in this game are uh, top tier. Oh boy, Sabatma. <laughs> Sometimes I like to... Uh, make fun comments on the skill changes earlier we had bad company which is uh which is a skill that exists as is sabatma they both exist in this game and they're they exist both of them serve to pull demons from the stock but you can do that with mc and we found the black samurai and now we get a fun line I so like uh you just survived the most brutal attack of all being told by a bunch of teens that you're lame after your last volume so, uh, is a... <laughs> so the Black Samurai tries to do the most vile and insidious thing that any character has ever done and spoil Isabeau's manga for her. Uh, Isabeau thankfully withstands the attack. And we, uh, we arrest the Black Samurai. That's it. We did it. Game's over. We win. The Black Samurai is truly evil. It's just been proven. Spoiler yep. alert. Yeah, to, to address something that's being talked about in chat, in this game, magic is objectively better in every instance unless you're doing the DLC fights, in which case there's one specific fizz skill that's so good you kind of have to use it. Uh, especially because some of the post-game DLC in this game is very rude. Uh, so yeah, fizz is generally better unless you're specifically doing the DLC. Or sorry, magic is better in this game unless you're doing the, uh, the post-game DLC. So yeah, we, uh, we capture the Black Samurai, and Hugo gets really excited about this and decides to hold an execution. And he's going to make it public to be like, all right, everyone, books are bad, and remember that. Uh, we're, we're a little off-put by this, except for Jonathan. He's kind of uh, like, yo, an execution, that sounds like fun. You going to join me in this? We're like, all right, all right there, Jonathan. Uh, sure, why not? Let's uh, go to the Obelisk Plaza and witness this uh, execution. Also, this is uh, the cutscene I was referring to when I said that the ensemble noises in this game are great. So, uh, the, 
the crowd will be mocking the black samurai with lines of uh they're just like all right just make fun of this person and someone was like ah ha 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 and then suddenly uh the black samurai pulls a pulls a bit of a twist uh they they let her give her last words and she starts uh, basically mocking everyone in Mikado's way of life and actually saying that even though they will execute her, she will come back to life uh, to continue spreading chaos in Mikado. Also, shout outs to the woman that was just like, oh, no way. Best line in this game. So yeah, she uh, she's like, yeah, I'll resurrect and I'm going to keep uh, keep bringing books to people and everyone is freaked out by this. Uh, but she is executed, but it kind of ruins the ruins the festive occasion. And then we're uh, we're summoned to the monastery by this uh, rather uh, before this point pretty trustworthy uh, nun, Sister Gabby. She's like, "Hey, I have a quest for you." And we're like, "Okay, sounds good." And she's like, "So there's three people who are locked up in this super secure tower in Tokyo that are very important to Mikado. Don't worry about why there's three people that are super important to Mikado just locked up in Tokyo, but uh." Here, take this rosary and uh, go uh, go save those people. And we're like, all right, sure, sounds good. Let's uh, go on a fun little vacation. And uh, yeah, we have more fusions and some shopping Be before we do that. But we're going to head to Shinjuku Park, and then we'll get to experience Ice Breath in all of its glory. Uh, one sec. Uh you have plugs, uh, now is a good time for that. Yes, I would like to talk about the incentives that we have coming up, including the Persona 5 Strikers Fight the Reaper Super Boss incentives. Not unlocked at all. We are looking for $750. We're sitting at 15 out of those $750. And then, of course, the other Persona 5 Strikers incentive. We have Fuse and Use. Mothman. I have some feelings about this one. I'm really, really hoping that we can unlock this incentive. We are sitting at exactly zero donations out of the $500 we are looking for to unlock that. And then finally, that Final Fantasy X AI Task Showcase that was just recently opened. This is a new incentive. We're looking for $2,500. sitting at $50, so we do have a ways to go, but I absolutely believe that we can make it. Yeah, absolutely, that that run sounds super exciting. As does Mothman. Really want to, uh, really want to see that run. And I mentioned this before. I was talking to Tatsuya, who's one of the runners. He's a friend of mine, awesome person. Was uh, mentioning he really wants to show off that Mothman goal because the run normally doesn't use Mothman at all, but it's definitely a very interesting. Uh, Makes the run a little different little in and a lot more interesting for uh, showing off Mothman. So really want to uh, show that off if you can. So please donate for uh, please donate for that. All right, more fusion. Turn to grand slice. Wow, my skills are in a very weird order at this point. I need those ice presents on the first one. Okay, that's right. Yeah, the nice thing about the Shin Megami Tensei games, because uh, I see people talking about it in chat, is that the entire game consists in a multiverse. So really any game, if you're looking for a good starting point for the series, you can really start at any point in the at any point and you'll be able to uh, have an idea as to what's going on. There's very little connections between games. They're pretty other than like one and two are connected and then like four and four A are connected. Other than that, all of the games are very separate from each other. So you can you can really start at any point in the series if you're wanting to try them out. My personal recommendation is either this game or uh, uh, Nocturne. Nocturne is a classic. It's very well known, very well beloved in the series uh, amongst the fans. And it got a, an HD remaster recently, so it's definitely the easiest to get your hands on because uh, it's on Steam, PC, and PS4. Alternatively, Shin Megami Tensei 5 just came out a couple hours ago in the US and is out everywhere else by this point as well. So uh, that is another great option. Switch game, I've heard good things about it so far. Not gonna be able to play it for a bit because uh, we're here uh, enjoying this classic as well. But also uh, amazing game from what I have been told.
Yeah, so there are certain characters like Steven or Mido that are in multiple games in the series. However, their their role is pretty loosely connected. Almost done with this fusion chain. We just got to uh, special summon our friend High Pixie here. Uh, he gonna grab slice with Ufu and the. Uh... Yep. Okay. Yes, I also personally the Digital Devil Saga games are some of my favorites. If you have a PS3 or a PS2. They are pretty easily accessible. All right, so did that chain, and now we're gonna get to see Ice Breath in its uh, in its debut performance. Uh, so let's uh, let's hope for some good rolls. It's possible Ice Breath will get some stage fright. You know, it's been uh, it's been eagerly anticipated. It's a little scary. It's its first uh, it's its first showing. We uh, gotta show Ice Breath some love and some support in this uh, in this stressful time for it. As soon as I save and reload to reset the universe once again. Alright, so this upcoming fight is Balor. This is one of the many fights that got majorly rerouted uh, recently. Well, not recently, but in the last six months or something to make it much more consistent. Alright, Ice Breath, let's go. Alright, that's a three. It's a promising start. Alright, uh, Stun Needles with Shikome, because Stun Needles is kind of better. Alright, that's one for Stun Needles. Alright, we got two threes. Ice Breath's look, coming strong right now. And we got a Miragi on, that's very good. Arias is nice, because Arias uh, drains uh, fire. Below fire is one of the main things Belor uses, along with... There we go, that was a good Belor fight. Let's go. Ice Breath, uh, leaving a good first impression. Uh, I believe we're currently at 14 for charity. That is correct. I have been keeping track. Awesome. All right, that was a very good, was a very good Balor fight. Uh, he can also use Megaton Press, like seemingly everything else in this game, uh, and that can be a little bit more painful. Uh, we fuse Arias there specifically because Arias drains fire. So if he uses Miragion, then we're basically guaranteed to be safe uh, for at least one turn. Generally, two turn there is pretty pretty free as long as Ice Breath doesn't decide to just single hit every single time. Yeah, so uh, Ice Breath is one to... In this game, it's one to four hits just in general uh, at random targets. But since there's only one target, it's just one to four hits on that target. But, uh, again, they're either really good or really bad, hence statistically good, because if they hit twice, then they will out-damage Bufu. So they're statistically good, just, you know, sometimes they just don't work very well. And this is a, a gauntlet of several fights where we just kind of have to hope Ice Breath does good things. All right, Ice Breath is, uh, Ice Breath's doing work right now. It's, uh, taking this whole marathon thing in stride. All right. Also have Ice Breath with the Shikome as well, so we can have double the statistics. Wow, all right. Ice Breath out here to make me look like a fool now after, uh, mentioning how sometimes it's not great like oh really let me uh statistically I mean... yeah let me just prove you wrong in front of a live audience now which is fine <laughs> it's a good problem to have
Yeah, if you think this run uses statistically good skills a lot, the uh, the conflict or normal difficulty speed run for uh, for Apocalypse uses an ability called uh, Floral Gust for most of the damage, which is like Ice Breath, but it's medium tier damage and it's Force Element. And uh, it's either Floral Gust or Floral Bust, because uh, single hits on Floral Gust are uh, really sad. <laughs> Because uh, 4A has a lot of MP starvation uh, issues, and Floral Gust costs uh, 64 MP base. We later get it down to about 48. But it's uh, it's very expensive to be throwing out, like, single hits. But when it gets quad hits, it does, like, over 10k damage to the final boss and can, like, two-shot him. So it's a uh, feast or famine. All right, so after we killed Murmur, we found this naked dude in a cage that uh, Jonathan then escorted out. Now we uh, we have uh, Gamori, who is uh, hashtag goals, because uh, her and her camel are coordinating outfits. It's uh, pretty impressive. She happened to find like a nice matching headdress for the for the camel. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, she is standing in our way, so the 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 squad goals kind of has to has to be uh, dismissed. And uh, we find another naked dude. This time, uh, Walter takes him away. This dude is wearing a mask and he's like, oh, uh, the mask is stopping me from knowing who I am or what I'm doing. Uh, but a kindred spirit can remove the mask, so you should take me to Gabby to take the mask off. Because she's the only person I actually remember. And we're like, huh. Gross. That's not weird at all. That uh, this random... Uh, oops, that's the wrong menu. That this random inconsequential nun just happens to uh, know who these random... Uh, random dudes are. Like, personally. You know, it's, it's fine. It's all very random. Oh. A uh, little bit of a lore fact to kind of explain why there's a fully developed uh, kingdom on top of Tokyo. Uh, this game actually has like timeline shenanigans or uh, time flow shenanigans uh, to the point that Mikado has been around for about 2,500 years in this game, uh, about two somewhere between 2,000 and 2,500 years. Uh, whereas if you ask anyone in Tokyo how long the ceiling has been up, they'll say it's been about 25 years. So uh, there's some some time shenanigans going on. So it makes it even stranger that someone like Gabby would happen to know uh, someone who's probably been in you know, prison for a couple thousand years. But, you know, details, details. Also, Asmodeus here. He's uh, one of the other really cool looking designs in this game. He's guarding the final uh, the final prisoner. And is a, is a very interesting fight for how uh, absolutely terrifying this guy looks. His fight isn't really all that bad. The attack he just used is an attack that does percentile damage to the party. Uh, and that's one of the few attacks he does. Uh, that being said, he can do other things that are kind of painful, especially if Shikome misses. But uh, hopefully we're still fine. Also, fun fact, he's not immune to Hama, which is uh, an insta-kill skill. Oh, well, Shikome died, that's fun. Uh, so you can actually insta-kill this boss, which is about as silly as it sounds. Uh, in fact, for funsies, let's go for it. Wait, oh uh, no, he's he has a lot of health left. If uh, I had more health, I would go for it, but unfortunately... Or if I had more... Uh, if he had less health, rather. If I was closer to taking him on, I would uh, go for it for the memes, but... Uh, unfortunately, kind of in a weird spot right now. That was spooky. All right. And he's red now, right? Yeah, okay, let's go for the Hama. Let's do it. Darn. I did it for the fans. Unfortunately, it didn't want to, uh... Didn't want to show its stuff. Alright, so that was Asmodeus. Uh, Shikome dying there was a little... A little unfortunate, but it's fine. We can just, uh... There's a fusion chain we need to do that involves her, and we'll just do the fusion chain afterwards. Yeah, right, Hama's just not quite as good as Ice Breath. He is a boss, so he does resist it. Uh, so it has, like, the 30% hit rate, but then it's, like, reduced by a bit because he's a boss. 
So it's like a very low chance of hitting, but in that situation where I was going to kill him anyway, it's like, yeah, I might as well do it. Uh, so I uh, found the third uh, third naked dude, Isabeau, uh, then takes him back to Mikado, and now we're tasked with walking back. Uh, while our party gets fast travel, we uh, unfortunately have to hoof it to the terminal. Uh, so now is a great time for uh, any donations, because we're just going to be walking back. Awesome. Well, I have a donation here. Oh, just a moment. From IG42 for $15. It says, donation goes to fight the Striker Super Boss. Don't fear the Reaper. Thank you so much for that donation, IG42. Yes, You're, thank you, thank you. Of course, referencing the Persona 5 Strikers Fight the Reaper Super Boss incentive that we have that we are trying to unlock. We are now sitting at $30 out of the $750 we are looking for. All right. Ah, that was, uh... Oh, this might be weird. Okay, we're good. Uh, so pick the High Pixie is awesome in the sense that she has an ability called Trafuri, which uh, guarantees run away from any encounter. Uh, because the run rate in this game is pretty, uh, pretty low. Burrows. Even if you are at, like, an appropriate level. So having a, a skill you can cast for 5 MP to get a guaranteed run is very nice. Also, that reminded me I need to put Shikome back in my party. You can, uh, keep going if there's more stuff. You know, I was actually thinking about it, and we're nearing the third hour of this run, so I wanted to remind everybody, if you have been watching and enjoying this entire time, it's important to remember to stand up and stretch from time to time. It's very, very good for you. Here, you need to take care of your mind. You also need to take care of your body. So if you've just been sitting this whole time watching, maybe consider standing up, having a little stretch, and also to stay hydrated, to get something to drink if you haven't had anything to drink in the last few hours. Most people are a little bit dehydrated, so take care of yourself. Have something to drink. Alright, so we turn in the, uh, we return back to the monastery and we're like, hey, what's so special about those dudes that they were guarded by, uh, kind of powerful demons, and she's like, well, uh, it's secret. To which we're just like, oh, okay. Huh. Not not really one to question uh, orders at this point. Uh, we're then tasked with a, a second assignment from Gabby, uh, as soon as these uh, level ups play out. There we go. Where she tells us, uh, the Black Samurai's body has actually vanished. So we thought that her threats of reviving or something was just idle idle threats to freak people out, but apparently she's vanished. So, uh, Gabby here tasks us with finding her again, but this time, instead of capturing her, she wants us to just straight up, ex uh, to just straight up kill her. So we get, uh, the quest to kill a black samurai, and then a, a little unnerved by, by a nun telling us to commit murder, we, uh, decide to get some fresh air when this samurai tells us that, uh, the leader of the Ashurakai actually wants to meet with us and has uh, opened the way to meet him in Shibuya. All right, I have a fusion chain to do. Booster four. What should we do, man? All right, we're going to be pulling our favorite pig from the compendium. And uh, we're going to be turning this pig into uh, into a cow. A holy cow, in fact. It's, uh, its clan is holy, so it is, in fact, a holy cow. Get some E-I-E-I-O's in chat. Then we're going we're gonna to take this holy cow, and uh, we're going to turn it into a monkey. A very smart that. monkey. I remember that being on the farm. And then, uh, Blamus is going to level up, apparently. And then we're going to take this monkey, we're going to turn him into, uh, into a flat doggo. 
This is Mikami. Mikami is best boy. Look at him. He's such a good boy. Paper doggo. And then we're going to turn our Flamus into a nerd, also known as Dantalian. Yeah, this is Dantalian. He's uh, probably like the best, de one of the best demons in the run, and he's level 32. And we'll be using him for most of the rest of the game. Uh, and then Shikome is going to evolve up into Yuki Joro. Star gotcha. Well, it's been so... pointed out in the chat, it actually is Friday, so it's Flat Friend Friday. There we go. <laughs> That's right. That's the yeah, it's the entire literature club all in one person. Alright, so party, Dantalian, and Yuki in. And then we warp back to Shinjuku again. The uh, the Shinjuku terminal probably gets the most use out of any terminal in the game. Which uh, is good, considering we had to fight Osei to get access to it. It's uh, better get its worth from uh, from the uh, from the kitty that we had to overcome to... That we had to conquest to gain access. Also, with Principality, though I haven't used the skill yet, I will now, we got an ability called Estoma Sword. What Estoma Sword does is if you run in, is if you hit any enemies with your sword or uh, run into any enemies on the overworld that you are a higher level than, you will kill the enemies instantly. You'll get zero experience or anything from it, but you can skip the fight and you don't have to do, like, any encounters or any saver loading or anything. It has some niche use. Uh, we are pretty underleveled for most of the run, but since we do have to revisit a lot of areas fairly frequently, uh, especially with uh, quest cleanup, it is very nice to have access to. So there we use it to get to Shibuya without having to worry about doing any dodges. Uh, nice thing about both Mikami and Dantalian is that they have access to a skill called Tetrakarn. And if you don't know what Tetrakarn does now, you're going to know by the end of the run, because basically every fight for the rest of the game involves Tetrakarn in some way, shape, or form. Uh, Tetrakarn puts up a physical repel shield on your entire party for one turn. Uh, reminder that if a attack gets repelled, the uh, person who uh, gets repelled on loses their entire turn. Uh, lots of things like to hit us with physical, as you may have noticed, so having something that just straight up repels physical is uh pretty uh pretty good so both of them have tetracarn will be making very good use of that and then uh dantelion also learns makara karn which does the exact same thing but for all magic that is not of the almighty element so uh, both are very good and this is why dantelion is such a good demon because learning both karns is great all right so there's this street vendor dude he asks if we're in the Ashura guy and then asks us if we can say the word erawan uh, which we then type in Erewhon, and he uh, takes us to our favorite uh, favorite weapons dealer. Who is very excited to see us. You had to come now. He also this is real, right? doubts the validity of anything we sell him. This is real, right? Here. This is real. Demands this is to know the, uh, the reality of anything we sell him. We also pick up the ice earrings, which is quite good. Also... Make sure you bring more Maka next time. Uh, the Ice Earring is an accessory that gives us the skill Ice Playroma. Uh, Playroma is just a fancy word for boost. So now we have Ice Boost on the main character. You may have noticed we're, we're using a lot of Ice skills here. So now those Ice skills will do 25% more damage. So a uh, little bit of a little bit of a buff to all of our uh, to all of our ice skills. So our statistically good skill just got statistically even better. But uh, we're given this quest here when we get to should uh, plot catch up. We're given a quest here when we get to Shibuya by Tayama, who's the leader of the Ashurakai, who's like, hey, 
My uh, my boys are selling these pills called Reds to the demons. Uh, basically, to explain, uh, Reds are these red pills that the Ashurakai has been distributing to demons that basically calms them down. Uh, the, the demons use it as food instead of attacking humans. And so this is how the Ashurakai has kept some sort of semblance of peace in Tokyo and why they're the dominant faction here. Uh, and so they, they kind of peddle it to the demons, but there is one spot that they really want to uh, really want to use to, to hand out the reds, and unfortunately, uh, it's being guarded by a demon named Kogosaburo. So, uh, because he's heard, it, uh, heard of our uh, very uh, proficient talent at uh, dispatching enemies, we're... Uh, He's basically going to blackmail us into doing it. Because he also tells us that he captured a samurai that was in Tokyo and will uh, we'll, uh, harm him if, we doesn't do, if we don't do exactly what he tells us to. So because of that, we, uh, we kind of have to come here and help him, uh, help him distribute some reds. Here we uh, talk to the dude who, who gives us the formal task. Before we were just making it to this place. Now we get the formal task to fight Kogosaburo. And uh, Kogosaburo was one of those fights that uh, can be kind of spooky if it wants to be. Uh, a lot of the fights in this game are either completely free or we just kind of die. This is one of those fights. So uh, charity might be uh, might be profiting here. We'll see. All right. Um... Uh... Cool, thank you, Isabeau. So he starts the fight by using Suku Kaja, which raises his evasion rate, which is kind of scary. Alright, so this is the spooky part. Yuki can miss one of her hits of Ice Breath, which could be really bad. Alright, we're good. That was two quad, two quad hits in a row. Yo! <laughs> that was three four hits in a row! <laughs> Ice Breath, actually OP. Which one takes me to the Matrix, right? Goodness gracious. Well, that was, uh, could not have gone any better. Alright, so here Yuki learns Mabufula. Which is just like Mazanma, but it's Bufu. And we're going to get rid of Recarm, which saw zero use whatsoever, but we had it because it was pretty. It's looking like PB pace? Uh, not not really. I, I may or may not have my splits up. And uh, I started the splits like 10 seconds late, but uh, not not quite PB pace. I'll just I'll just leave it at that. Though since we've been in Tokyo, things have been going fairly well. <laughs> Alright, so uh, Jonathan threatens that. That dude's like, alright, well, uh, since I have you here, you're gonna you're gonna keep working for me, right? And this kind of sets Jonathan off, and so he kind of threatens. So he very much threatens the dude, which is a bit of a breach of character for Jonathan. You know, normally being this very level-headed dude, it seems like the Tokyo is kind of starting to get to him. But uh, we do find out that Tayama is in the Hills building in Ropongi, which is just next door. So we get to uh, get to skedaddle on over there to finally meet with Tayama. And find out whatever what he wants us to do that's apparently so important that he had to get a dude all the way to Mikado to find out. bit more of a bit more of a walk here we want to fill some space absolutely well i wanted to let everybody know if you're enjoying watching questing for glory hope and healing too if you have been making some posts on social media about it we do have an event hashtag it's hashtag qfghh2 Just a little reminder about that. Also, you remember that we are here supporting NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. One in five Americans live with a mental health condition, and fewer than 50% of adults living with these conditions will receive treatment each year. 
Many factors contribute to this, including stigma, lack of access, lack of knowledge, and resources. All right, just in time, we finally meet with uh, with the big boss himself. Once again, uh, throwing out terms like capiche, despite being uh, you know a Japanese gang lord, but you know helps uh, build immersion, I guess. But uh, yeah, this is Tayama, and he's like, "Hey, so uh, I want you to kill Yuriko for me. Yuriko is the leader of the Ring of Gaia." Currently, uh, so far at least, our only interaction with the Ring of Gaia has been the people that helped us fight Shi Wang Mu. So, so far we have a pretty good opinion of them, but now we're being sent to assassinate their leader. Which, uh... But if we don't, then, uh... You know, he's making us a bit of an offer we can't refuse, if you know what I'm, if you know what I'm saying. But, uh, he also pulls up a picture of children. He has, uh... He's like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm helping raise the next generation for, uh, for the good of Tokyo. We're like, oh, that doesn't sound evil. All right, cool. Thanks for the, thanks for the talk. Uh, we'll, uh, not quite sure what's going on here, but we don't exactly want to want random unnamed samurai to die. So we should probably go look into that. And, uh. Shoutouts to Burroughs always being in a very optimistic mood. Uh, she always congratulates us for completing quests, even if it's not exactly in a positive light. Like right there. We got told, oh, hey, by the way, I'm blackmailing you to uh, assassinate someone. Congratulations on completing the quest. Like, oh, all right. Thanks, Burroughs. Optimism is much appreciated. Burrows. All right. Something I didn't mention about enemy dodges is enemies kind of have three different types of movement in this game. Uh, there's enemies that will basically just run at you in a straight line, and then they run faster than you, but they stop as soon as they hit a wall, and they don't steer at all. Uh, there is the second type of enemy that chases you, but they have to be chasing you, like, running right at you. Uh, so those enemies you can kind of run around because you turn faster than they do. Uh, and then there's enemy type 3 that uh, I like to call football players. They are like the star linemen of their college football team, and uh, they'll be darned if they let you get past them. And by that, I mean you actually can't really dodge them uh, comfortably. This is a type 3. You saw how they were just kind of running me down regardless of what direction I was going. Uh, the best way to deal with type 3 enemies, or the football players, is to uh, either run backwards, because the nice thing about them is even though they bead down on your location like crazy, they do give up the fastest out of any enemies. Or you can save reload. Alternatively, there's also, once we're a high enough level, a Stoma Sword, or just get into the fight and use Trefiri. Uh, Trefiri and... Uh, a Stoma... Or Trefiri and save reloading are equal in time investment, if you go first. If you go first against an enemy and use... And, uh... Oops, I need to do a thing. And then use uh, Enter Fury out. It's about the same as a save reload, but if the enemy goes first, then you both lose time and risk dying. Uh, so generally, I like to play it safe and go for save reloads, unless I'm feeling really confident, in which case I'd go a little bit more risky. Alright, this is the uh, this is everyone's favorite Terminal Guardian. Who has uh, decided the truly threatening, most threatening form that uh, they can take is a teenage girl. You know how, like, I haven't beat you once yet? I with a really cool demon. Like, maybe I do better with a really cool demon. <gasps> do you even know who this is? Like, have you ever heard of Yamata no Orochi? He's kind of a big deal. Are you thinking, oh my god, there's no way I'm beating that thing? <laughs> oh, yeah, this is Orochi. Like it's our uh, eight-headed snack friend. Uh, weak to electricity, which is convenient because this is the last fight in the game we'll have access to electricity uh, for a while. Uh, fortunately, Orochi doesn't attack its first turn. It always uses Warcry on turn one. Uh, so we can just kind of go ham with uh, with the damage and wait. Er, and then... Nice, Walter got a crit. And should be dead by turn two. If for whatever reason I don't kill in two turns, it uses Megaton Press and is scripted to do so, so I can Tetracarn that, but... Uh, didn't need to. Uh, 
And thus, uh, Yamato no Orochi has been, uh, the really cool demon has been, uh, dispatched. It casts the Rikunda in battle. I wish they, uh, Yo, that Orochi sword in DQ3 is great. If you go physical, do you put in liver and damage? Uh, you would go for a similar sort of statistically good dealio that you go for here. Uh, except for, like, Akasha Arts. Akasha Arts is amazing. In, uh, well, in, in this game. If you're talking about Nocturne. Uh, the unfortunate thing with Fizz builds in, like, Nocturne is that there's not very many good Fizz skills early on. All right, so we have to come back to Kasume Gasaki here, excuse me, to, uh, one, finally take the picture for the for the girl that wanted us to take the picture of the shelter. Uh, so we did that, but we're not turning that in for, like, three more hours. We're going we're gonna to make her wait for the, for the excellent uh, pro photography skills that we have. Uh, but also, uh, Kasume Gasaki is really close to where Ginza is, which is the headquarters of the, uh, the Ring of Gaia. All right, we accept the final photo quest of the game, where uh, this uh, female hunter wants a picture of the Lewis Witten store. Yes, Lewis Witten, very subtle, very, very subtle. Now we get another fight. So the Ring of Gaia is a group of, uh, like I said, of both humans and demons that uh, value strength above all else. They're essentially the chaos faction of this game. And uh, so even though we just basically introduce ourselves by saying we're here to kill their leader, they're like, all right, whatever. Uh, if you can beat us, then you can, you know, you can join our ranks. You know, very, very nice about the, uh, you know, the immediate threat on their, the immediate threat towards their uh, leadership. But hey, in this, uh, in the Ray of Gaia, might makes right, so. We'll now uh, proceed to just kind of blow away the uh, dude here. Here. Oh, I messed up a thing. Uh, when was the last time I saved? How many elements does Dantalian have? Uh... One sec, I need to back up a bit. Might lose some time here. I forgot to do a thing. Uh, we'll count that as one. So there's uh, 16 now. Also might be sent back a little bit. Okay, no, I actually just saved before this. That's good. Turns out I am... Uh, I do smart things on occasion. I forgot to grab these two skills. Right. Need skill expansion one and demon skill three. What should we do, Matt? Uh, because we need more demons. Uh, we need more uh, skill slots. Forgot to do that there. Yes, Mikami was supposed to learn Workaholic. I forgot. I remembered to use the app, uh, the 10 point cards to get the app points to use that, and then I forgot to actually. Uh, forgot to actually get the apps. So you, you learn skills in this game through uh, app points. You get 10 points every time you level up. Uh, and then there's items in the game that also give you additional uh, app points. So we, uh, we bought some skill slots there. Mostly we've been buying fusion boosters. I should explain that we've been doing that. Fusion boosters uh, are cool in that they, with every fusion booster you buy, it raises the level ceiling for demons. Normally in these games, you can only fuse demons that are equal to your level. But with each of them that we buy, we... Uh, with each of them that we buy, we do get more. Uh, we can raise that ceiling by a lot with the final fusion booster letting us fuse demons that are 15 levels higher. There we go. All right, now we've done that correctly, we can actually head into Ginza. So uh, Flynn did the, uh, the whole scan thing in Tokyo Station, and now he needs to scan Ginza again. The developers were really proud of this uh, we're very, very proud of this scanning effect, because they make you do it twice, like, right next to each other. But we do find out that the base of the ring... 
excuse me, of the Ring of Gaia is this uh, castle thing over here called Tsukiji uh, Hongwanji, or in 4A, Tsukiji Konganji, which is a lot easier to pronounce. And so we just gotta head over there and take their initiation trial. If we want to get access to Yuriko, we have to join the Ring of Gaia. And if we want to join the Ring of Gaia, we have to pass their test. And so now we will be doing that. And now we will be getting to the most random part of the entire game. Where uh, we will be doing a bunch of forced encounters that either we can go first or they can go first. Uh, if they go first, there's a high chance that we die just immediately. If we go first, then uh, we're sitting pretty most of the time. So let's... We have to... This is another case where... No, not that one. Where we do have to accept a quest. We have to accept a side quest to continue with the main trial. So there we go. I'm going to use these two agility incenses on Flynn now because they make me feel better about myself. In the, I'm pretty sure it's completely random how the game decides who goes first or not. But uh, something something placebo effect, I think having more agility helps. So uh, we're going to use those agility incenses now. I had to use them anyway. Since Mikami's kind of a fast boy. But uh helps to use them there, so can uh, hope that that helps. an okay time for an announcement? Absolutely. All right, well, you may have noticed talk about incentives and prizes. This means that you get to vote with your wallet to name characters, get our runners to complete difficult or ridiculous tasks, or help pick which story you get to see in certain games. You can also become eligible to win prizes donated by community members, and all donations do go to NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. For more information, Type exclamation point donate in chat. And with that, that is the end of my time here posting for you this evening. It has been an absolute pleasure. Please don't worry at all. I'm leaving you in the extremely capable hands of Alfina. Burrows. Yo, thank you so much for uh, for the uh, the time hosting here. It was great. Oh, it's been so much fun. And good luck on the rest of your run. I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. Thank you very much. I've been getting good luck so far with these, fortunately. All right, come on, hit a uh... nice Kaishin. But if you ever hear me say nice Kaishin, that's a I briefly ran Dragon Quest back in the day and will uh, Dragon Quest 11 back in the day. And hopefully I'm going back to that someday. But I uh, picked up the, the habit from the speedrunning community of uh, critical hit in Japanese. The uh, excellent move is uh, Kaishin no Ikki. Kaishin no Ichigeki. Uh, that's unfortunate. And so uh, occasionally when we get a, a very good critical hit, we'll uh, just exclaim, nice Kaishin. So if, uh, if I ever blurt that out on a crit, that's why. Uh, what's the difference here? Dex versus strength. Uh, dexterity goes for gun skills. Magic goes for strength skills. Uh, however, it's a little weird in this game. In... 4A, it's a very much a clean split. Like, dexterity purely affects... Uh, uh, gun strength purely affects fizz. In this game, there's a weird, like, 4-1 split with both of them that makes it kind of... kind of difficult to use. Uh, you can very much still get by with a, gun, with a gun build or a fizz build. There are a lot of really good gun, spill, gun skills, especially. And the strongest skill in the entire game is a physical skill. Uh... But it is a little bit more challenging because the uh, developers did some weird splitting up with those stats. Again, in 4A, they, they fixed that very, uh, they very much fixed that, which is nice. But here it does make things a little bit more difficult to go for those builds. And again, magic just does so much. And with how the press turn system in this game works, where you're heavily rewarded for uh, hitting enemies' weaknesses, it just makes it so much more useful and versatile than Fizz. Whereas, like, with Fizz, you, like, hit the thing, and if you get a crit, you get more press turns, but that's about it. You kind of just 
have what you have turn-wise. Not as much with magic. You can really make the most out of all of the turns you have with magic. I'm getting a lot of uh, a lot of stones here, which is nice. All right, only like two or three more fights left in the in this gauntlet here. Uh, no, endurance slash vitality is not a uh, not a stat. In uh in other games in the series, there's vitality, which determines your HP, and in like Digital Devil Saga, your physical defense. Uh, this game has no defensive stat. The the equivalent of boosting your uh, your survivability is getting more HP. Burrows. Yeah. All right. This is the last fight. No, yo, we've gone first on like all of these. That's really impressive. So Mabufula is kind of king here. Uh, it does a lot of damage to everything but Yamawaro. Uh, fortunately, we have stun noodles to deal with Yamawaro, or almighty skills. And that is the Ginza Gauntlet done. Surprisingly, uh, no deaths there, which is actually, again, very surprising. This, like I said, is one of the more uh, potentially death-heavy parts of the run. And we get more fusions now. I dwarf and Apis. We dwarf into Zocha Ten. Then. Our, uh, we're once again uh, making our monkey or our cow into a monkey because uh, Thoth is a really good demon to fuse into stuff. And then we will uh, make a Yearlinger, everyone's favorite danger noodle. Yeah, Megido Monkey becomes a uh, Rainbow Snake. The most dangerous of the noodles. Alright, Yearlinger in. Alright, time for Taraka. The, the greatest of the nope ropes. I'm a big fan of Yearlinger. Very cool demon. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the a lot of the enemies in this game are not fans of Yearlinger. Have a, a long history of unfortunate worm related insta incidents incidences. Nice whiff. So, I guess I should explain. This area is supposed to have a gimmick to it. Where the longer, where every turn you take in battle, you lose uh, uh, the candle that we're holding uh, lo loses some health, and enemies can also attack it to make it go away faster. And if the candle goes out before we finish, we lose. Uh, oh, that was rude. Just insta killed my dog. Uh, however, also, they can just try to take a swing at the candle and miss horribly. Alright, that Taraka fight was pretty good. Unfortunate, uh, pupper fatality, but... It's, uh... Not the end of the world. Alright, uh, I don't need to revive Mikami. Burrows. Alright, also, for those of you that have beaten Strange Journey, this, uh, shoutouts to the statue of Memolef in the background. Who, uh, has the, uh, the distinction of being the hardest final boss in, uh, SMT history. And, you know, just got a, got a nice little statue for her there.
Also, they recognize that we're uh, spies for the Ashurakai, and so they drop us down a pit. And here we get to the Trial of Ethics. Uh, we're faced with three uh, moral dilemmas, and our response gives us a bunch of points towards one alignment or another. Uh, it works out that we go, if we pick the Chaos option every single time, it gives us the points we need. Uh, yeah, Memolef has an ability called Ma, that if it targets the main character in Vanilla SJ and you don't have Endure and it, like, hits, you just lose the fight. It's great. So, uh, first question is, uh, the moral dilemma of should tall people be allowed to play basketball? You would allow... Yeah, if it, uh, dropping people into a cave seems kind of unethical. It's, uh... Bit of a strange coincidence we live in that we're getting unethically dropped into an ethics chamber. Uh, question two is basically asking about what the Black Samurai did. Where it's like, hey, if someone shows up to your country with new technology that revolutionizes everything, what do you do? And uh, the, the divide in the party starts to be shown here. Where Walter is very much picking all of the chaos options. Jonathan's like, no, we should go with the law option. And uh, so we're, we're starting to see some conflict within the ranks of our uh, of our samurai party. And uh, we meet Yuriko. Who, uh, as it turns out, is also the Black Samurai. Surprise, surprise. So, uh, yeah, we uh, apparently we've been asked to kill the same person twice, which is convenient. And uh, also, as it turns out, Yuriko is a demon. Lilith, to be uh, specific. So Lilith's like, hey, you know, Tayama's kind of evil. Like, you know, I may be a demon and I may be responsible for, uh, for a slight civil upheaval in your kingdom and lots of people dying and turning into demons and all this stuff. But Tayama's the real evil dude here. And Jonathan's like, nah, I may not like Tayama, but you're very much the evil person in this situation and tries to kill, uh, tries to kill Lilith. Walter is like, wait a second. I kind of like what you're saying here, because Lilith is also like, hey, so there's this power plant thing that Tayama is talking about that's been providing energy to Tokyo for the past 25 years. Uh, this thing basically works by opening up a door to the void, or the expanse in this case. Uh, so it runs on basically siphoning power from the, uh, from the powers of the multiverse. Uh, which is also where demons come from in this universe. So Lilith is like, hey, I want to take over the reactor and flood the world with demons. That way we'll have this, like, paradise where the strongest people rule the world. And Walter's like, yo, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it worked so well in Doom, right? Apparently, uh, apparently the developers of the uh, Yamato Perpetual Reactor and the uh, the workers on Mars apparently read the same science magazines. So it's like, hey, if you don't believe me that Tayama is really the evil person in this situation, you should uh, go find a uh, go to the secret uh, the secret uh, lab that's underneath the hills building, and you'll find out I'm actually not that bad. And we're like, huh, that sounds cryptic enough to be promising. So uh, Walter runs off and we, we go chase after him. Right, Jonathan is a very floofy, uh, very floofy haircut. All right. Yeah, Isabeau is just kind of... Both uh, Flynn and Isabeau, or excuse me, both, uh, what is our name? I forget. Both uh, Pokachu and uh, Isabeau are just kind of along for the ride at this point. And uh, so remember how I mentioned Ginza's this place that only the strong people can be? Well, we run into trustworthy schoolgirl Hikaru here. Uh, somehow. And she uh, she tells Walter how, she, how uh, Walter can get into the facility by going to this place called the Cafe Florida in Shinjuku. 
Uh, she also hands us, it, it. she informs us that it is an exclusive members only club. That uh, she also happens to have a, uh, she also happens to have access to uh, the, uh, the membership token to get into this exclusive members only club. You know, as one does. But, uh, well, we could do that. Instead, we're going to go do side quests instead. As I mentioned, we have to do 18 total uh, specific side quests in order to lock into the neutral ending. Well, once we're locked into neutral in order to actually complete the game. So we're going to do some of those now. We've been taking care of a couple of them along the way. Uh, one or two. Now we're going to we're going to do about three of them. Since there's a couple of quests that we uh, that take place in Shinjuku, which is where we're going. Uh, however, in order to gain access to one of them, we have to clear a, prerequ a prerequisite quest here in Ueno. So we're gonna we're gonna be visiting our friend Nozomi. Last time we saw Nozomi, she was uh, eagerly taking pictures of the. Of some random shrine. Now she's requesting our help to defeat the uh, the demon Asura, who is causing some havoc. We're also going to do a few other side quests as we go that are on the way to where Asura is. So we get Nozomi in our party. Uh, she's it. Most of what she's going to do will uh, actually uh, kind of hurt herself because she likes using gun attacks and a lot of the things we're about to fight in old gun uh so first we're gonna do this demon's domain here fun fact these demon's domain layouts the ones that you do for side quests are all completely random so uh, i'm just kind of gonna follow the strategy of hugging the right wall until i find the door Sometimes these layouts are super, super simple, and I can find it in about five seconds. Other times it takes me longer. This one wasn't too bad. Yeah, absolutely. So for people who are just joining us for really what's been going on the whole plot, essentially we're a, we're a samurai or a, a demon hunter from, the, uh, from a medieval kingdom called Mikado that happens to be on top of the city of Tokyo, which is underneath a dome. And we're currently uh, kind of figuring stuff out. We're on a mission to basically kill this uh, this demon that is from Tokyo that was uh, causing civil unrest, turning people into demons, etc. And we just met with that demon in question, and now she's told us that she's actually not the one that's evil, but the... Uh, Basically, the uh, the mafia that's controlling Tokyo is the are the real uh, evil here. So we're kind of investigating that. We're also doing side quests because uh, this game likes having us do mandatory side quests to get the neutral ending. True neutrality can only be uh, attained by helping others or something. All right, so that was uh, quest number one, uh, fighting Kinky. And now we uh, got to go here and fight a burb. So like I said, Nozomi is kind of a bit of a liability to have with us at this at this point. But it's just convenient to take her with us when we do these. Uh, specifically because this fight we're about to do against this bird, uh, Rook, uh, repels gun. And like I said, most of Nozomi's abilities are gun based. So hopefully we kill Rook in one turn and we don't have to worry about it. Uh, however, in order to have that happen, we kind of have to have Ice Breath cooperate with us. Uh, well, it was cooperating. But thankfully, uh, Zochitin has Agidine, so we were able to take him out. So yeah, if, uh, if Nozomi gets a turn, she can try to shoot Rook and get damage repelled on herself, which has two negative effects. One, she inflicts damage on herself, and if uh, Nozomi dies, then we fail the quest. Uh, the other negative effect is that hitting a repel can cause Rook to smirk. So then whatever Rook does to us is going to hurt a lot more. Uh, which uh, isn't ideal. So thankfully we were able to take care of Rook in one turn there. 
heart full of neutrality. Yeah, Estoma Sword really shines. Oh, I forgot to reapply it. Speaking of Estoma Sword, forgot to reapply it here. Estoma Sword really shines when we're doing any sort of quest cleanup. He says as he uh, forgets to use a so as he forgets to use a Stoma Sword. So Asura's here in this desert. Uh, reminder for those of you who are just joining us, I am donating uh, $2 for every death or uh, death equivalent situation. So basically an unwinnable or unideal situation I can't recover from. Uh, we're currently at $16, I believe, for charity. Also $5 for every fusion accident, but those that's not relevant at the moment. All right, I did save, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, my I count remember. does say 16. Hmm? My count does say 16. Awesome, cool. Thank you for confirming that. All right, so this is Asura. Uh, he can go first, and if he does, bad things can happen. He has both uh, very strong fire attacks and strong area of effect physical. Uh, neither of which are things we exactly want to have happen, so fortunately we went first. And ideally we will one-turn him if we won't be able to one-turn him. Well, Ice Breath is on a roll right now. I have seen so many four hits on Ice Breath, it's ridiculous. Like... This is where, like, all of the four hits on Ice Breath have been for my runs, like, the last month, I swear. Which, uh, of all the times for Ice Breath to, to put in some work now is definitely a good time. So we, uh, we beat Asura there. Nozomi's like, wow, we're such great teammates. We work so well together. Truly, we are uh, amazing at cooperating. You know, she did nothing, but it's fine. But, uh... We completed the quest, and we have unlocked the next quest in Nozomi's quest line. Reminder, there's four quests in Nozomi's quest line. We have to do all of them to uh, for neutral ending requirements. So that was the second one. Now we are going to... We did that so that we could unlock a quest in Shinjuku that we want to complete. So we'll be warping back and grabbing some quests. So if we have any donations or things we'd like to plug, now would be an excellent time for that. All right. And good news is I do have a donation coming in from Wells for $50. It says, great commentary, great run, and great event. I oh, thank more. you very much. And it's just a reminder that uh, all of your donations do go to NAMI, uh, which is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Mental Illness. So, uh, and there's a lot of great prizes, great incentives for you guys to continue to mess with other runs or win a great prize for yourself after the marathon is over. Yes, absolutely. And we have some really awesome incentives coming up. Uh, you want to plug some sure. of them? There is currently for running right now for a $5 minimum, a red Bluetooth wireless pro controller. And for a $15 minimum donation, the Shin Megami Tensei 5 Switch Steelbook Edition. I think that's quite the deal, actually. Yeah, normally you can uh, only get that if you pre-ordered the game. And, well, the game is out now, so it's a little late to do that. But the, the Steelbook <laughs> looks pretty sweet. I uh, picked one up for myself, and I'm very excited for it to hopefully arrive sometime tonight. I, uh, I saw the picture of it, and it's, it's pretty. Welcome. So... Definitely get your donations in if those things do interest you because they're both fantastic prizes. And uh, once again, thank you to all of our prize donor prize donators for the being able to, uh, for us to be able to give away these beautiful prizes. All right. So, like I said, a lot of items in this game, their best purpose is to be sold. So we're doing that right now. We're clearing out our inventory, getting a lot of money. This is our last shop that we have before. Uh, this is the last shop we have for a long time. So we really need to make sure we have enough money to do all of our fusions for, like, the next hour and a half of the run. Uh, and so we sold lots of things. Have about 82k, which looks right. And now we're going to do... Zero Kidnapping and Arson. Which is Nozomi, lo uh, Nozomi Quest number three. We're, uh, we're a little under-leveled for this quest. Uh... 
older routes of this game, we used to do this quest during the main quest cleanup. And it was still kind of a potentially weird quest to do. So this could be a little spooky. For the most part, it's fine. There's just a, there's a mini boss at the end of it that might uh, get a little scary depending on uh, luck with ailments. There's a there's an ailment that happens in this game that fortunately has not shown up so far that's basically guaranteed to show up in the next couple minutes called Sick. Uh, what Sick does is the party member who is inflicted with it gets their attack halved and loses the ability to dodge. Also, like with any ailment in this game, you're unable to smirk when you're inflicted with an ailment. And Sick is one of two persistent ailments in this game that only goes away if you cure it. Which is a problem. The other uh, the other fun thing about Sick is, uh, like in real life, Sick can spread to other party members. Uh, which includes party members who were just cured of Sick. I turned this quest in, right? Yep. Uh, which can cause fun things in fights. Nothing like using a, using a disc poison in battle, only to have that party member immediately get Sick uh, passed to them again, so... Uh, the next uh, couple of quests we do are going to involve a lot of enemies that open with spamming uh, Pandemic Bomb, which is an area of effect sick ability. Hopefully uh, we do not see that in large bursts, but there's one quest, or the last of these fights specifically. If we get sick inflicted upon us, I'll probably just reload uh, because the follow-up fight to that becomes kind of a... Uh, a bit more nightmarish if you're suddenly, you know, only dealing half the damage you're supposed to. So uh, this is uh, Wicker Man. They uh, eat Nozomi and then we uh, blow them away. I, uh, I hear they're not particularly fans of bees. Uh, but I might just be, uh, my, my memory about that might be a little cagey. Y'all are welcome for the groan. All right, saving between each of these. There is a slight chance I can uh, die between these. <laughs> All right, that's two. There's three of these. Like I said, the third one is the one that uh, really matters because immediately after we beat the third one we do have to fight a mini boss so of course because we uh went first on those first two now this is gonna go first oh never mind game is uh feeling mildly charitable right now oh uh you're not supposed to be in my party i'm supposed to swap out zojiten for mikami <laughs> really stung. Nice. Alright, so now we get to fight Kernanos, Cernanos. I call him the Texas Ranger, because uh, he likes chilling on his antelope head. And uh, this fight, again, this is the big fight that's kind of spooky at the level we're at. Uh, I don't remember his level, and I do have to swap Mikami in here. I don't remember his exact level, but we are we're a little uh, little under leveled for this, but it's fine. Uh, magic go burr, and so we're gonna take advantage of that. Oh, nice! He did Megidola. Very cool. That's the scariest thing he can do. Thankfully, MC has just enough health that we can uh, that we can take a Megidola with uh, a taunt. Or that if we taunt him, we can tank a Megidola. Nice thing about taunt, we do like 700 damage to him after that. So uh, This fight looks a lot scarier than it is in that specific situation. Uh, it still could have ended poorly if he had opted to say, like, punch MC after that instead of trying to throw Mudun. Uh, the nice thing about the demonica that we're wearing uh, is we do have resist death. 
So the Mudun has a 60-ish percent land rate, but since we resisted, that gets lowered a bit. I'm not entirely sure on the numbers for that, but we do resist death, which is nice in situations where things like to just kind of try to kill us. Right. We have one more side quest to do before we uh, find the plot again. And that is Phantom of Madness. Where is it? There it is. Alright, Dantalian and Yearling are back in. So the, the one weakness of Dantalian and Yearlinger is that they do have kind of low HP. They're both kind of low leveled for where we are in the game. And they are magic demons. Uh, this game has a tendency to give magic demons really high MP but really low uh, HP and vice versa. Uh, which is kind of a problem for physical demons because physical skills cost MP in this game instead of HP like in, say, Nocturne, for example. Oh, hey, there's the sick element I was referring to. Uh, part of why Fizz is a little bit uh, not fantastic in this game, but it does. Uh, it is really nice for magic demons when uh, a lot of our... Uh, defensive measures involve putting up kind of expensive shields. Tetracarn and Makarakarn do both cost uh, 45 MP to use. So having demons in our in our uh, party that can cost that a several times is definitely a boon to us. Which is part of why Dantalian is so good, even though he uh, ends up being like 30 level, 30, 40 levels below other stuff by the time we fuse him away. He uh, still shines. All right, unfortunately, uh, apparently I used all of my good luck uh, in the previous quest for going first, but that's fine because this one's uh, it's still fine, uh, still mostly fine. All right, using Hypixie's MP to heal here, even though it's a little less time efficient just because we haven't used Hypixie in our party for a while. So she's kind of just a HP batter or a healing battery for us at the moment. Have two more of these uh, zombie groups to fight. And then we'll fight the uh, fight the mini boss of the quest who is Chernabog. We'll have to do a little bit of setup before Chernabog just to make sure we don't get one turn to buy him. But overall, no big deal. Uh, we are actually at the appropriate level to be fighting this guy, so... Makes it easier. Only one target and hey, if we get lucky, he'll just kind of he'll just kind of bonk himself and uh, we'll have to do much. Alright, doing a bit of a camera trick here. Uh, oh wait, it's up here, never mind. Uh, so this game likes to, is kind of considerate with where it spawns enemies a lot of the time, where it tends to prefer to spawn enemies in places that you're actually looking. Burrows. So if, for example, you get caught in one of those snares there that are normally really obnoxious and basically exist to guarantee that an enemy ambushes you, uh, if you happen to be staring directly at a wall when you get caught in a snare, it makes it less likely for enemies to ambush you. Uh, emphasis on less likely. Because it can definitely still happen. And uh, occasionally can get punished for going for the... Uh, for the camera trick without... Saving beforehand. Alright, we went first against Chernabog. I put up a Tetracarn there since he is a reinforcement. Uh, reinforcements in this game can go first. So there was a chance that he would go first and then use a really powerful physical skill and just kind of nuke my party. And this is also one of the final fights we, or one of the last couple of fights we use Ice Breath on. Oh, or he can use Mamudo as well. That also is a thing that he can do. He is also capable of that. Uh, so the, yeah, so the lady that keeps popping up is Burrows. It's basically the, uh, the artificial intelligence that... Uh, lives in the gauntlet that we use to summon demons. Uh, pretty much just an automated assistant. Alright, and that is Phantom of Madness done. Alright. 
Essentially, yeah. So she uh, offers, you know, words of encouragement, advice, etc. Congratulates us on completing quests. Let's us know that we have all we need now and that we just need to deliver it and we'll be done, etc. Alright, so now that we've been uh, side questing for a bit, it's time to actually continue with the plot of the game. So uh, Walter ran ahead to the bar, but he didn't have the matchbox that he needs to get in, so we're going to bail this dude out. And uh, present the matchbox, and we're going to meet two very important characters. Oh, also shout outs to the fact that even though uh, Hikaru gave us a matchbox, he's in here. Going to take a drink of water real quick. So this is Fujiwara and Skins. They are, uh, or will become the neutral representatives. Uh, later on, once we get locked into our alignment, they'll become more important. Uh, but for now, basically, they're just like, hey, uh, do you think the people of Tokyo and Mikado could, like, actually live in harmony? Because uh, we kind of want to immigrate there, because Tokyo kind of stinks right now, so we kind of want to move to Mikado. And we're like, oh, well, that's interesting. And uh, Hikaru finds this amusing for one reason or another. But uh, they they inform us as to how we can get into the uh, the secret facility. They tell us that if we go to the Midtown building, there will be a demon there guarding it. And if we can get past that demon, we can uh, get access to the facility. Uh, and also, that's the last time we'll see Hikaru for the rest of the game, by the way. <laughs> Uh, she will not show up in any more cutscenes. That is the last we will see her. Uh, if you go Chaos ending, then you will see Hikaru more. However, uh, yeah, if you, uh, if you go Neutral Law or, uh, Nihilism ending, uh, Hikaru just drops out of the plot after this point. There is a reason for her dropping out of the plot, but yeah, if you only get neutral or you haven't seen that, then you just never... You just never see her again. You're just like, huh, I wonder what happened to Hikaru. She was kind of cool. What is the best ending? Uh, I would say neutral is because it has the most uh, the most content to it. Since with neutral ending, you get to experience basically everything you would experience in Law and Chaos. Uh, there is also the fact that there's a certain boss fight you have to do in Law and Chaos that you don't do in neutral. That uh, hurts my soul to fight. Those of you that have played the game and have heard my comments about a specific character will, uh, will know... Uh, We'll know exactly why I don't like going for uh, either of those two endings. Uh, and the nihilism ending is cool if you're on a if you're having a really really bad speed run, <laughs> and you don't want to continue the last two hours of the run, but you want to say you finished a run. So uh, there is that. I may not be the world record holder for uh, for neutral ending, but I am the world record holder for nihilism ending, so there is that. There have uh, been many runs that have decided that, uh, that uh, I didn't want to finish the run, so there is that. Uh, no. Well... Eh, it's hard to say. Hold up, what am I doing? I uh, just want to save or load this because I don't want to burn someone's MP. Uh, it depends on which teacher ending you mean. Because the closest thing to, like, neutral... My favorite ending is neutral. Uh, Like, the freedom ending in Nocturne is the most similar to neutral ending in this game, but demon ending in Nocturne is kind of like a nihilism ending in this game. Alright, so this is Tenkai. Uh, this is... Oh, by the way, we're, we're roughly half... We're a little over halfway through the run, in case anyone was curious. Uh, somewhere between Taraka and Tenkai is kind of the halfway point, so... 
Yeah, this is uh, this is Tenkai. This is kind of the alignment check. Where uh, Tenkai kind of sees if you know what ending you're currently on your way towards. Uh, he also resists everything. So this is why we have Megido on uh, the main character. Alright, so here he's going to ask us basically uh, which of the three major alignments we are going for. Uh, because we uh, saved Quebico before, we're actually leaning into Chaos right now. Okay, cool. We get to go for the two-turn. Uh, and so if we answer Chaos, if we answer the, our alignment correctly, we do get a buff. So we got a Taru Kaja there, which is really nice. Hunt. Pass, and then provided Flynn doesn't miss, we win here. Yep, there we go. And that's Tenkai down. That fight can be kind of spooky. Uh, the two turn is uh, consistent as long as he doesn't uh, buff his defense. If he buffs his defense, you have to hunker down for another turn. And that's when things can get kind of spooky. Uh, a lot of the times, if you go for the three turn, uh, MC will finish the fight being the only person alive. It is uh, always a uh, very lovely, very lovely experience. Not frightening whatsoever. All right, so here Hypixie finally learns her last skill, so we get to learn uh, Trafuri on the main character. We don't need Megido anymore, so we're going to get Trafuri just in case we get uh, attacked by uh, an enemy. All right, also... Oh, wait, never mind. We're good. <laughs> was thinking uh, thinking a thing, but... Uh, never mind, the incentive got met. So uh, we are approaching the, uh, the Asamagatsui incentive, so y'all donated to uh, watch a specific cutscene that's coming up here real soon. In fact, at the very end of this uh, dungeon, we will be finally watching that Yasumagatsui cutscene that y'all so very graciously donated for. Oh yeah, we got Walter back. Walter joined us here because we're going with him to investigate uh, the facility. So we have Walter with us again. Alright, so this is Midtown. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward dungeon with amazing music. Uh, so now is an amazing time for... Uh, while I'm running through here for some donations, some plugs, uh, etc. Fantastic. We do have a $25 donation from Jamblar that says, Thank you for the late night entertainment and helping out a great cause. Definitely been entertaining. I've never seen Shimigami Tensei before, so I'm enjoying the run a lot myself. Yeah, it's really fun. I absolutely adore this entire series, especially this game. I mentioned it at the beginning of the run, but uh, this game is the reason I'm as big of an RPG fan as I am. So very glad to be showing it off for uh, really glad to be showing it off for for the audience for a great cause. And uh, talking about all of our audience, I do want to send out a good thanks to the people involved in our foreign language restreams, our German restream at twitch.tv slash germensch and our Japanese stream at twitch.tv slash Japanese underscore restream. If those restreams can help you enjoy the marathon, go check them out and send them some love. And thank you to those people who are helping run that and translating all of this. You guys are fantastic. The very questionable body part demon. Uh, there are several of them, yes. I know which one you are referring to. Uh, for the sake of keeping things PG, I will answer yes. I will say yes, this is a bad game. There, But there are a couple, yes. This, uh, this game is rated M for Mature, as are most of the games of the series. All right, we are approaching a, uh, the end of this part of the dungeon. This dungeon's kind of in two parts. We have Midtown and then we have Reverse Hills. And uh, at the end of this dungeon, we get to meet a very trustworthy, uh, an angel with some very trustworthy shoulders. This is uh, Mastama. I like to call him Matsama. He is uh, very trustworthy. He has great shoulders. And those shoulders uh, are the reason why you should trust him. Because like... How can someone with shoulders like that lie to you, right? Uh, in this game, he is actually very trustworthy. He uh, is watching over this facility because uh, he's kind of spying on the uh, the Ashurakai. 
and he's blocking the he's blocking the gate forward. So he opens it up for us because we're samurai. He also seems to know who we are for uh, strange reasons that uh, don't get discussed until the DLC. But uh, he seems to know us, and he is a very very trustworthy individual. In uh, other games, he's a little bit more uh, more deceitful, hence the the uh, the shoulders joke. And yeah, the, the fake out battle's pretty great. The uh, oh, I'm going to destroy you. Eh, I'm joking. How are we doing? Strange reasons or strange journey. Strange reasons with a strange journey. In a strange journey. Blah. All right. Um... So here we're approaching. Is the DLC part of the run? No. Nope. Uh, all DLC for this game is uh, not allowed for the run. Also, the DLC uh, would require a lot of grinding and a lot of setup that we don't have uh, the means of attaining in a speedrun. So this is one of the scarier, uh, the scarier dungeons to navigate. There are two specific dungeons in this game where when the developers were making it either intentionally or unintentionally, I'm going to say intentionally because it's Atlas we're talking about, uh, they decided that the floor of this dungeon and the color of the demons that spawn should be the exact same. So sometimes uh, we get some... Uh, the uh, We get the chameleon spawns here. Like that, like... If I didn't see it ahead of time, that would have been kind of hard to spot. The birds are pretty easy to see, though, because they're birds. Uh, this is Reverse Hills. We uh, we visit these dudes in masked, uh, these masked dudes, and they give us the key card to access the elevator to the next floor. We also find some uh, find out some kind of disturbing lore about uh, what the Ashurakai is up to. Uh, won't get into it too much because it's uh, very very dark. But uh, let's just say that Lilith was kind of onto something when she mentioned the Ashurakai were kind of really bad. Uh, specifically, we find out the uh, the origin of the red pills and what uh, how those are produced We're using some uh, very uh, non FDA approved methods of uh, making them. Also, they have children here. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is where the video was also taken. But uh, we get our key card and we, uh, we move along. Have to go back to the same elevator. Use key card numero three. Actually, I was gonna say numero dos, and then I realized it's the third one. And this is the rude floor. Also, if these encounters go first, they absolutely will kill us. We are uh, supposed to be in like the upper forties at this point in the game, mid upper forties. Uh, we're in the low 30s. These fights are kind of dangerous even at the level that we uh, are supposed to be here, but this is the point in the game where the... or how underleveled we are really starts to show, especially in just, like, touch of death from everything. Burrows. So here we have a forced encounter. Uh, this masked man recognizes that we're outsiders. The other ones are just like, oh, you must be the, the next person on the shift. Must be new here or whatever. This dude actually recognizes that we're outsiders. So he uh, he sicks some, some demons on us. Fortunately, not too difficult to fight. Uh, somehow amongst the demons is a, is a samurai. Not sure how that dude got here, but uh, whatever. It's a good experience from that, though. Nice grand tack. But we get the, uh... He went to the wrong meeting, yeah. Yes, there are some fusion accident only demons in this game, which makes 100%ing this game a pain, by the way. Uh, one person has done a 100% run of this game. And it was not done RTA, thankfully, but it took them like 40-something hours. 
uh, which is getting all endings and completing the Demon Compendium and doing all quests. Uh, seven hours of that was spent spawning and fighting the fiends, which if you know anything about how fiends work in this game, sounds about right. Uh, another seven of that was spent clearing out the Compendium. So, uh... Yeah, lots of, uh, and most of that is spent, uh, most of that is spent, uh, scumming for accident-only demons. By using every means possible, it still takes a very long time. Uh, what is my favorite demon appearance and combat-wise? Uh, I got a Mothman will, uh, always have my heart, but, uh, also here's the cutscene y'all donated for, so I will be quiet so y'all can enjoy the cutscene. Also, be right back. Hmm? That sweet scent. Is it only my imagination, or is it growing more pungent? Come to mention it. Yes, oh my God. <laughs> A demon. That sweet smell is the product of this demon. Quickly, prepare yourselves for battle. <sighs> Walter? Yeah. I'm Walter. I'm the son of a fisherman. But I'm scared of fish. I must go tell everyone. <laughs> what? Oh, how cowardly of you, dashing off without me. Then I'll admit something as well. In all candor, I am a cat. Meow. This floor is so deliciously warm. What is happening? Is this the work of that demon? Ugh, it's always like this. Demons here, demons there, demons, demons, demons. It's all so... Demoning. <laughs> Shout outs to demoning. And we pass out. Yes, oh my God. <laughs> so there you all go. That is uh There is the Yasumagatsubi cutscene. Thank you all so much for all of the donations to Nami to uh make this happen. And uh, now we have some more cutscenes, so if we got any got any donations or anything, great time for those. And I'll catch up on the plot afterwards. Fantastic. Uh, so we do have a, another $25 donation from Kat. It says, I love SMT and this late night run is a blast. Thanks to everyone involved for putting on a great show for a great cause. And just a reminder, your donations can go towards wonderful incentives, challenges, there are currently open ones for a Persona 5 Strikers Fight the Reaper Super Boss, Persona 5 Strikers Fuse and Use Mothman. So those of you who are fans of this that are used to all of those, like there's another chance to see some of these great enemies that I know appear multiple times throughout these series. Y'all really want to see the uh, the Mothman as well. And I have that it it's still open on a bid war to save or kill the hunters for this run. Yes. So nah. you guys can still get your donations in towards that as well. Yes, and that will be uh, be happening in, in about uh, an hour and a half. So if y'all wanna if y'all wanna snipe that for uh, for kill the hunters or, or one of them uh, or that has already been winning, you know, want to snipe it one way or the other, you got you got time to get those donations in. Currently, save the hunters is in the lead at, with seventy five dollars, with and kill the hunters is sitting at twenty. So it's not that hard to snipe it and get it. What is the best SMT to jump into? So SMT5, if you get it, would be a really good one. All of the games are self-contained uh, for the most part. Like stuff like 4 and 4 Apocalypse are, uh, are connected. But for the most part, all of the SMT games are very self-contained. So you can really start anywhere. 
SMT4 and Digital Devil Saga 1 are my personal two favorite games in the series. Uh, but Nocturne is a classic. You can't go wrong with Nocturne. SMT5 is brand spanking new, so there is that as well. And I have heard uh, so far that it's pretty good. So basically there, uh, I mean, DDS1 and 2 are both great. DDS1 is my favorite, but DDS2 is also phenomenal. I know a lot of people that like 2 more than 1. Other people, me being one of them, likes 1 a little more, but they're both amazing games. So uh, there basically, we wake up in the uh, office of Taima, and he kind of scolds us for sneaking around in his uh, private uh, in his private affairs. And we, we, we confront him about the uh, the numerous human rights violations that were going on in there. And he's like, oh, well, you know, I'm doing it for the people. Uh, something something claiming the ends justify the means. Like, if I wasn't doing this, the demons would go berserk and kill everyone. And you don't know what it's like to, to have been in Tokyo when the dome came up. Etc. And so we're just like, all right, whatever. And he's like, you need to kill Yuriko, though. Like, you've been messing around too long. Like, she has to die. We also mentioned that Yuriko is actually a demon. Uh, and then afterwards, we get summoned by Gabby, who says, uh, hey, uh, you should come back to Mikado. I have something important to uh, show you. And so we're uh, greeted by uh, these uh, numerous eldritch abominations, as I will lovingly refer to them as. Uh, these are the four seraphim. Michael, Uriel, Raphael, and turns out Sister Gabby was actually Gabriel this entire time. And uh, the people that we saved in the tower were the other three archangels that had been captured previously. If you play the Clipped Wings DLC, you find out that actually, due to time travel shenanigans, uh, we were the ones that sealed them away. Uh, that Matt Sama, our good friend, warped us back in time so that we could uh, seal away the Archangels so they didn't, you know, destroy the world. Which, uh, now they're fully intent on doing. They're now back. They have, uh, they have, quote, cleansed the filth in Mikado, and by that I mean basically killed everyone that had read a book, because, you know, that's how, uh, that's how the law alignment goes. And, uh, now they, we, we mentioned that, or they're saying they're the new rulers of Mikado. We mentioned Fujiwara and Skins wanting to move in, and they're like, no, anyone that has been to Tokyo has to be cleansed. Uh, and so you need to go kill Yuriko right now, or the Black Samurai right now, so that we can continue building the Thousand Year Kingdom. And uh, at this point, Walter's having had none of it, having none of it. After seeing what uh, Tayama was doing in the uh, in Reverse Hills, after hearing Lilith talk about her ideal world, after seeing how unilaterally and mercilessly the uh, the Seraphim are going about just kind of killing everyone. Uh, Walter has decided he's done. He's going to side with Lilith. He's going to go kill Tayama and take the reactor. Uh, Jonathan is very determined to stop this, to fulfill his duty to kill Lilith. Isabeau isn't sure what to do, so she just opts to do neither. And for the sake of the speedrun, uh, we have to side with Jonathan. Uh, reason being, if you remember back when we did the Trial of Ethics, we went with the Chaos option on every single choice. Uh, here is one of two, actually three decisions in the game that gives you 10 points towards an alignment. We got a bunch of points into Chaos before, now we have to get a bunch of Law points to balance that out. Uh, so we're siding with Jonathan. Also, siding with Jonathan is significantly faster than siding with Walter. If you side with Walter, you have to make this trip to Ginza to visit Yuri, or to visit Lilith. And then you have to go to Camp Ichigaya and fight a bunch of bosses. You have this really big boss rush that concludes with a fight against a guy whose name is Yamato Takeru, who is one of the harder bosses in the game. He has an ability called Homeland Song that does a lot of almighty damage. He just does a lot of just... He's overall just not a fight that you want to deal with. And in general, most of the fights in Walter's section take longer, are harder, and there's more of them. You also have to do all of Camp Ichigaya instead of just uh, 
running through it, which we'll do here. So here with Jonathan's route, we fight two mini bosses, fight Lilith, and then we get to stroll through Ichigaya very quickly. Much faster to side with Jonathan, and it works out for our alignment better to do so. So uh, that's what we're doing. And like I said, it's one of three decisions that gives you 10 points towards your alignment. Uh, this one, the final decision, and then there's a random woman in Ikabukuro that asks you if you're a demon or not. And if you tell her you're a demon, you get 10 chaos points. If you tell her you're not, you get 10 law points. Uh, this is optional, and if we accidentally enter that room, it kind of kills the run. So, uh, fortunately, it's very easy to avoid uh, said woman by just not going into any doors in Ikebukuro. Alright, so this is the first of the two uh, two fights here. It's uh, it's our boy Gary, also known as Gira Makala. Uh, we lovingly refer to him as Gary in the community because Gira Makala is kind of hard to say. <laughs> and so he's Gary. We uh, we like to assign very informal names to our uh, to our demons in this game. Yeah, this is the uh, the reflective elephant, but uh, we took him down. Your McCaller repels Fizz, drains gun. Doesn't really stand up to magic very well, though. And that's Gary down. And now we have more fusions. This is like the last major, well, one of the last major fusion chains in the game. This used to be the longest chain in the game, but now it's actually fairly shorter. And again, reminder, I will be donating $5 every fusion accident. Currently haven't had to make good on that promise, but, uh... Welcome to the Cathedral of anything can happen. Fusion accidents, for the record, are a... Like charge. HK, Mazanma, and Force Pleroma. Uh, fusion accidents are a 1 in 64. And I was talking about it, so it happened. So there is $5 for charity. We're now at $21, I believe. Also, this is why I save before I do fusion act, uh, before I do fusions. Yeah, fusion accidents are a 1 in 64. That any fusion will be an accident. That odd is, those odds are increased. If you're fusing with a demon who is sick or dead. To, uh, 1 in 32. Something like that. Fortunately, that was the first de uh, first fusion of the chain, so. Fuse Kukunochi. This is Flower Dude. I, uh, I always stream with the plants tag, specifically because of uh, Kukunochi here. He's a very important plant. Alright, and then we need Compendium. Yukichoro. Hunter. What will you do? Uh, Satanta into Eros. Uh, just H oops, HK and charge. Then. Oh, if we have any, uh, again, donations or anything, uh, I'll have to be explaining the next fight, so now is an awesome time for uh, any donations, or if we want to mention anything. Refresh. We don't currently have any donations in, so if you do want to hear your donation read on air, make sure you do get those in, and we seem to have a lot of time and not a lot of donations, so it's not going to take long for yours to get read out. And remember that all, all of your the donations are here to support NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, Na NAMI is the largest grassroots mental health organization whose work is focused around three pillars, education, support, awareness, and advocacy. And one of the big ones for me is that NAMI does engage in that federal, federal advocacy to support the state organizations and their state-level advocacy efforts. Not gonna lie, I was getting a little worried we'd go the entire run without a fusion accident, so, uh, fortunately, uh, 
beak of the accident and it shall appear, I guess. Sounds about how all of my runs go. <laughs> I was honest, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, I am playing with fire right now by bringing this up while I'm doing a fusion chain. But, uh, you know, what's, uh, what's a good speed run without, a, without spicing things up a little bit? And hey, more money for charity. Exactly. All right, so this is Dakini. Dakini is the uh, unfortunate uh, distinction of being weak to ice. So, uh, fairly quick fight as a result of this. Case in point. <laughs> All right, uh, Dexterity, Incense, Guishan, Agility, Incense, MC, Chakra Drop, Kingu. All right, so Lilith, you'll notice I uh, seemed to have pivoted very greatly in my skills on my uh, on all of my demons all of a sudden. Uh, and that's because Lilith uh, kind of resists everything uh, magic-related and drains electricity. So, uh... She is weak to gun though. So uh suddenly we're uh, we're gun build. So we, we have our gunner turtle, our gunning snake, and then MC and Kukunochi can use Karns. Also MC has a base gun that can uh, go pew pew. Alright, so stun needles is another statistically good skill, can hit between uh, one and three times. Also has a very rare chance of stunning. Uh, Lilith. She is a boss, so she resists ailments, but, uh, turns out stun needles, if, she, if it stuns her, does, uh, it's actually really nice. Nice. Ooh, this is potentially gonna be really spicy. <laughs> so, uh, Fun fact, Lilith only has about, uh, uh, 6,500 health. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we just, uh, did most of that in one attack. <laughs> so that was Lilith. <laughs> Ah, oh, that was glorious. That fight is generally really easy. I think, uh... In the entire year I've been running this game, I've died to Lilith twice total. One of which was a week ago. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh... That was Lilith. That was the big bad evil, uh, person we've been hunting this entire game. The cause of all of our troubles, and we just, uh, yeah, that was that, that. If only we had a riot gun. If only riot gun in this game was like riot gun in Strange Journey. We would just one shot her. And yeah, and we get two quests completed there, which is very lovely. That's the other nice thing about siding with Jonathan, you get a lot of quest experience. Very American. So uh, now we're like, so basically during that fight, <laughs> Lilith was like, so Walter's already been here and he's going to kill Tayama at the uh, Yamato Perpetual Reactor, which is located at this place called Camp Ichigaya. So uh, I may die, but my legacy will live on. And we're like, oh, well, that sounds not good. Turns out opening a portal to the void and releasing demons uh, might be a little dangerous. We should probably, you know, try to stop that. So now we get to go to Ichigaya. Fortunately, uh, uh, the schedule is adjusted to your local time. Uh, fortunately, Walter's already taken care of all of everyone that's guarding Camp Ichigaya for us. Somehow. Uh, never really explains how Walter somehow manages to defeat Yamato Takeru and Omoe Kane and everyone else, but, you know, he somehow managed it. Walter's uh, apparently been holding out on us this whole time. So we can uh, we can just kind of stroll right to the reactor, which is very nice. 
Also, speaking of Camp Ichigaya, I hope you all really, really like Camp Ichigaya. The reason I say this is because the developers of this game really liked Camp Ichigaya. They like this dungeon so much that over the course of this game, of the run, we have to go to Camp Ichigaya, or navigate Ichigaya, uh, four times. And then if you play the sequel to this game, 4A, you have to go through the whole dungeon an additional time. The developers absolutely love Camp Ichigaya. So uh, I hope you all I hope you all appreciate what is uh, apparently, according to the developers, uh, based on their love of this dungeon, uh, the peak of any SMT dungeon design ever. Hope you all uh, appreciate this. That is true, we could have to go through the play seven times, that is very true. But hey, I mean, if you add up all, if, if you're going for 100% and you add up, you know, all four endings, you gotta go through this place, uh, 16 times? Well, no, sorry, it's less because of, uh, endings and stuff. Uh, you have to go through this place about 12 times. Uh, somewhere between, well, 13 and 14 times, I guess. Math is hard. Especially when I have never gotten law ending. Oh yeah, no, this dungeon is great music, for sure. The, the Ichigaya theme is definitely a, uh, a cat jam or a rat jam, depending on your uh, on your jamming preferences. See, what's funny is I actually really like... Uh, what's funny enough is I actually really like Eridonis. Maybe I've played... Uh, that uh, speed ran too much SJR, and so it just got to me. But uh, I actually really like Aradonna. It has some of the best songs and best music in the game as well. All right, so here, uh, this dude, his name is Unfriendly Man. <laughs> I forgot to point out some of some of these uh, NPCs have great names. Also, there's a snare there, but we can just kind of run around it. They uh, did not give that snare a very big hitbox. Oh, yeah, no, there's certainly, like, dungeons in SMT that are, uh, more difficult and, uh, more, uh, typical SMT shenanigans, but, uh, as far as apparently how proud the devs are of this dungeon, they really liked, uh, Ichigaya. So we pick up that chest so we can sell it late, uh, sell the contents later. And, uh, here we find that, uh, Walter has, uh, somehow defeated Yamato Takeru and killed Tayama. Somehow. You know, despite him running around with Agilao and Crit Wave. Apparently it's all you need. Agilao, Crit Wave, and a dream. Woman with red bag. There's also a uh, crying man earlier, I believe. Or man in tears. There's uh, there's some pretty good ones. But, uh... Yeah, we uh, we find out. We were uh, we were too late to save Tayama. Not like we kind of wanted to save him anyway. Yeah, no matter what you choose here, the outcome is the same. If you side with Walter, then Jonathan will just solo Lilith. And then we'll catch up to you as soon as you beat Yamato Takeru. Whereas here, we catch up with Walter right after he finishes somehow defeating all of the National Defense Divinities. Uh, I think there is a mean guy in this game, actually. It's okay, in SJ, uh, half of the char half of the guy or half the characters are named Strike Team. Apparently the uh, the team family had a lot of a uh, lot of children and named them all Strike. So here, John, uh, Walter's kind of fully descended into chaos, and he's like, "Yo, flooding the world with demons will be great. It'll completely destroy the the." His whole thing is because he grew up with the caste system of Mikado. Uh, he kind of grew a hatred for the. For the, for the upper echelons believing that they weren't worthy of their status and that you should earn your status through being stronger. So he's like, yeah, so I'll release demons on the world. That way the people that live are worthy of uh, ruling it or whatever. Because, you know, that's a, that's a reasonable, logical conclusion to come to in this situation. Uh, but we agree with him because, you know, it's the first option. So, uh, so yeah, I guess we're like, yeah, cool. And then uh, he presses the button, and uh, the three of us get pulled into the void. Okay, some of the... Uh, I would still argue that Jonathan has the uh, 
has the bigger uh has a significantly larger uh moral leap than Walter does. <laughs> Sacrifice is made to be yeah, right. To achieve true neutrality, you just kind of agree with whatever anyone says. All right, so here we meet these four these uh, four people called the White, and yes, that is their name. Uh, they have taken the form of uh, four characters that are supposed to mean a lot to Flynn: uh, Issachar, Isabeau, uh, Hugo, and Kay. Issachar and Isabeau, I definitely get, but uh, Hugo and Kay is a little bit more like, oh, okay. But they're like, hey. So, you, you know, this world's pretty messed up, right? Well, we're going to show you a world that's really messed up. Basically, the world that we live in in this game is a world where uh, Flynn's previous incarnation... Uh, this game deals with themes of, like, reincarnation. Uh, Flynn's previous incarnation chose neutrality, uh, given a previous situation. Basically, the entire reason Tokyo is covered with a dome is because 25 years prior... Uh, there was a giant, uh, there was basically a huge full-scale nuclear war that happened. And Tokyo was basically the only place in the entire world that was saved because the guardian deity of Tokyo transformed into a giant dome and protected Tokyo from the, uh, from the nuclear apocalypse. And this was done by Flynn's previous reincarnation, or previous incarnation, rather. One sec, I need to actually do a thing really quick. Yes, Masakado will 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 deep will delve into Masakado more later, uh, as that's kind of the whole point of the neutral ending involves releasing him. But that that's kind of the rundown as to what's been uh, going on as to why we're here. So because uh, previous Flynn, who is unnamed, or previous uh, uh, Pokachu here. Uh, Chose neutrality, we're in the world that we're in. That's kind of not a great place. Oh, uh, one sec. Satanta, I have to focus on this fusion chain. So I will finish that thought in a moment. If we have donations or we want to talk about some of the incentives coming up, uh, now is an amazing time to do so. I always have things to talk about. All right. I do have a $30 donation from Rilvenar. And I'm sorry if I said that wrong. Um, it says, love me some charity speedruns. Just had to donate for Monster Sanctuary speedrun. Let's go, Shawnee. And mentioning that Monster Sanctuary speedrun, there are two bid wars still open for that where you can either help choose the name of the character or choose the character's costume. And especially for the character costume, there currently looks like they're all tied up at just a $5. So it doesn't take much to snipe in if you want to see the Monster Keeper outfit the Old World Tycoon, Winter Explorer, or the Keeper Master. Yep. Awesome. Almost done with this fusion chain. So there we fuse Nadja. Nadja's going to be super important because uh, she is our source of concentrate. Concentrate is an amazing spell in this game. It makes it so your next magic attack does 2.5 times damage. Uh, you thought we were doing big damage before. We're going to be doing really big damage, especially since uh, Guixian, our uh, gunner turtle, also learns uh, Bufudine. So we get to finally get rid of Ice Breath. Although Ice Breath, I will admit, and you can all have video evidence of this, of me admitting it. Ice Breath actually did good work this run. I will I will acknowledge that it did a good job. Reluctantly, but I will uh I will admit it. But uh now we will be getting Bufudine, and we'll have a nice concentrate to go with it. Fun fact, uh this area here in Blasted Tokyo, any of these rooms in Blasted Tokyo is uh, the other area in the game that we know of that you can clip out of bounds. But there is absolutely zero application of this. You just kind of fall through the floor and then eventually fall out the top of the uh, map. So back on what I was saying earlier, the, uh, the, the mysterious entities, the white that we met with, were like, yeah, your world is a world where your previous incarnation chose neutrality. And you see everything's pretty terrible there. Well... 
let's show you what ha what would have happened if your previous incarnation chose law. And so this is Blasted Tokyo. This is a world where that uh, where the unnamed uh, where the unnamed previous incarnation sided with uh, Kiyoharu, who we're about to be introduced to here, and didn't prevent the uh, the bla the destruction of Tokyo. Uh, this dude right here, uh, Kiyoharu, truly the, the most sound-brained person, as you can tell from his appearance. Uh, this is that world, where now mankind is basically on the verge of extinction due to the uh, nuclear annihilation and subsequent fallout. And a uh, from the heavens descended a giant cocoon that then started emitting... Uh, oops, I'm not going the right way. Oh, no, I am going there. Never mind. That started emitting noxious fumes that are then killing anyone that survived the the fallout. So now uh, we're introduced to this dude, Akira. Has a very interesting scar on his face. Definitely doesn't look like any other character in any other game. And uh, he asks, he's kind of the leader of the remainder of humanity. And he asks us, he's like, hey, if, you know, we're going to be extinct here if uh, Pluto doesn't go, but none of us are strong enough. However, I had a dream where these entities called the White appeared to me and told me that three messiahs would come from the Expanse and save and save us from Pluto. So he tells us that he will give us the 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 remote to Camp Ichigaya so that we can leave and go back to where we came from if we will kill Pluto for him. So uh, we agree to do this, since we don't really have a choice. It's either either do that or eventually die from the from the uh, noxious fumes from Pluto. So we agree. Also, we get a quest here to go kill Ixtab. Uh, unfortunately, killing Ixtab gives us a ton of law points. So I was considering potentially figuring out how to do that for an incentive, but. Uh, Doing so would mess with the with me, blah, 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 would mess with my alignment in a way that I kind of didn't wanna deal with figuring out. So, uh, but yes, there is a quest to kill Ixtab. It's a really scary fight. She likes to spam death skills, and uh, that's about it. So here we journey on over on our way to Pluto's castle, and we'll save. And uh, if y'all thought we uh, had plenty of dancing crabs before, you ain't seen nothing yet. This entire dungeon is filled with tap dancing crabs. Look at them go. Look at that rhythm. These are Pluto soldiers. Hi, Lavos, yeah. Look at them dance. Why do not just skills feel weird? No, they should be right. For some reason, my brain's not trusting something. Oh, okay. No, that's right. All right, we shun levels. Place charge with Bufudine. Happy turtle noises. And uh, Pluto's Castle has a pretty great theme. Alternate Tokyos in general have an awesome battle theme. Unfortunately, we won't get to hear it since we're not taking random encounters. Uh, I really haven't been talking much about how just amazing this game's OST is, but definitely would recommend uh, definitely would recommend looking it up, uh, giving it a listen, listening to it if you uh, decide to play the game, because this entire game's OST is just full of wonderful, wonderful tracks. Fun fact, in older routes of this game, this would actually be the only place in the game post Naraku that we would take random encounters. Uh, because we're so low leveled, basically every fight we take would give us a level up. So we would use uh, we'd use the random encounters here to get from like the level we are currently to around level 52 or 53. 
over the over the course of the dungeon. Then we then fuse Alice and kind of steamroll the rest of the game. Uh, taking random encounters, though, is not the fastest thing in the world, and we don't really need to because we can kind of steamroll the game without it. As uh, as nice as Alice is, it's uh, kind of out of the way since we cut out a bunch of recruits from the route as well. From the route as well. Those dungeons, fairly simple-ish. Basically, it's kind of just a maze with elevators and pitfalls. Uh, navigating this place initially can be a bit of an experience. It's not too bad since you do have an auto map. And generally, going the wrong way tends to send tends to send you back to where you were before pretty uh, pretty quickly. That is definitely uh, one of those places that uh, does take some navigational uh, learning to get down. All right, so these are the the second wave of the uh, of the dancing crabs. Oh, that's bad. Most unlucky for you. Um, I can fix this. Maybe. Okay, I fixed it. <laughs> that was a uh, rather fortunate, or a rather fortunate conclusion to a very unfortunate uh, turn of events. Yeah, Walter uh, has a habit of uh, calling out bad luck or uh, preceding bad luck with statements such as most unlucky for you, and then proceeds to miss and get us killed. Or, you know, yelling, I hope you're prepared before using Augie on Minotaur, thus smirking him. Something you can't really be prepared for. But at least he warned us about it. You know, good guy Walter. At least he warns us before he gets us killed. Oh, wait, no, it's Jonathan says, I hope you're prepared. <laughs> Jonathan has also gotten me killed before, though, so the statement is still accurate. Like I said, generally your partner is mostly irrelevant unless they do something that directly negatively impacts you. Or it's something like uh, Isabeau killing a boss. There's a snare up here. Burrows. Such as a samurai skill is pretty great. My other, uh, my other favorite is uh, if you go Chaos Ending, you get Lucifer in your party as your partner for the rest of the game. And he, uh, a lot of the times, will be like, witness the power of Chaos before he, like, basic attacks something and completely whiffs. And like, huh, I'm suddenly not feeling particularly confident about the power of Chaos. So, uh, thanks for that one. Alright. Uh, either snare up here or I'm just doing this to save reload. I honestly do not remember where these... Where the snares are. Like, off the top of my head. I do not remember where they are. But I guess my, like, muscle memory is just like, wait, hold up. Because I seem to have a... Have that pretty well down. Oh yeah, the uh, there's a specific uh, demon personality in 4A that uh, whenever they cast healing skills will yell die. <laughs> They'll cast a healing skill. Die! They'll cast a buff. Die! And that's what you call killing them with kindness. Burrows. Yeah, the, uh, that's definitely something nice they added in 4A, is letting you choose your partner and then also making them more impactful on the uh, fights you're participating in. <laughs> I mean, you're not, you're definitely not wrong, Alfina. Missing with, a, with an attack is very chaotic. Especially when you're calling your shots like that. It's a very good way to subvert expectations. Alright, that's... Uh... The giant dancing crabs are now gone.
So we swap out Gunplay Roma with High Ice Play Roma. We learn Bufudine over Ice Breath. Everyone say goodbye to Ice Breath. It's uh, served its purpose. And then we learn Concentrate. We have learned how to concentrate. And now we have more fusions. All right, we now fuse Sarasvati. Enforce Pleroma with Tetrakarn, Makarakarn, and Healing Know How. Fun fact, you wouldn't think it, the Healing Know How is like the best skill in the game. Can you teach me that? If only I knew. Uh, and then Guishan turns into my favorite demon in this entire game, excluding Mothman. Ouroboros. Uh, Tyrukaja, Taunt, and Ice Play Roma. Yeah, this is Ouroboros. This is our, uh, this is our snake wife. Canonically female, thanks to Strange Journey. Ouroboros is, uh, absolutely my favorite non-Mothman demon in this game. But yes, healing know-how, best skill in the game. Turns out, letting your demons use healing items is kind of good. Just, just kind of. I mean, yeah, Mothman will always, uh, Mothman will always win out. It's almost not fair to, uh, to compare, just, that's why you gotta, gotta clarify. Oh, well. <laughs> I attempted the dodge. <laughs> was not a very good attempt, but, a, but an attempt was made. In some ways, I agree and disagree. I actually really like Zelenin and Jimenez. They're probably my favorite uh, alignment representatives. But that being said, I do really like Jonathan and Walter. <laughs> Though they both definitely go off the deep end, like, very suddenly. I like what they tried to do with the uh, with the alignment representatives in this game, where they made them go from like a lawful good or a neutral good, uh, where it's like you see the good parts about each alignment, and then you see kind of their quote fall from grace in a sense, where then it shows the absolute negative parts or like the dangers of extremism. And I feel like this game in general and just the series has gives really good commentary on that. That being said, Jonathan's uh, dive off the deep end is, uh, in my opinion, much worse than uh, Walter's. Given the uh, given the outcome of both of their endings and the uh, the goals that they uh, strive for in doing so. Uh, minus the hitting any weakness. Healing know-how doesn't let you throw attack items, but it lets you do... Yeah, it lets you do full party heals. Lets you summon other demons without using something like... Uh, Sabatma or Bad Company. Alright. This is my least favorite boss in the entire game. We're at $21 now? That might go up a bunch if Pluto's feeling generous with my money. <laughs> so this is Pluto... Pluto has three attacks, three things that Pluto can do. Uh, Pluto can basic attack. Pluto can use an attack called Sunny Ray, which is a fire AoE attack that inflicts poison. Or Pluto can use Volnera. Volnera is an area of effect, uh, almighty attack that inflicts stun to everyone it hits. If Pluto Volneras me once, there is a somewhat decent chance that I will not be surviving uh, the fight. Especially because we're doing our typical Tantra Karn strats here. To hopefully repel Sunny Ray or basic attack. Okay. Alright, that was Sunny Ray. 
And the smirks we got mean we might be able to go for a two turn. So Ouroboros has both Ice Playroma and High Ice Playroma, so Ouroboros can kind of keep up with our damage a tiny bit in this fight. Uh, only this fight, though, after this Ouroboros kind of falls off again. But at least for this, Ouroboros is very much helping. All right, da, 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 da. All right, good thing I put up a Karn, because that's uh, terrifying. Yeah, also, Pluto's a tool of the Lord. We find out at this point that... Uh, that uh, God in this universe actually sent Pluto to cleanse the rest of humanity from what it ha uh, from the survivors. So uh, Kiyoharu uh, would be in a little bit for a little bit of a rude awakening from that. Okay, so that Pluto fight was uh, really good. I am actually amazed. All of the fights I've been absolutely terrified for have all gone really well. Because <laughs> I was honestly scared of... Uh, when I was giving out the idea for the uh, for my donation thing, that was the fight. I was like, man, I could like suddenly just be donating like an extra like $10 from this one fight. If Pluto wants you dead, Pluto will kill you. And Pluto will kill you a lot. Like I said, it didn't get shown there, but Pluto is very much my least favorite boss in this whole game. Because it can just... It has an I win button, and it has a 1 in 3 chance of hitting the I win button at any given time. But fortunately, that did not happen. Burrows. So we've killed Pluto. We noticed that the air is already kind of clearing out. So we're like, yay, we did it. We saved the, we saved the survivors. Surely there will not be a DLC that will come around and suddenly make us fight another really ridiculous super boss to uh, try to secure the, the future of humanity again. Are these bosses of Flash in terms of law you die on a casual playthrough? Yes. Uh, some of them. Shu Wang Mu, absolutely. Pluto, kind of. Like, yeah. Shu Wang Mu and Pluto, definitely, are two, two of those bosses that are just like, yeah, you die. Minotaur is rather infamous for that. Uh, this game can be, be the combat in this game can be very well described as nuclear rocket tag in the sense that basically you kill everything very, very quickly, but everything else can kill you very quickly. So you're basically kind of this game boils down to DPS race most of the time, which I personally like uh, a lot. Just being able to play all of these fights pretty fast, pretty risky and have the consequences for death not being that severe. Uh, because you can save anywhere, generally most of the time you die to the fight, you lose like a minute, whatever. But uh, then there's fights like Pluto where it can get quite frustrating. Yeah, I played this game when it first came out, so I do not remember most of my casual playthrough of the game. So it's hard for me to, to say, because I beat the game when it came out and then didn't play it until about a year and a half ago when I started learning the speedrun. Uh, fortunately, Master Mode is only New Game Plus. So you have to have at least some experience with the game if you want to play Master Mode. Master Mode being the game's hard mode. So it's assumed you have some sort of idea what you're doing, uh, if you can access Master Mode, but... Even then, it's still, uh... Kind of can be a, a challenge. All right, so we get to go to Ichigaya again. <laughs> this is Camp Ichigaya visit number two. Uh, fortunately, all these visits are pretty short now. Yeah, Kenji's rather uh, rather rough as well. He's really easy in the speed run because it turns out the really scary move he uses that messes with a lot of people, he only does if he drops below 50% HP. And uh, we actually count, we somewhat count damage against Kenji to make sure that we kill him in one turn after he drops below 50%. Oh, wow, that uh, enemy moved a lot faster than I thought that uh, she was going to. Hi, Perry and Vivian. Bye, Perry and Vivian. So thankfully, uh, 
under unless under some niche circumstances because I've, I've definitely died to kenji before even in a run without like miscounting damage uh under most circumstances the fight goes in such a way that we can pretty reliably count damage against him and just burst him down in one turn after he's dropped below 50 percent yes <laughs> right I'm so glad we get to go to this place four times. Really, uh, really brings in the, uh, really just demonstrates how impressive this dungeon is. Friendly reminder, if you, especially if you've been watching this run for a while, to stay hydrated. Water is very important. And, uh, have a gallon jug with me, and I've almost gone through the whole thing already, so, uh... Yeah, now we go back into the void. And now the the white are like, hey, so you saw a world the uh... Yes, we're, we're together again. Basically, both Jonathan and Walter are under the impression that we sided with them. But, uh, they're, the white are showing all of us the same thing. Uh, are all showing us the same experience to try to convince us of a certain viewpoint. But they're like, yeah, so you saw, you know, the world of law, absolutely terrible. Really bad. Now let's show you what happens if your previous incarnation sided with chaos. So in this world, uh, previous incarnation of, uh, of our, of our friend, uh, Pokachu here, uh, sided with Kenji to basically... After protecting Tokyo from getting nuked somehow, uh, decide that, you know, demons are kind of where it's at. And so basically kind of began a process of uh, hybridization with uh, demons. Think like if you played Strange Journey, think like he as basically fusing humans and demons together to to better survive the uh, the harsh environment, uh, whilst also using other humans as uh as a resource. And we're also introduced to Akira again. Akira in this world is a is a demonoid, that is the the term that they have been given. And he wants to take over Tokyo, but he's kind of a wuss. So he wants us to take over Tokyo for him. But he wants us to defeat Kenji. Kenji's the person who's guarding the Yamato reactor. We want to get out of here, so it's uh, it works out for us. Yes, it's different from a, a from a demi fiend. Demonoids are humans that have been fused with uh, demons, a la Chaos Hero from SMT One, Jimenez and Strange Journey. Whereas, uh, like, a Demi Fiend is a human that's been blessed with the powers of demons through uh, Magatama. The very nerdy explanation for it, but that's kind of the difference. But so here, first off, on a. Uh, on Akira's road of conquest is uh, taking over Shinjuku because he kind of needs a staging base to lead his war against Kenji. And by that, I mean he wants to take it over so he can feel cool while he sends us to go kill Kenji for him. Also, shoutouts to all of the music that plays in Infernal Tokyo. Blasted Tokyo, lots of parts of it were pretty uh, void in music uh, due to the thematics just of... Blast of Tokyo. Uh, whereas uh, Infernal Tokyo kind of fits the vibe of the fact that the entire city is literally on fire. Friendly reminder that our uh, our two pals, Jonathan and Walter, see these two places. Walter sees a city literally on fire and says, yeah, this is cool. I like this. This is kind of legit. Meanwhile, Jonathan sees uh, 
sees the destruction of basically humanity and the unclean and is like, yo, I should, like, do that. Safe to say our friends have kind of gone off the deep end just a little bit. Also, this is Vitala. This is what I mean by, like, Walter definitely is crazy, but Jonathan just kind of kind of wins uh, wins that a bit. All right, so this is Batala. He is uh, unfortunately not the uh, Digital Devil Saga to Batala, so no uh, no flexing elephant for us. Uh, however, we just kind of explode him anyway. <laughs> Hard fight. All right, you learn Null Mind over Ice Player Alma. Dakaja Stone that does absolutely nothing. Zeo dined there. And he just gave me a Zeonga stone and then told me to eat it. Sounds like a shocking development. Yeah, true. <laughs> At least we're not breathing in noxious fumes. You know, except for the noxious fumes from the smoke being released into the air. But, you know, it's fine. Minor detail. All right, so here we get to go fight the uh, the demon with the coolest name in the game, Mahama Yuri. He even says it very dramatically, Mahama Yuri, who also has the same voice actor as uh as the main character. Fun fact: Pokachu and uh, Mahama Yuri share a voice actor in this case, which isn't really noticeable unless you play 4A, where Flynn actually talks. <laughs> Rich, smoky taste with every cough. There you go. Ooh, nice Merc. Not that that does a lot for us in this case, but still nice. Alright, here we put up a Makara Karn, since Mahama Yuri goes first once we kill uh, his... Uh, little friends here. Nice. He probably did Rikunda. He likes to do that. And hit him with a Zeodyne. Good job, Jonathan. Uh, he probably carmed. I'm not even gonna check. Uh, Muhammad already does know Makara Karn. You can check by targeting him with a magic skill, like, hov like choosing the skill and then hovering over him. And you can see if he has a shield up. Uh, I heard a, a sound effect that might indicate he put up a shield. Because he does it when he's at low health, so I just kind of went for the, the rock anyway. It's very hard to tell what's going on during auto battle in this game. Uh, it's just when you fight, uh, when you fight, when you play this game enough, you kind of get a feel for what every boss can do. All right, and we just learned Megidola. Megidola's kind of busted. Which is funny, because Megido and Megidoleon are kind of bad. The, with the, like, MP cost to damage ratio that they have going on. But, uh... Meanwhile, uh... Megidola is just kind of in that perfect range of... MP cost versus damage that it's kind of broken. Alright, so here we tell Kenji we kind of want to go home. Or not Kenji, Akira. So now Kenji's gonna be like, all right, cool, I'll, uh, I'll go open the door to fight Kenji for you. 
So we do that. Oh, something I uh, should have mentioned with the with the story when we talked to Akira after killing Pluto, he mentioned that now that he uh, now that humanity was kind of safe, he wanted to basically make a kingdom where the strong could survive. You know, as uh, humanity had kind of been tempered uh, by the experience of Pluto plus the uh, nuclear threat. So he wanted to basically make a, a world of chaos, but like a sort of chaotic good kingdom. Uh, it's notable because that was the law world. And here, when we talk to Akira here, he'll tell us that he actually wants a world of equality and basically fairness and equality for everyone. Sort of like a lawful good sort of kingdom. Or a lawful good place. So this is also to demonstrate that in these severe situations of extreme law or extreme chaos that the opposite result gets chosen. Uh, this is a point that the... Uh, this is another point that we are... Uh, trying to be shown by, uh, by the white in this situation. Oops. I think I could have dodged that, but... I <laughs> we want to go home. Uh, I have been turned into a cow. Can I go home? Alright. Nice. Got the dodge. Ah. Alright, so here... Uh, we have uh, this medic bird, Caladrius who uh, cleanses us by kind of puking on us. But it's a medic bird, so it's fine. But uh, basically, we need to get purified so we can... Uh, so we can go meet with Kenji. Uh, and then this is Kenbari. He is a toilet demon. Particularly, he is the god of bathrooms and cleanliness. Uh, and so we get purified by the uh, by the god of bath by the god of bathrooms. And then this is me after getting cleansed by the foot god. Same. So here, this uh, this Fushi uh, gives us the key to go meet Kenji. Yeah. It seems like it's sort of like one of those, like, oh, well, you know, that was that time, but I'm going to do it right or whatever. Sort of deals. But yes, uh, a lot of this is also to kind of demonstrate just how far gone both, uh, both of our friends are at this point. Yeah, exactly. All right. Picking up this last chest. Again, these earrings will be sold. All right. Uh, I'm going to put Dantalian in over Sarasvati. Time for Kenji, King of the Koopas. I mean, uh, King Kenji. Uh, I need to scroll down in my notes. There we go. Alright, like I said, Kenji is one of those fights that also tends to be a pretty big roadblock for people playing through this game the first time, specifically because when Kenji drops below 50% HP, he uses a move called Ancient Curse. Uh, Ancient Curse is an, uh, a special ability that if it hits a character, will that attacks the entire party, and everyone it hits, it will inflict every single ailment in the game on them at the same time. It's a uh, very spooky ability, and that's specifically why we damage count this fight, so we can skip getting Ancient Cursed. Alright, uh, 100. 
Conqueror Spirit, so it's about a thousand. All right, I'm not gonna smirk, so I'm only gonna do about uh, 1500 here. Uh, 1900, so he's about 3,000 HP. We glare menacingly. All right, so he's at about 3,000, so I'm gonna bonk him here for a few hundred. Put up another Tetrakarn. <laughs> yeah, all right. Okay, Conquer Spirit again. Miragi Dine is annoying. Okay, that's about another thousand. Ooh! Fun fact, this game has a mechanic where if everyone in your party is smirking at the exact same time, you get a heal. I did not know this until I started speedrunning the game. Because it's a mechanic that shows up very infrequently. Nice. Alright, that was a good Kenji fight. And we skipped the, uh, the fake-out dialogue. He does have a, a part of the fight where he will play dead to try to trick you into grabbing the remote, but he only does that when he's at extremely low HP, and we kind of skipped over that. No, I've seen that before. I've seen... Like I said, I didn't know that that could happen. Like, I've seen that a bunch since I've been running the game, but... All right, so now is the final decision. This is where we lock into our alignment. Here the white will reveal their goal. Basically, they showed us all of the messed up possibilities of Tokyo in order to kind of convince us to just kind of delete the universe. They're like, hey, everything here is kind of bad, no matter what option you pick. So you should return the world to nothing for us. And we're like, no, I'm going to destroy the order of things. Again, this does not have a neutral option. You have to pick either Law or Chaos here. So we say, hey, I'm going to destroy the order of things. I, you know, there's always hope. I believe that, you know, we can change things, and they're they're disgusted by this. And so they send us to the monochrome forest to basically rot, in it, rot for eternity. And at this point, uh, the game kind of tells you what ending you're getting. Depending on who shows up here determines the ending that we are locked into. And it's also where a big plot point is revealed in Chaos Ending that is never revealed in any other ending. Alright, so yeah. So here Steven shows up. He's like, hey, you, uh, you successfully have chosen neutrality, so I will help you uh, save Tokyo. And, like, basically, there we have a plan to kind of save everyone. More or less. But uh, first, you have to get out of here. The only way out of here is for us to kill all of the uh, to kill all of the entities we've been interacting with this entire time. Uh, if you are law ending, uh, Gabriel will show up and help you and and tell you and Jonathan kind of a similar thing. Like, hey, if you want to get out of here, you have to you have to hunt down and kill these enemies. Uh, if you choose Chaos, uh, there is something revealed that is not revealed in any other ending. Uh, Hikaru will show up. And Hikaru will actually will reveal that this entire time Hikaru is actually Lucifer. And that, uh, again, you need, to, you need to defeat your enemies to get out of here, but then... Uh, that uh, Hikaru was basically kind of watching you. At, at the beginning of the game, when you first see Hikaru, she makes a comment along the lines of, I'm interested in you. And she reveals that what she meant by that was basically she was kind of looking for a person to be uh, their general against Mikado. The Lilith and all of that was basically just a pawn to prepare the samurai to lead their to lead their forces against Mikado. And again, this is not touched on any any other place except for Chaos. If you go any other ending, Hikaru just drops out of the plot entirely, is never mentioned ever again. And thank you for the good luck, much appreciated. And that's like all she wrote. After the the scene in the uh, Cafe Florida, just Hikaru drops out of the plot. Uh, so, 
This is the first of the four fights we have to do here, and this is by far the scariest. Uh, once you get uh, White Hugo into critical HP, he will use a move called Not Wave. Not Wave is a special ability that uh, inflicts almighty damage to the entire party and has a high chance of insta-killing. This insta-kill pierces Tetraja, which is insta-kill protection. And is overall just a really good way to ruin your day. I'm gonna go for it. Okay, good. Yeah, Not Wave is very scary. Which actually makes this one, like, the first of the four that you fight the, uh, the most difficult. As long as you Karn for these fights, they're all pretty easy. Just, again, <laughs> turns out having something use Almighty, uh, kind of painful. I mean, it doesn't help that, like, Louisa Fair just kind of teleports around places, like, doesn't even try to hide that fact. Alright, so Monochrome Forest is a kind of confusing dungeon. This is like the only part of the entire game I have to still use a map for. Burrows. All right, this one's really easy. Uh, K here only uses physical attacks, so just Tetrakarn. It's fine. Oh no, it's fine. Never mind. Bonk. Dine. Has about 6,000 HP. Oh, whoops. I did a weird thing. That's fine. I, uh, kind of messed up. My, uh, my brain did a weird thing. That's fine. Uh, that's $23 now. For some reason, I got confused where I was in the turn. Yeah, it's okay. Just uh, hadn't died in a while, so wanted to wanted to make sure we were still uh, getting some good money going for charity. Ah, uh, yes, the the curse you messiah and your messianic tendencies. Yes, we unfortunately do miss out on that line. There we go. That's what I was, uh, you know, supposed to be doing until my <laughs> brain just shut off mid, uh, mid fight. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. There we go. Alright. Pass. Metricarn. All right, he should die either this turn or next turn. Yep, there we go. Karns are pretty good. Good, Sarasvati got the heal, which is why I was using her MP more. This is the thing I'm looking for. Yeah, that was the beat chain. Need that beat chain to, uh... Actually, I think we just use that one. 
Because bead chains are actually pretty valuable against the final bosses. We have a moment. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right. I've got two donations real quick. One from Shawnee for $10 saying, Loving this run so far. Wonderful commentary. And the donation goes to the runner's choice. And another anonymous donation for $15. And with that, I'm going to head on off. And I am going to leave you guys in the capable hands of Ghost Kumo for the rest of this run. All right. Take care. Thank you so much for hosting. What time is it? <laughs> Very early. Yo, what up, Kumo? How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing okay. Due to various scheduling matters, um, of course, I wasn't able to get in here as soon as as soon as uh, sporadic left but uh, thank you very much to Alpina for covering <laughs> well good you get to uh, you get to close us out here the very exciting conclusion of the run so here for uh, Isabeau here uses both uh, both physical and magic uh, specifically likes throwing out almighty or likes throwing out insta kills so uh, important to double carn here this is the one fight that we kind of need to double carn the whole thing nice bonk from Ouroboros finished it the power of our neutrality has uh, confounded has confounded them there we go. And with that, we get shiny blue bar magic stat. <laughs> so your magic actually caps at 999 in this game. Which, uh... Really no way to do that without just, like, tons and tons of repeated playthroughs and lots of incense farming, specifically from fighting Red Rider a bunch. Uh, but after you get 200, you get a shiny blue bar. Makes you feel cool about your, uh leveling decisions. If you get to 999, you get a shiny gold bar. Yeah, pretty pretty neutral about the whole situation. All right, and finally Issachar. This is where he kind of reveals that the reason why the the white have taken the appearances that they have is to mess with Flynn. So he, he makes a comment along the lines of, can you strike your best friend down again? Uh, spoilers, yes, we, we will, in fact, be doing that. So Issachar uses pretty much only physical attacks here. Uh, once he gets to low HP, he can start spamming Megidola, which is very painful. But fortunately, we can uh, get to that point without too much trouble. We use one uh, Tarakaja because all of those prompts do give us Luster Candies, which is very nice. Uh, he can Luster Candy himself, so it's important to kind of keep his look on his stats. He hasn't been doing that, though. All right, here Burroughs is going to roast him, basically saying uh, all of the his entire like motivation is baseless because they can't actually tell what's going to happen. And uh, at that, he uh, crashes into Tetrakarn, and we have successfully... Uh, we have successfully vanquished the... Uh, successfully vanquished the White. And now we get to start the most exciting part of the entire run. So remember how I mentioned uh, part of the requirement for this run is to complete 18 uh, bonus or 18 side quests. Well, we've completed about mm, probably 10 of those so far, something like that. Uh, so we got to do the rest of them now. We're going to have some more plot stuff first, and then we'll be... Uh, we'll be faced with an hour of side quests after that. This is the uh, the last big chunk of the run before the end game, and it's an hour of side quests. It's uh, lovingly referred to as cleanup. So uh, 
If y'all haven't already, get super comfy, because we're about to, uh... We're in this for the, uh, for the long haul. But, uh, here we find out more stuff. Basically, we discover that Burroughs was actually an AI that was invented to be, uh... That was invented off of the goddess of Tokyo. And that uh, the goddess of Tokyo basically, with her rebirth, will bring unity to what remains of humanity. And so our goal now is to find a way to resurrect Masakado in order to remove the dome off of Tokyo and restore it. Uh, when we wake up, we're greeted with Isabeau. Who is very, very happy to see us alive. So uh, now we have Best Girl with us on our journeys. Which, at this point, we're kind of like, well, how do we do what we were just requested to do? Like, we're not exactly from Tokyo. We, uh, the incident of the dome kind of predates us by 2,000 years and predates the people in Tokyo by 25, so... Who would possibly know about this Masakado thing or how to get us out of the situation? Fortunately, we, uh, happened to make the acquaintance of, uh, Two gentlemen who are of uh, authority and knowledge to uh, be able to help us with that. So we go back to the Cafe Florida and pay a visit to our good friends Fujiwara and Skins. You know, good friends who we've seen once and uh, told we were going to try to get them into Mikado and then immediately could not. But uh, Burroughs mentions the Guardian Spirit of Tokyo and uh, they're like, wait, do you know who that means? And so we get to spell out... Masakado. This is the uh, the test of how tired are you in this run. To if you remember how to spell Masakado correctly. Or, you know, don't start spelling something else. I've definitely started spelling like Mikado or Erewhon. Like, I see the text pop up and I'm like, all right, what word am I spelling? Yes, there is a time difference inside and outside of the dome. The correct thing to smell to spell was Mothman. True, that probably would have just given me a credits warp or something. <laughs> but uh, here we're uh, we're given Masakado's katana. It's uh, basically all of the defense uh, divinities of over Tokyo. Uh, all have something called a totem, which is basically a means used to summon them. Uh, the katana, the sword, is the means to summon Masakado. And it only opens to the person who is chosen to free Masakado. Or the uh, the person who is the reincarnation of the one who sealed him in the first place. So we're given the sword. We're able to use it. Not that that does anything for us in practicality of the game itself. It's just a fun little plot thing. And we're given the sword and we're instructed to go, uh, go visit Masakado in Ginza. To resurrect him and uh, remove the dome. We do need to grab some quests here though, and we need to sell a bunch of stuff. So this next portion of the run, I call it the Ginza run. Uh, the gimmick behind the upper portion of Ginza, which we haven't been to yet. Whoops, I didn't grab the quests. The gimmick behind the upper portion of Ginza that we haven't been to yet is basically during these quests I did. Is that in order to gain access to further areas of Ginza, you have to pay large amounts of money to access the next area in order to find a key card that will then give you the opportunity to pay more money to go to the next area, etc. All in all, we need 165,000 Maka to get access to all of Ginza, and we have to get all access to all of Ginza in order to what do you want to say? Uh, complete a quest. Uh, let me get this cell list real quick. Uh, one of our beads of life. Bombs of rising. What do you want to sell? Uh, the summon stone. So you need to accumulate a ton of money only for it to all be taken from us immediately. We also need enough money to do some fusions midway through cleanup. So we need about a 200k. What do you want to sell? By the time we're done selling things, fortunately, we've been picking up all of these items in our journeys through alternate Tokyo so that we can have enough money to do so. What do you want to sell? 
magic earrings and the fury earrings. And perfect, we have 225k. What do you want to sell? And now we can go get robbed of most of it. All right. Yeah, as we're uh, making our way through this area, it's a great time if you have donations or anything to plug. Because uh, it's a lot of walking here. Certainly. Um, so we did just get a $55 anonymous donation from Anonymous. It says, looks like the donation count is not a palindrome at the moment. Let's fix that. Great run and commentary. Thank you, Anonymous. Thank you, thank as you. I'd like a, much as I enjoy some palindromes, and I'd like even more is if we were to hit that 21,000. We are less than $100 away from that. And I think we could do that before we wrap the side quest portion up at the very least. Yeah, absolutely. We have like an hour and 45-ish left of the run, so let's get that... Uh, let's definitely try to hit that goal by the uh, by the end of this run. Or heck, like uh, Kumo said, even during cleanup would be fantastic. All right, this is the worst room in the game. Uh, the poison corridor. And I'm not, uh, I'm not gonna lie, five hours into this game, knowing everything I know about it, I'm amazed that I'm amazed that that would be the worst room in the game. It's only the worst room, like it's the worst specific room in the game because the game makes us walk through that whole room four times. So we have to go through it once to talk to this dude. This dude's kind of rude. He's like, hey, I got this gold card, but I don't need it. So you want it for five, uh, five thousand? Actually, uh, on second thought, since I have to go through that room again, you have to pay me ten thousand for it. So, you know, we have to do that. Pay ten thousand. And now we get to go through the room again. So we match the number of times he goes through the room. But then after we get the platinum card, we have to go through this room two more times because there's a dude in the room to the north that has a silver coin. And the sil that wants to sell us a silver coin for a hundred thousand maka. That's uh, basically a, a completely useless coin that only has value because the person who has the black card, which is the item we need to get to the final area of Ginza for some reason wants a silver coin. And apparently the dude who's charging a hundred K for uh, Silver Coin is apparently the only person in all of Tokyo that has access to it. Not to mention that room. Every time we go through it, we take damage every couple of steps, and it has a decent chance of poisoning us. So by the time we get the Silver Coin from that dude, we will, uh, the entire party will all be at 1 HP. Basically guaranteed. So uh, that's why it's the worst room in the game, just because it's kind of obnoxious and the game makes you go through it a bunch. And then in 4A, they make you go through the whole room two more times because, yeah. So that, that's why it's my least favorite just single room in the game. Uh, I don't think my Stoma Sword is on anymore. So that also saved because I don't want to get kicked back if I die. All right. Why are we wearing the Demonica? Because armor in this game isn't particularly useful, and this is something the game gave us that gets the job done. Uh, we will swap out our uh, helmet and our pants eventually, soonish. Uh, however, uh, and we will be swapping our uh, our jacket as well. We'll be swapping our uh, our chest armor back to the default armor. We will end the game with the first piece of armor the game gives us. Because it resists ice. And like I mentioned, armor in itself is really useless in this game. You get very little HP from it. All it really does is shuffle around your... Uh, shuffle around your affinities, your weakness, and your strength. And there's not any armor in this game that actually gives you, like, meaningful uh, boosts to your... Uh, like, a really meaningful change of... Uh, Affinity other than like the demonica makes you resist alike, which is or resist death, which is kind of nice Put on the Amazon cardboard box outfit. Yeah, that would definitely make the run much more interesting for sure 
Fun fact about that, I actually was supposed to get that outfit when I, uh, when I got the game, but then Amazon just never sent me my code, so... I, uh, was spared the, the joys of the cardboard box outfit. Yeah, in 4A they made it so armor's actually quite good. They made it much more useful, especially considering the main character of 4A is, uh, kind of terrible. And uh, his HP and MP growth are really bad, so he needs every little bit of HP and MP he can get to make him not as squishy. Also, this is Masakado. He uh, reveals to us that as much as Masakado would like to uh, remove the dome from Tokyo, he actually has been sapped of his power. So in order to obtain Masakado's power, or to help him restore his power, we have to acquire the hopes of all of the people of Tokyo. How are we going to acquire the hope of all of the people of Tokyo, you ask? One answer. Side quests. So that's what we're currently going and doing. So I got the, uh... Got the platinum card. Got the picture of the, uh, Lewis Witten store. So now we get to go through the poison room again. This, is, this room is basically the developers saw the cursed hallway from Nocturne and were like, yo, what if we did that but made it required and made you do it several times? I was just gonna say, this makes me think of that room. It's like, at least that gets you, like, what, a quarter million uh, Maka or something? Yeah, if you opt to do the Cursed Hallway, you get a quarter million, which is super crazy good. Alright, this dude here is like, yo, I've always wanted uh, to meet someone with a platinum card. Here, take this coin that I just basically stole all, stole all your money for. And now we get to go through the room again. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so if you go Law or Chaos, you basically... The reason why we need Masakado other than plot, or other than, like, he's the guardian spirit. The reason why we need it is because both Lucifer and Merkaba's dungeons uh, have a barrier in front of them. In Law and Chaos, because you have Lucifer and or Mer uh, Lucifer or Merkaba with you, they can get rid of the barrier themselves. Like I said, my entire party has one HP. Live in the dream. Uh, they can get rid of the barrier for you. We kind of have to make a friend who can eat barriers for us. So that's the reason why we can't just go to the final dungeons. Whereas in Law and Chaos, they're like, okay, cool. We're, uh, we're here. Let's go do the thing. Also worth noting at this point, uh, in the, uh, something that has happened since we have uh, made it back to Tokyo... Uh, both Jonathan and Walter have met with their specific uh, alignment representatives and have taken their power. Uh, Lucifer ate Walter to become the Demon Lord Lucifer, uh, whereas Jonathan did a fusion dance with the four archangels to become God's Chariot Merkaba. So uh, next time we see them, things will have changed a little bit. Alright, so we turn in the silver coin. And I only played a few hours of this game, and I periodically will stop in on your stream, but I never noticed just how hard this soundtrack really goes. <laughs> oh yeah, this this game's OST is amazing. I'm, I'm super glad they brought back the uh, the composer, a couple of the composers for this for SMT5, which I imagine I imagine you're either going to uh, you're either going to pick up straight up after this run or uh, sometime later today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. Uh... Very good schedule timing, at least. <laughs> yeah. So fortunately, slash unfortunately, fortunately because it's cool, unfortunately, because I have to wait for it. I got the, the steel book from Amazon. Right, yeah. And so okay. they're delivering it sometime, I guess, tonight now. So uh, I have to wait until it gets to me, which at least is nice because it means I don't have the whole, like, I could be playing SMT5 because I can't. All right, so the entire reason we had to do all of that spending was just for this one quest with Dionysus here. Uh, there's a quest called The Great Drunkenness where we need to steal some wine from Dionysus. 
and he happens to be chilling out in the uh, most expensive place to get to in the entire game. Also, for uh, for funsies, we'll uh, we'll do something. Uh, this room in here has uh, there was a reoccurring plot point that Isabeau actually didn't uh, have the final manga of her book of Rosa Versailles. Uh, she finds it here, and we let her read it, and she's very happy about it. So she, uh, we let her, uh, just for funsies to uh, appreciate Isabeau, we do let her read her, read her final volume of manga here. Normally wouldn't do that in her own, but since, uh, since we're doing this for fun, might as well, uh, might as well let Isabeau have her, uh, have her fun. All right, and with that, we're done with Ginza. We are about a quarter of the way through Cleadup now. And now we get to, uh, oh, uh, we need the uh, status on the Save Kill the Hunters bid war, by the way, because we're about to do that. So uh, that needs to be closed, and I need to know what we're doing. Alrighty. Because that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so... Get one second here. What's your pleasure? Yeah. So in the lead by one dollar is save. Oh, all right. Y'all voted for it. We're gonna be uh, we're gonna be saving the hunters. Gonna be uh, gonna be taking a break from my usual bloodthirsty streak, and we'll uh, we'll spare those hunters. Here we go. And hunter tournament prelims. As a note, we do have plenty of vid wars coming up that are um, by pretty narrow margins. In fact. Uh, Monster Sanctuary has a, a name the character that currently there's two in, two names, Chat with $30, Cookie with 25 and the character costume with Winter Explorer with 7 and Monster Keeper and Old World Tycoon with $5 each. So it doesn't take a lot to, uh, doesn't take a lot to boost up some of these, uh, incentives, possibly even pick your own. Right, it is time for Hunter Tournament. Hunter Tournament, uh, this one's not too bad. Uh, there is a second hunter tournament fight, uh, or hunter tournament quest that is probably one of the worst fights in cleanup, uh, solely because in all of these fights the enemies go first, and as has been uh, delved into many times this run, any fight that is inconsistent is only inconsistent because we don't go first. So uh, this first fight's pretty simple, just Mazan with them away. All of these fights are basically going to go down in one turn, and we will be sparing the Hunters, so, uh, there you go. We just got called a wuss. Look what you've done, chat. But seriously, thank you all for the, uh, for the donations for this. Uh, that's spooky. Alright. Does that save or lose any time, out of curiosity? Um, technically, it's a little faster to spare them because you save one input. <laughs> but the one input is pretty menial in a seven hour run. Mm -hmm. All right. So unfortunately, uh, Mr. Dancing Crab over there is uh, dancing away happily uh, with a smile on his face. So. Got a... Uh... Wait him out. He'll probably try to do magic. Yeah, there we go. Baron, uh, sparing this dude. All right. This third hunter's name is Buzzsaw Sanya. I remember his name is Buzzsaw Sanya because for the longest time I thought his name was Buzzsaw Joe. Because reading text that's scrolling by really fast is difficult. So, uh, in my heart, he will always be Buzzsaw Joe. 
And uh, today, thanks to your generous donations, Buzzsaw Joe will uh, live to Buzzsaw another day. I want to see blood! And the final battle. All of these are, uh, both of these tournaments are four fights long. Well, that's unfortunate. Oh, well. I was mildly concerned about the fact that, uh, I was asleep. But, uh, I guess I'm not asleep anymore, so there's that. So, thanks, question mark, game? Uh, oh, that's... Rude. Okay, come on. It's a bit of an extended nap. Alright, this is... Not what the kids would call ideal. Come on. <laughs> come on, Pokachu, I believe in you! I have a, I have a pot. <laughs> uh, buffs or uh, ailments have no, uh, no maximum turn limit in this game. Oh, I forgot to uh, uh, charge that. I think I can just Mazanma you though. Well, I could Mazanma you, but apparently I can't. There we go. Yeah, uh, it's a, a quirk of SMT is that in a lot of these games. Well, the older ones, generally. Uh, ailments have no maximum turn limit, so I could have just been sitting there stunned for a very long time. All right, we did it. We beat Hunter Tournament Prelims. Woo! Now we get to go to Shibuya. We actually have never visited the Shibuya Hunters Association. Uh, fun fact, Shibuya is like the worst laid out town in this entire game. The, the location of the terminal, the association, and the entrance are so inconvenient to everything else that it's actually any time you have to go from, uh, from somewhere near Shibuya to Shinjuku, it's actually faster to walk to Shinjuku than it is to, to, to go to Shibuya, teleport from Shibuya to Shinjuku, and then go to where you need to go in Shinjuku. That's uh, that's how out of the way the uh, the terminal in Shibuya is. What's your pleasure? What? This is only a fun fact because uh, I may or may not have been the person that actually discovered that. Mostly because I just kind of complained about where the Shibuya terminal was, and then. Uh, Coolzo uh, actually uh, bothered testing it. It was like, oh, you're actually right. It is, <laughs> it is actually faster to just walk. Specifically, this was tested with uh, after we beat the final boss, we have to walk back to Shinjuku uh, to get the ending. And the uh... and so it was tested that walking from where the final boss is, which is uh, once again in Camp Ichigaya. To Shinjuku, it's actually faster to just walk all the way to Shinjuku than to go to Shibuya by, like, 15 or 20 seconds. So there's your, uh, there's your fun, uh, Tokyo travel tip for the, uh, for the day. Uh, alright, so the next quest we're doing is... Mysterious Story of Tenozu. All right, so I mentioned earlier that uh, Ouroboros is probably my favorite uh, my favorite demon in this game, excluding Mothman. And if it hasn't been shown already why Ouroboros is so great, uh, we will continue to demonstrate that here. Because Ouroboros is the very special distinction of uh, absorbing electricity, which has had the potential to come in handy a couple of times in this run, hasn't really done so so far. 
Uh, but this next quest, it is more than likely going to be a huge boon to us. Also, Ouroboros resists Fizz, which is really good in general. Just Ouroboros is great. We get Megidola, which is one of the most broken skills in the game from them. Just overall, very good. Yeah, the Tenozu, uh, the Tenozu quest is actually a two-quest uh, quest line. Fortunately for us, the second quest of that quest line is not required for neutral ending. Uh, because if it was, it would probably make the run about an hour longer. The second quest of the Tenozu line is the super boss of the neutral alignment. Uh, every alignment has a, quote, super boss associated with them. Uh along with the the fiends being a general super boss for everything oh that was a lovely game and uh the dlc super fights uh for neutral ending that super boss is beelzebub and beelzebub is uh rather insane throws uh spams mazeodyne but if you uh repel mazeodyne or put up a uh put up a karn of any sort uh Beelzebub punishes it with Megidoleon. Yeah, like I said, the fiends are all super bosses in their own right. I've only ever actually beaten one of them, which was uh, Matador. All right, uh, this is Red Knight. Red Knight can use Carol Hit. Did not use, maybe. Don't use Carol Hit, please. Uh, or it can kill me. That's also a thing you can do. Uh, let's try to struggle this out. Heck it. Go big or go home. So him sticking my party is kind of uh, very unfortunate because it does mean we do less damage. Yeah, very few bosses in this game actually can read shields, uh, but the post-game bosses basically all can. In fact, even the final bosses can't read shields. Lucifer and Merkaba are both incapable of reading shields. Yeah, the uh, the Mazio spam is uh, maybe survivable. The Megidol the Megidolion spam is uh, less survivable. Okay, that's fight one down. That was Red Knight done, and now we get to fight Ball. So this is Ball. All right, he's Bufodine. All right, that was interesting. Okay, so that was Mazeodine. Uh, this is what I mean by Ouroboros is amazing. This does make this fight a little scary, though. Uh, as long as he doesn't just boot me. Okay. Well, friendly reminder, you only need one HP. Only hit point that matters is the last one. Yeah, that's my that's mysterious story of Tenozu done. I am pleasantly surprised that that uh, actually uh, ended in my favor, considering how that fight started. So one kind of nasty thing that Red Knight can do uh, is he has an ability called Carol Hit. Uh, I mentioned earlier in the run, there's a status effect in this game called Lost. That is a uh, status effect that I am somewhat infamous for in the uh, SMT speedrunning community. That uh, when a Lost is inflicted upon a demon, it kicks them out of the fight, and then you have to actually go around and find them in the wild before they rejoin you. Uh, Carol Hit is a special move. Uh, normally, the way Lost work is every Force Element attack has a 1% chance of inflicting Lost. Uh, Carol Hit is special in the sense that Carol Hit has a 50% uh, chance of inflicting Lost, and it's a physical attack. Uh, it's pretty scary. So, thankfully, he opted to not Carol Hit me. Which is good.
All right, for the fans, we'll see if there's a fiend here. One in two fifty six chance the black rider is there. Okay, no black rider. I'm detecting a. All right, so uh, it's been a while, but we're uh, paying a visit to our friend, the terminal guardian. He is once again guarding a terminal. Surprise, surprise. And uh, we're here to uh, relieve him of duty. So he summons a couple feigned demons. Just to flex on us, of course. And uh, we, we, uh, we don't appreciate that, so we, uh, we get rid of them. And we get another terminal. Yeah. Two two accident only demon. Wait, is uh is Kreshnik accident only in this game? I can't remember. Is he Genma or is he famed? I know the one in the middle is a famed demon. Uh Kuhulin is a special fusion. And he's a Genma. I don't remember what uh Kreshnik is. I think Kreshnik is get is Genma as well. Alright, and from there we go to Kasumigasaki. He, you can tease him. Okay. I couldn't remember uh, with Krejnik specifically. But yeah, the, the dude in the middle is accident only, though. I remember that. I remember that because I've accidented into him in a run before. Alright, so back here in Kasumigasaki, we have a couple, we have a bunch more quests to do. We'll be doing like four quests in pretty short, uh, short order here. So uh, if we have uh, donations or anything we want to plug here before I get to that, now would be a great time. Uh, if Kumo is back, I'm not actually sure if Kumo's back or not. I'm back. I'm back. Oh, sorry. Back. Okay, My, cool. I just forgot to unmute. Um, yeah, so we actually have a couple donations that have come in. Um, we got $15 from Burroughs. It says, I detect a very dangerous demon nearby. You should consider getting out of here. Hmm. Also, $20 for a Mothman. Hey, you. It just says, Mothman is real, and he's donating to this wonderful cause. Hey, Not thank you, Mothman. Work. Big fan. Not always, no. You can get just random demons. Uh, what? Uh, the way accidents tend to work as far as the resulting demon is that the demon you get from a fusion accident tends to be around the level of the demon that you are trying to fuse. Uh, or you can just get a level 1 slime as well. That also can happen. Uh, but generally speaking, you tend to get a demon around the level of what you're fusing. So the way, if you're going for all uh, all demons and you're trying to fill the compendium, uh, the best way to do it is to try to fuse a demon that's around the level of the demon you're trying to accident into. Alright, so this is the final Nozomi quest. Uh, here, Nozomi gets a request from the fairies that they want her to perform a ritual to summon their, uh... Basically, the fairies have kind of lost their queen, so they want to summon her again. And so they want Nozomi to summon the queen of the fairies while we protect Nozomi from the angels. Uh, because basically the angels turned the queen of the fairies into Black Maria. And so, uh, kind of have to deal with them. All right, cool. And that's the quest done. It's, uh, that quest is e is very short. Either they go first and we die immediately, or we go first and they die immediately. So uh, here, Nozomi performs the, the summoning. Yeah, KO'd and sick demons have a higher chance of fusion accident. Uh, summons Black Maria. Uh, Black Maria informs the fairies, though, that she can't abandon her duties to... Uh, to what she is currently, uh, to the current religion she's basically leading in. But she just says that Nozomi is candidate to become the new queen of the fairies. So Black Maria blesses Nozomi with her power. Nozomi becomes the new queen of the fairies and uh, suddenly gains a, uh, a taste for outdated lingo and Kamina sunglasses if you uh, play 4A after this.
In other words, nice work, home slice. Alright, uh, didn't burn the shrine. Alright, after this quest, we get to do more fusions. I am here to slay you! Alright, so this is Okun Nushi. Wow, he does not like me today. So here is an actual fun fact about, uh, about this fight specifically. Uh, previously, in older roots of this game, we would actually do this fight against Okun Nushi much earlier in the run. Uh, I didn't charge. This isn't going to one-shot him. Uh, this is potentially bad. Oh, he missed. Never mind. We do this fight much earlier in the run, roughly at about the halfway point. We would fight Okuninushi because the uh, the item we get from him, uh, the, the pair of pants we get from him is actually really useful and gives us a bunch of agility. Uh, and so I used to jokingly refer to this, uh, to completing this quest as pants percent because we, uh, we kill this dude for his pants. It's a great pair of pants. Uh, unfortunately, the, the White King pants that we just got from clearing Rebirth of the Lady are better. So, uh, so no, uh, no Okuninushi pants for us. Yeah, see, just a slight improvement. But here we're, uh, we're gonna embrace fashion and change up our items a bit. Uh, also, everyone, uh, please say goodbye to Mushusu. Uh, we're gonna release him into the wild. Bye, Mushusu. Uh, the reason we release Mashusu is because Mashusu uh, evolves into Tiamat. And we don't need Tiamat. Tiamat doesn't really serve us any purpose, and so we just kind of waste time with the, the level ups and the, hey, I want to evolve. You should let me evolve into Tiamat, sort of dealio. What we do? Uh, so we delete him. He's in a better place now. He, uh... Has found other, uh, has found other Mashusus, has a nice Mashusu family. And, uh, time for the final big fusion chain in the game. This is the second to last actual fusion chain. This is the last, like, big one. Alright, uh, so the Dantalian we've been having, we've had with us this entire game, now becomes long. Uh, in multiple ways. He both is long and long. Dakarn, Tarakaja, Makarkan, Dekunda. Alright, it's almost for Tetrakarn, Tarakaja, Makarkan, if you did it. So now we have Long. And now we're going to take this Nadja and turn her into a fabulous sunshine bird. Got our, uh, got our boy Vidoff near here. Then Vidoff near is going to become Sylph. 28. Just Meteorama. Our, uh, our Hamsa friend getting, getting more use even in this, this far in the game. And then... Sylph ranks up dragons. So now we uh, we have Ilyanka, who is a water dragon. And then our water dragon will become Zhuyin. Pitch those from a Karakarn and a Dekunda. Zhuyin's pretty cool. Uh, has a rather bonkers HP stat of 662. Uh, unfortunately, the, the side effect is that Julian's MP is really bad. Oh, wait, one more fusion. Sarasvati becomes Perry. Welcome. Welcome. Not to be confused with a certain platypus that we're, uh, we may be familiar with. Bufidine, Tetrakarn, Karakarn. My doggy dime is on my healing now, huh, Yep, that's right.
yeah so uh oh do not do not do that do not do that that would be very bad so yeah Jian, great hp spat <laughs> hp stat uh mp leaves uh leaves a little bit to be desired but it's fine we, we love him anyway and now we will do hunter tournament finals where we could will continue to uh to spare our opponents in the field of combat as per y'all's donations. All right. For the glory of the Hunters Association, we will make our hunters fight to the death. Seems legit. Any effect with stats? No, stat ups are random. Uh, random but weighted. If memory serves. Uh, but demons all start at a set base value for their stats, and then all of their level ups are random from there. Almost, uh. Almost accidentally, uh, killed that dude. Muscle memory is, uh, one heck of a thing. Please don't kill Perry. That's, uh, not great. Alright, well. Hmm, how am I gonna go about this? Uh, this won't kill, but it will get rid of some of them, yeah. Leaves Hunter Dude alive. Uh, do I have a Summon Stone by chance? I do not. Uh, let's see. Kinda... Kinda need parry. Okay, cool. So, bring parry back. Tetracarn. Gale. Tracker Prot U. There we go. Pretty good recovery. Alright. Fight number three. This is the, the worst one of the four. Or he could completely whiff his shot and make a liar out of me. That works, too. Hey, I'm always a fan of when the game proves me wrong if it's in my favor. Also, uh... Shoutouts to this dude coming to a tournament fight and bringing a bunny with him. Dude has no fear. Boo! Boo, I say! Alright, so this guy's the chairman. His actual name is God Hand Hills, which is probably the coolest name out of any, like, NPC in this game. Like, this guy just sounds awesome. Uh, but I call him the chairman. Or the chairman. Because, uh, you know, it takes a certain amount of swagger to... to bring your, uh, to bring your chair with you into combat. For that, God Hand Hills, the man's man, will be spared. And that was Hunter Tournament Finals. That was actually, other than the parry death, was really good. I, I am incredibly pleasantly surprised as to how that went. Alright, we actually only have three quests left. Actually, two, technically. We have a turn-in that we haven't done yet. There's that photo quest that we uh, have had for like two-thirds of the game so far. That uh, we have yet to turn in. Well, we need to do that eventually. Uh, but other than that, we actually only have two quests left we actually have to complete. And yes, they will take like 20 minutes. <laughs> One of the quests is uh, quite, uh, quite involved. I'm going to heal at Shinjuku. 
Yeah, exactly. Again, with a name like God Hand Hills, and you just bring a chair into a fight like that, like, dude, dude deserves to get off scot-free for that, like, Intimidation 20 or something, like, dude's got it figured out. What's your blood? All right, this next quest is, uh, full disclosure, my least favorite quest in all of quest cleanup. Uh, Multi-demon fusion. And if Coolzo were here, he would be making fun of me for saying that, because we have this uh, discussion frequently about the worst quest in cleanup. And uh, Coolzo never has trouble with this quest, but, like, everyone else does. Uh, it's one of those uh, just-get-lucky forehead quests, so... Uh... Surely it will go swimmingly. Real quick, we got a $50 anonymous donation with no comment. Just want to say thank you very much for that. And we're 13 away from 21,000. So that next one, that next one only takes $13 and we'll, we'll hit that, uh, hit that little milestone. Yo, very nice. Thank you. Thank you all so much for the very generous donations. Just remind everyone what all we're here for. So we are pressing for glory, hope and healing. Uh, our second events uh we are raising money for nami the national alliance on mental illness so nami is the largest grassroots mental health organization in the united states whose work is focused around three pillars of education and support awareness and advocacy participate in nationwide awareness opportunities like mental health month suicide prevention month and mental illness awareness week nami has partnerships with a wide range of companies and organizations such as Fox Sports and Google that they use to get their name and mission out in front of new audiences. So if anything, you know, we've been talking about throughout this marathon. Sounds like it might be interesting to you. If, you know, if you struggle with mental health, if you know somebody who does, uh, NAMI offers quite a lot of extensive resources. They've helped out some good friends of mine. Uh, you can Find them out at their website at nami.org. Um, you can also find their social media accounts at nami on Facebook, at nami communicate on Twitter, and at nami communicate on Instagram. And uh, <laughs> and you died. <laughs> uh, that's twenty five, I believe, now for uh, for charity. <laughs> Remember when I said multi demon fusion is uh. Is uh, it's it's definitely a quest that that exists in this video game. That that is why. <laughs> For the record, if anyone is curious, that was uh, Meggy Dola twice. There was absolutely nothing I could do in that situation. Just kind of die. All right. Wondering. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering if you'd end up having an SMT counter of just SMT deaths. <laughs> nothing you can do. The game says. Uh, Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. <laughs> <laughs> Baphomet just really likes charity. All right, take three. Well, we're going first. That's promising. Double Turunda. Yep. I'm just gonna zero out my attack here. Yeah. Hello, goodbye. <gasps> ah, well, we'll run it. Baphomet's in a mood today. Alright, well, hope we don't just die immediately in fight two. Oh, also the Texas Rangers back, by the way. Also known as Cernanos. Kernanos. Also, Baphomet turned into a donkey. 
because sure I guess oh okay this is interesting huh do this I'm in danger of just getting death's doored anyway uh, let's car Karn for Madoon. All right, cool. Didn't want him alive anyway. All right, didn't want to hit my target anyway. Cool. All right. Yeah, I don't know what I thought was going to happen there. Uh, that's 27 now? 29. 29, thank you. <laughs> So real quick, I just want to remind everyone, um, we do have a couple of prices going on during this uh, run. Um, if you donate $15 before the end of this run, you're entered into a chance to win a copy of Shimigami Tensei 5, the Steelbook Edition. That is, uh, once again, a $15 minimum donation. Um, there's also an opportunity for a wireless pro controller, uh, the red Bluetooth one. Um, for donating at any point between uh, now, with this run, and the end of Monster Sanctuary, uh, which is the run coming up. Yeah, friendly reminder, I, I did say this was my least... 31! I did say this was my least favorite quest in the game for uh, for a good reason. <laughs> this is worse than normal, but it is still a uh, very uh, a very good demonstration as to why. Because if uh, Baphomet says no, he says no very emphatically. Thirteen dollars from Tiny Tim and just says, "Hey y'all, working today, but I've been loving the SMT4 run in the background. Let's keep those donations coming in for Nami." P.S. Hi Ghost. Hi Tim. <laughs> And with that, we have uh, successfully hit $21,000. Nice. All right. Let's see. Hmm. I'm going to do something I don't usually do in the Retro Tra just down here. That way I don't have to Makara Karn next turn. I can focus on... Getting him dead. Uh, what are we sitting at? All right, I'm still gonna car burn anyway. Oh, that's helpful. All right. All right, I have appeased Baphomet, apparently. Apparently Baphomet's now uh, over trolling me. All right. Well, we have our whole party alive this time, so that's uh, that is a distinct improvement over our circumstances. Why did I say anything? <laughs> Thanks, game. <laughs> oh, goodness. Thank you, video game, for, for that. All right. Uh, hmm. That's probably OK. I can get myself zeroed here. That'd be fine. All right, I think we're... Okay, Cernos is dead. All right, we did it. Multi-team infusion is done. Oh my goodness, all right. Well, that was, uh, that was comedy. Comedy in its purest form. All right. Burrows. Speed. Let's 
Let's just throw these lifestones. We just got two great chakras from that fight. Great chakras restore your entire party's MP to full. Uh, use one of them there. And now we will accept the final quest of cleanup. Tokyo Cosmos. Here we uh, get to uh, take a nice stroll across all of Tokyo, again, and uh, fight the uh, fight the four Mario Bros, also known as Mario, Luigi, Wario, and Blue Toad. Sounds like you're missing somebody there, but I can't quite put my finger on it. No, I mean that's 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 the four uh, the four main Mario characters, right? I mean, I'm a runner of partners in time. The four Mario brothers to me are Mario, Luigi, Baby Mario, and Baby Luigi. Oh, yeah, that is fair, yeah. In a wibbly-wobbly, uh, timey-wimey sort of way, that makes sense. I mean, it's appropriate for this game, is it not? <laughs> that is fair. All right. So we talked to that random uh, hooded man, and he's like, "Here, take this orb and uh, go to uh, go fight the Devas. If you take too long to fight the Devas, the orb will break, and uh, you lose." So basically, we just have a turn limit for killing all four of them. Uh, the turn limit's very generous. I think the game kind of assumes you're also taking random encounters on the way, uh, which we will not be because the Stoma Sword's pretty good. Case in point. But uh, first off on this list is, uh, oh, I need to equip a thing. I almost forgot to re-equip the Icy Ring. I don't need the Hunter Crown right now. So the Hunter Crown gives Null Mind onto uh, MC, which is why we're using it for Multi-Demon Fusion. All right, so here's Mario. Mario is probably the rudest of all of them because of that. I've always been a Luigi fan myself. Now I can see why. Real quick, we got a $12 do anonymous donation. No comment, but thank you very much for your donation. You set us at a nice palindromic 21,012. You do. Oh, that's mean. Who's going to be the first to break that palindrome? Uh, just don't Megido me, please. He Megido'd me. Nice. Uh, we're at 33? 33. $33 for charity. Let's go. Speaking of palindromes. Hmm, I feel like I've been here before. Speaking of palindromes. All right, there we go. Oh, yeah, 33. That's what. Okay. All right, well, that was uh, an adventure. Fortunately, uh, Bishamontin, who's the actual name of that dude, uh, is the hardest of the four. Due to having Luster Candy and Warcry and Megidola. Also having Hades Blast, which is really only threatening turn one. Right. Uh, this game and its obsession with poisoning me. There we go. Chakra Pot, you. Next up is uh, Kamokuten, I believe. For the longest time, I did not know how to say his name, so I just called him Kokomo. Uh, also known as, uh, I believe this one is Blue uh, Blue Toad. Yep, Blue Toad. 
Hey, healed Ouroboros for me. Very nice. See, Blue Toad is a gentleman and a scholar. Well, there goes, uh, there goes GN. Very cool. And there we go. There's Blue Toad down. <laughs> we gotta take a quick pit stop in Shinjuku to uh, lick our wounds because this. Oh, well, I didn't. Uh, not Rhea Stoma Sword, and now my source of the Stoma Sword is kind of dead, so that's exciting. Gotta take a pit stop in Shinjuku, lick our wounds, also finally turn in that quest. You know, the quest we accepted like. Four hours ago. Four and a half hours ago. Yeah, we're finally gonna finally gonna turn that in. Figured uh, we made her wait long enough. Gotta run it on over here. Uh, please do not attack me. Shelter inspection finally turned in. Palindrome, palindrome was broken. Guess we gotta. Guess we just gotta donate more to uh, fix the palindrome. Well, the next one would be twenty one thousand one hundred twelve, which is in about eighty five dollars. There we go. Uh, da, 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 da. gonna do the selling now. I need about uh, 73k for my final fusions. And we already have that, but I might as well finish what selling the Bushi to Kiri. There we go. Ah, uh, correct. So the turn limit is only expended if you end your turn. So anytime your partner, quote, would get a turn is when the uh, the orb diminishes in power. What's your pleasure? What? So it uh, allows us to, you know, stop by the association, grab a bite to eat. You know. Most chill time limit ever. In general, though, this time limit's pretty lax. I think even my first playthrough I first tried this bit with plenty of time to spare. All right, for the fans, we'll see if Black Rider's here again. Nope, no Black Rider. All right, and uh, so all of you Luigi fans out there, I, uh, I regret to inform you that Luigi uh, gets the most bullied out of all of them, as is uh, only appropriate. Because uh, Luigi here has the uh, unfortunate distinction of being weak to ice. Note that we are uh, once again wearing the earrings that give our ice attacks plus 25% strength. And uh, yeah, there went Luigi. He has about, uh, you know, without, like, I think 27, uh, 2700 HP at most. Uh, we did a little bit more than that to him. And, uh, now time to go fight Wario. Uh, that one was actually Zotrotin, by the way. And then we're going to go fight Jokokuten. Fun fact about Jokokuten, uh, the... One of the routes for uh, Nocturne Hard True Demon ending uses Jokokuten in the final party. It's a pretty cool dude. In that game, he repels ice. In this game, he's weak to electric. This series likes to shuffle around weaknesses a lot.
All right. Uh, immediately after we beat Jokokuten, we have to fight all four of them at the same time as part of the same battle. So before we move on to actually kill this fight, we will uh, fully set up our buffs. That way we can one turn the following encounter. Petrokarn here. I was going to say, I'll try to find Matador and Teosu. You get one shot at it, but uh, an attempt to, uh, to find Matador will be made. Uh, unfortunately, I think we're all going to just miss him, though. Yeah, this game has a lot of that. Has a lot of X's weak to Y, except for when they aren't. Which uh, makes running multiple games in this series quite the... Uh, quite the uh, the feat of like, hmm, is this the game where he's uh, resistant to this, or is this the one where he's weak to this? Is using Thing here going to win me the fight or result in my immediate demise? Hmm. Alright, so uh, Megidola's pretty good. And that's Tokyo Cosmos done. And with that, we are done with quest cleanup. Uh, we just have one more thing to do before we head to the final dungeons. We uh, we get to do the uh, the parade ourselves around Tokyo section. Basically, now that we have proven ourselves as the uh, as the hero of Tokyo, we get to uh, go around to all of the major cities of Tokyo and basically have everyone worship us. Be like, oh my gosh, it's Pokachu. They're so cool. To, uh, to gather the hope of everyone. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing next. I'm trying to remember where the Mario Bros thing came from, because it came from... Uh, came from an in-stream joke. I don't remember what the context of that was. Yeah, I always say SMT4A has probably the best gameplay in the series. Uh, from a baseline standpoint, there's just certain development decisions that make me like this game a little bit more. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Both are very good games. All right, Matador? Nope, no Matador. Y'all just missed him. We have a fiendless run. All right, so this is the final visit we'll be paying to the Terminal Guardian. He, uh, he summons the Heho Brigade, as I like to call them. <laughs> we got our friends Jack Frost, Black Frost, King Frost, and Frost Ace. And uh, they're going to get microwaved by Megidola, just like everything else. Real quick, we got a $15 donation by Sammy6345 that just says, he said something about breaking the palindrome. And then we had an $85 anonymous donation with no comment that uh, reset the palindrome to 21112 Very so, nice. Just takes $1 to break that again, and then another 100 to get it fixed. Seems like seems like somebody's not enjoying neatly organized numbers, and somebody else is enjoying it enough that they've been very generously donating to keep it back. The eternal conflict of law versus chaos being demonstrated in the donation total. <laughs> That's not how I was expecting law versus chaos to be tied to this <laughs> to this run. All right, so there the dude's like, yeah, you won the hunter tournament thing, the, the competition to see who could be the best, like no one ever was. And so now this uh, this broken toothed man, which is his name, is like, oh my goodness, it's Pokachu. And everyone's like, wow, I can't believe we're seeing you from the flesh. So well, now we get to go to three other places and uh, have similar conversations.
So here we are in Ueno. More people are like, oh my gosh, I know him! Loud thunderous applause. And Ikebukuro, despite the fact that Ikebukuro has been abandoned this entire game, there are, uh... Ikebukuro is one of the places we do have to visit. Yeah, right. We, uh, decided to hang up being a samurai just to parade ourselves around so people can, uh, shower us with praise. It's truly the most neutral option. Sign my smartphone. This one's good, too. I'm pretty sure one of them's like, Oh my gosh, is that him? Wow, he's so dreamy. He's such a babe. I'm pretty sure is actually one of the lines in that, uh, in that one. But hey, we obtained the, uh, the Orb of Neutrality. I'm, or Orb of Hope. That's also the Orb of Neutrality. And now we get to go to Ginza and give it to Masakato so the, the weird tentacle beast can eat it. As one does. Says maybe. And here we go. And I can uh, split that on my end. That was a uh, an hour and thirteen minute cleanup. I think most of that was multi demon. It was uh, multi demon fusion. The best cleanup I've ever had is exactly an hour. Like on the dot, it might be like an hour and one second. But uh, yeah, I think most of that was multi demon fusion. Just uh, raising some money for charity. And uh, so Masakato's like, all right, well, uh, I would now that you've done all this work to, you know, remove the ceiling, I would love to do that. However, I'm being hindered because the uh, the Lord's Chariot Merkaba and the Demon Lord Lucifer are kind of uh, hampering my power. So uh, now we have to go uh, take care of that. Which we're now entering the end game, which is my absolute favorite part of this entire run. I love this the end game in this run. It moves very, very quickly. Mostly a boss rush, but it's a pretty fun boss rush. Lots of cool fights. Very cool dungeons. This game, despite being like kind of a dungeon crawly RPG, doesn't actually have very many dungeons. So when we do get dungeons, it's pretty cool. But uh, we got to uh, track our way through uh, the uh, Room of Minotaur again. Got to remember the good old days of fighting Minotaur and him telling us to put on a good show. Uh, yeah, so this is the barrier that we wouldn't be able to proceed forward through. Uh, Masakato is uh, apparently very proficient at the art of eating barriers. So uh, he nom nom noms the, the barrier, and we can now enter uh, Purgatorium, which is the final dungeon in the Chaos route. Uh, if you went for Chaos Ending, you would find yourself in Ichigaya, climb out of Ichigaya, just come up here and you would instantly go to Purgatorium and you fight Merkaba, the game would be over. Alright. So this is the other dungeon I mentioned earlier where the enemies just kind of blend into the background. So, uh, warning, you might not see the enemies coming. Strong demon ahead. You want to go on? Also, they speak unto the filth. I speak unto the filth. All right. Uh, weak to Augie. Use Makara Karn. <laughs> you could, in fact, say that you'd never see it coming. That is definitely something you could say. 
if you were so inclined to make that re to make a uh, said reference. Bonk. Yeah. All right, so that's Casfield done. Uh, he kind of he's pretty bad at his job of killing us, so I've lovingly given him the nickname Kaz Fail. And there's our levels. You get no mind over Tarukaja. Happy dragon noises. Now, the other side is an angel horde. Don't need the Balm of Rising. I'm detecting a... I speak unto the filth. is uh, pretty typical for uh, large group encounters. Concentrate, taunt, Megidola. The uh, enemy goes bye-bye. Lather, rinse, repeat. All right, so the uh, the other part of this dungeon, other than just a boss rush, are uh, gravity mazes. All right, so forward flip. Right flip. Uh, right, loop right flip. And forward flip. Flip! Alright, and here is far left first for another large group. And it's kind of what we're doing right now. Especially if you're on Chaos Route, you're very, in a pretty literal sense, uh, invading heaven to get to Mikado. Or I guess Purgatory in this sense, but... Uh... Alright, so Srausha speaks unto the filth as well. And uh, once again, lather, rinse, repeat. And they go bye-bye. Sriracha. Eh, yeah, close enough. I mean, he's definitely pretty spicy and crispy now, so it's fitting. Alright, time for Azrael. Did you know that they speak unto the filth? I speak unto the filth. <laughs> Yet the filth remains. Well, I would have never guessed. Alright. Pass. Spoofadine. Maybe the real filth was the friends we made along the way. Uh, I don't want to risk it. Isabeau might kill, though. Come on, Isabeau. Oh. All right. Yeah. 
Word on the street is that they spoke under the filth. Didn't hear it from me, though. The angels are no longer here. Hmm, I wonder why. Alright, summon stone in this chest. Hopefully don't need it, but it's very good to have. And this is... Aniel. I speak unto the filth. One thing I will give this dude, dude probably spends, like, a fortune on hairspray. Like, imagine how much hair product you'd have to put in your hair to get it to make it, like, a full-on cone like that. Gotta admire the dude's dedication, if nothing else. Supposedly, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of magic and a very good hairspray can actually do that. Not as much work as you'd think, actually. <laughs> huh. Color me impressed. And Kaishin? Well, that was a guaranteed Kaishin, but it was nice nonetheless. Laura Filth, because you're <laughs> worth it. I would assume it would be because you're not worth it if you're, if you're Filth. Real quick, we have a one dollar donation from Lucifer that says, "Because I like chaos," and that disrupts <laughs> the palindrome once again, thus leaving <laughs> us unbalanced. <laughs> Very nice. I mean, when you gotta speak under the filth, but your uh, but your hair is on point. All right, so upcoming is Seraph, who is uh, the actually the most interestingly designed boss fight in this entire game. It's the only fight in this game that's not just a straight up DPS race. Def I was going to say, define interesting. That means a that could mean many things and about 80% of them are not good. <laughs> so uh, the mechanic behind Seraph here is that on uh, the first one of all of Seraph of Seraph's press turns, he'll use this ability called Lightwing that picks a random element of the four that corresponds to the ability or the element that you have to hit them with in order to uh, break the shield. If you do not break the shield, then uh, uh, kind of bad things happen. Also, if you try to get around the shield with Almighty, you get punished with uh, Almighty attacks of its own. You actually do have to play somewhat, somewhat strategically here. Uh, ideally, we see lots of blue. Uh and no green because you you may notice that we uh we have the dine or the heavy tier damage skill for every element except for uh force because zandine's basically useless except for like this specific fight so because of that we just have mazanma so oh well there's green now that i've mentioned it So ideally, not a lot of that, because it does uh, do substantially less damage. And we want blue, since uh, we do have the ice Playroma earrings on still. So we would do an extra 25% damage with that. And this should be the final turn. Meanwhile, Isabeau's uh, chipping away. Alright, green. Well. Nice basic attacks there, Seraph. Not sure what that was about, but okay. I'll take it. And that was Seraph down. That was, uh, like, one of the more interesting bosses in the game taken care of. Lucifer's Palace also has a somewhat unique fight, uh, in addition. But, uh, now we get to do another flip maze. This is left flip. Also, if you get disoriented easily, don't look at the map while I'm uh, doing these, when I'm in these upside down areas. 
forward left flip. Loop left to far right. Uh, since your uh, you are upside down, your cardinal direction is opposite what you would think it would be. So when you move left, your character goes right on the minimap. Uh, this is loop left, right, follow path. Right. -ah. We have a $99 anonymous donation. <laughs> Somebody is trying to start a fight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all I'm all for it. I'm all here for it. Please keep the uh, keep the palindrome war going. Let's this is a pretty if, uh... imbalanced war. I'm not gonna lie. It takes one dollar to break it, and another another several dozen to fix it. <laughs> you know, if the uh, if the forces of law truly uh, are truly dedicated, they can make it work or something. They're they're uh, they may have their work out cut out for them, but they are many. Or something like that. Alright. Luck incense, and then... The strength incense, or Boros. The other two are gonna get fused away. Oh, I already used it. I was like, uh, where is my summon? Or my 10-point card? <laughs> Donating 9,000 to make it harder to palindrome. Yeah, there you go. All right, this is the final, like, big-ish... Well, there's two fusions here. All right, uh, Masakado gets fused away into Rangda. Viltate goes, Agudine goes, Tetrakarn, Makara Karn in. Rangda's pretty cool because they repel uh, both, uh, both physical and gun. It's pretty rad. And then Julien gets ranked up one more time into Katsukotl. That <laughs> one Mega Man, yeah, right. All right. Uh, I need to swap my armor to. We're at the end of the game, and we're going to be wearing the starting armor for the rest of it. Because uh, resisting uh, ice is pretty useful, and not being weak to force is good. That's the main reason, because Merkaba has deadly wind, and we don't want to get hit by that. Alright, time for Merkaba. Here we uh, we find out that Jonathan uh, did a fusion dance with some angels and uh, has kind of become one himself. As uh, is now revealed to us. All right, Merkaba. This is not, in fact, his final form. Uh, I skipped that list. Use a Tyro Kaja to try to bait out to Kaja. And damage. Good job, Isabel. Yo, nice miss. That's really good. Uh, and that was a... What was that? Oh, it was probably Concentrate. Okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, 
All right, definitely want to have Makara Karn up. We're pretty close to a dialogue thing. There it is. Good job, Isabel. All right. For the people of Tokyo, we are filled with the power of neutrality and the power of making Merkaba crash into Thunder Rain. Truly the greatest power of all. And that's Merkaba phase one down. Uh, both of Merkaba's phases have about 6,000 HP, so uh, goes down fairly quickly. Uh, Lucifer is, fares a little bit better because both of his phases have uh, 8,000, but yeah. So now uh, Merkaba <laughs> unveils their true form. Uh, technically... <laughs> There isn't a canon ending, all of the ending, because multiverses, all of the endings are sort of canon. Uh, if you're talking about, like, if you're wanting to play this, then play 4A, then uh, 4A branches off of the neutral ending. All right, also, this song is phenomenal. But yes, 4A goes off of the neutral ending. But because something something multiverses, they're technically all canon in their own way. Uh, uh, quietly accept it. Alright, you might do bad things now, because I did that. Ow, alright. Bad things were not actually done, thankfully. Love to see it. Alright, um... Correct. Every SMT game is pretty self-contained, unless it's a direct sequel, like 4 to 4A, kind of. Okay. Uh, the scariest thing Merkaba can do is he has an attack called Hexagram. That will unavoidably instant kill one of my demons. Nice guy, Shin. Yo, nice. All right. I see your time speed running Dragon Quest Eight has come off in this in your commentary a little bit. Yeah, the Dragon Quest definitely had its uh, impact on my uh, <laughs> on my uh, memory. Oh, I know. All right, no hexagram. That's really nice. Nice. That was a good Merkaba. <laughs> Speed around dragon. That was a really good Merkaba. Is this got a gold split? Just barely not. Wow, that was a yeah. That was just barely not a gold. That was a really good Merkaba. Alright. Now I just have Lucifer left. Uh, nice thing about Lucifer's dungeon is that it's incredibly short. Uh, we will be uh, fighting Lucifer in about 10 minutes from now. That's how short the dungeon is. All right, so here Isabeau and us go our separate ways, unfortunately. Basically, Isabeau goes to gather all of the people of Mikado and help them all evacuate to Tokyo, since, you know, we're about to remove the ceiling. Which would be... Uh, Mildly catastrophic for the people living uh, above ground. So Isabel's gonna go get everyone in Mikado and evacuate them to Tokyo while we go and deal with Lucifer and then meet her at the Cafe Florida. So now we must journey alone 
back to Camp Ichigaya again. Because, <laughs> uh, to help facilitate his plan to uh, fill the world with demons, he kind of, Lucifer kind of just slapped his castle on top of the Yamato reactor. Yeah, like I said earlier, Wendigo is the most neutral demon because they're trying to raise the roof, which is exactly what we're doing here. We uh, we saw Wendigo earlier in the game and we're like, yo, we want to do that. That dude looks like he's having a party. <laughs> exactly. Going back to Ichigaya is the most chaotic action. Real quick, we got $15 from Wells. It says, whoo. I made a palindrome. Uh, nice. I, I I hate to break the news. We get two dollars from Lucifer. Just says, <laughs> "You dare challenge me? I am the filth." <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Oh, so uh, I forgot to rebuy Masakado from the compendium. So when I uh, when I poked the barrier there, Burroughs is like, "Hey, we don't have Masakado with us." So, uh, yeah. Fortunately, I had 45k in my uh, in my pocket so I could rebuy Masakado, but uh, that is actually something, a problem that you can run into in this game. If you fuse away Masakado, then spend all your money on fusions, uh, you can actually end up in a situation where you can't uh, afford to get into Lucifer's palace and then you kind of have to go find a way to get 45k Maka to uh, amend that. Yeah, so this is Lucifer's Palace. It's a pretty simple door maze. Uh, the way this game determines if you get into the right door or if you get to where you're going or not is it checks the sequence of doors that you enter. So for this first one, we go into the first door on the top right, and then we go to around to the second door on the top right, and we'll be fighting Lucifudge, who is uh, everyone's favorite bookkeeper. He also loves to show off his book. And he has truly impeccable skills of uh, closing and reopening the book to the exact same page. As uh, as he likes to demonstrate here. Alright, uh, I'm going to play this safe. In this case. Also, like, true to form with everything else in this game, Lucifudge has, like, no health. <laughs> As a, uh, a 2k Bufudine and then two bonks from Ouroboros and Rangdo were enough to, to take him out. Uh, but don't, don't be, uh, fooled. He comes back with a vengeance in, uh, 4a. He goes from being a joke fight to being one of the hardest bosses in the entire game in, uh, 4a. All right, now for Belial. Belial is the other fight in the game I alluded to that has a kind of interesting mechanic to it. Uh, this one is, you know, the SMT games are very much about proper uses of buffs and debuffs to to dispatch your enemies as effectively as possible. Well, he kind of turns that on his head and actually has a, uh, a an AI condition where if he detects any buffs or debuffs on you, uh, his next turn will be Silent Prayer, which removes all status changes on the field. Uh, into Diarahan, which is a uh, full HP restore. That's mean. <laughs> so, uh, no buffs or debuffs allowed. Uh, what is 4A? 4A is for Apocalypse. It is the, uh, the sequel slash spinoff slash alternate store, alternate ending of, uh, this game. Uh, the thing about his uh, his conditional uh, AI is that he only does that, you know, if he's alive to have a turn. So, uh, we're gonna taunt him anyway. And then, uh, Bufu... Oh, well, that's awkward. Oops. 
Well, that's fun. Let's just, uh... <laughs> Let's just, uh, recover that. Or, you know, he can kill me. Awesome. You know, let's, let's, uh, let's some more money for charity. That's what, 35 now? Correct. All right, we got 35 for charity because Flynn decided to miss when I was going for the kill. Excellent. Most excellent. All right, let's, let's try that again. I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever died to Lucifudge before. Or not Lucifudge, to Belial before. I have died to Lucifudge before, but I don't think I've ever died to Belial before. So, Mostly because that's a very specific thing that has to happen. So having joined just recently, how many deaths and how many fusion accidents is that? Uh, one fusion accident, and I guess we're at, what, what's 30 divided by 2? 15. 15. Yeah, so uh, one fusion accident and 15 deaths. Look, we just needed to hear more of this awesome song. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, to be fair, when I, uh, when I was doing this run, I was thinking, like, well, a good run has about eight deaths in it. Like, for, uh, for a while, that was about the number of deaths in world record. So I was like, you know, <laughs> I'm basically guaranteed to give a, give a decent chunk to charity. Okay, this is turn three, so let's, uh, debilitate him this time so that that's less likely to happen. Hey, what do you know? We killed him, wow. Fancy that. Exactly, it's all for charity. Flynn's just, uh, just looking out for the charity. All right, and uh, with that, we're now into the final stretch of Lucifer's Palace. That's uh, another door maze. Gonna focus a little bit for this. So if you have any uh, anything to share, this is probably the last uh, last uh, chance in the run. Um. So at the moment, uh, we are just coming up on the very end of this run. As I mentioned, you still have one final chance to get your donations in if you are interested in. Entering for a chance to win that Steelbook copy of Shin Megami Tensei 5. Uh, that, again, is $15 donation. It's also... lost my spot on the prize index. Uh, the red red Bluetooth wired, wireless pro controller. Um, if you donate any time between this run and the next one. And we do still have plenty of incentives coming up. So when you're donating, please do consider checking the add incentives button and you'll have plenty of things that you can uh, put your money towards such as file names such as uh bid wars and plenty of the upcoming runs today have plenty of those final fusion of the game so uh as much as it saddens me to say this and as useful as ouroboros has been this entire run it is uh, unfortunately time for us to say goodbye to Ouroboros. And instead, we'll be replacing Ouroboros with a multi-headed snake friend. <laughs> uh, reason being, Orochi Knoll's ice. Lucifer has Glacial Blast. So has a chance of uh, crashing into that. Which is always very useful. All right. Dexterity, incense on Rangda. And then chakra pot on cats. All right. Looks like we'll, uh, fortunately be coming in just barely overestimate, but, uh, still really close. I mean, I estimated 720. It's going to be about 720. Yeah. The real Mothman is uh, inside each and every one of us, in our heart and soul. Alright, so uh, so Walter turns into an alien, I mean uh, Lucifer. 
Uh, to finish on est it'll finish about like on estimate. It'll be like a um, seven. If this fight goes well, it'll be like a seven twenty one. Lucifer's got some mad David Bowie energy going on here. Yeah, he's definitely got the definitely got the output. All right. Do that. Evil shine. Oh, I forgot to equip the Hunter Crown. Oops. Eh, it's fine. We'll just do more damage to him instead. Balances out, right? Um, definitely supposed to have the Hunter Crown here so Flynn doesn't get panicked by, uh, by, uh, Evil Gleam every time he uses it. Fine. Like I said, benefit of the fact that we don't have the, uh, the Hunter Crown on. We're still wearing the Ice Ring, so this fight, uh, provided we don't get panicked, uh, constantly, we will do uh, a lot more damage to him. Alright, once again, for the people of Tokyo... Evil Shine, please do not panic me. Well, it is guaranteed to panic you. That's the thing with Evil Shine, is Evil Shine's guaranteed to panic if it lands. Uh... All right, that's two instant recoveries, though. That's very nice. And that's phase one down. Yes. Not only does he have a throbbing arm, but he's about to uh, pull off a pretty cool hat trick with it. Uh, ladies, gentlemen, and all of our binary non-binary friends, I would like to present to you all the miracle of life as uh, Lucifer demonstrates how one uh, gives birth through their arm, arm tumor. Oh, look at the baby. And it's wearing Walter's scarf, too. That's a phrase no one ever wants. All right, once again, we got an amazing final boss theme here. All right, so Lucifer 2 always opens up this fight by using an ability called Kingly One. Uh, Kingly One uh, sends a random demon back to the stock. In this case, he chose Quetzalcoatl. Uh, the funny thing about Kingly One... Uh, the main character is not immune to being targeted by it. Let's. Does the fight uh, keep going, or is that instant death? <laughs> so, uh, it just it whiffs basically. If he targets the main character, if he targets MC with Kingly One, it just whiffs completely. So that's a good thing. Oh yeah, it's absolutely it's a it's what we want to see. It's just kind of hilarious that they didn't take that into account. All right, so he's at minus two. We don't ever want to get Lucifer to plus uh, to minus three because he'll Dakunda it off. All right. Nice. Glacial Blast hit everyone but Orochi. Perfect. All right. Stare back calmly, and we get a bunch of press turns now. This is the uh, hashtag big damage turn. Arcadia. Dine. Big damage. Uh, I should have passed with you. It's fine. Nice. Mo uh, most of Lucifer's attacks are physical, and so the devs just decided to forgot or made the conscious decision that Lucifer doesn't read shields. And so as a result of this, uh, about half of his attacks result in, uh... Oh, nice. I love, uh, Orochi not getting hit by any of these Glacial Blasts. Alright, just in case I don't kill here. And that's Lucifer down! Decent fight. <laughs> Especially considering I just 
forgot completely spaced on equipping the hunter crown. That was uh, a good fight. Yeah. Uh, so this is looking like it's going to be like a 722. Yeah, uh, Orochi got hit by the first one, and then like the next like two or three were uh, were whiffs. It's always kind of funny. And we did it. We have uh, defeated Lucifer and Merkaba. The final thing to do is uh, walk back to uh, the Cafe Florida. Do have enough for a stoma sword, thank goodness. And there are still enemies around, so uh, you can die on the walk back from Lucifer. It has never happened to me, uh, but I do know uh, a runner who it has happened to. Thankfully, it was not in a timed run; it was in a practice run. But uh, I have seen it happen, and it's. Uh, not fun to suddenly realize, like, oh, well, it looks like I'm fighting Lucifer again. That was a... Like, no enemies in my way. That's unusual. Alright, like I mentioned before, the terminal in Shibuya is so far out of the way from everything else that it's actually faster to walk from uh, Camp Ichigaya all the way to Shinjuku, skipping Shibuya entirely, despite the fact that we pass right next to it. It's faster to just go to walk to Shinjuku manually. And uh, I lovingly refer to this strat as the uh, as the freedom walk because it was uh, my complaining about the location of the uh, terminal that led to this discovery. And I will uh, willingly admit I'm the only person that calls it that, but I still find it funny. My greatest contribution to SMT4 speedrunning. Saving 15 seconds at the end of the run. I almost got attacked by that enemy. That would have been really bad. Fortunately, death with this party is kind of unlikely due to Rangda uh, repelling physical stuff, and the most dangerous thing we can run into is physical stuff. And here we go. So we got, uh, we have some dialogue here. Uh, a cutscene, three three lines of dialogue from Isabeau, and then it will be time. So time's coming up in about a uh, minute and a half, two minutes. So here we find that uh, the K and Hugo have made their way down to. Uh, down to Tokyo and are enjoying a nice drink with uh, Fujiwara and Skins to celebrate uh, Mikado and Tokyo coming together again. We get a level up from this quest. We dump it into luck because luck is the best stat for uh, group uh, morale. And uh, also shoutouts to uh, Ketsukata learning Suku Kaja at level 70 when multiple other things have learned uh, Luster Candy by this point. Ketsukata does his best. Yep, it's for New Game Plus. Uh, there's an option in New Game Plus to keep your levels. All right, so Masakato consumes the uh, the spirits of goodwill and spite that we got from Merkaba and Lucifer, and uh, basically turns into malice from Shadow of the Colossus uh, in order to remove the dome.
Uh, yeah, so that's what the walk around thing is for after Lucifer is it's intended for you to at that point do all of the post game stuff like fighting Beelzebub or doing the DLC. So you have uh, that extra EXP. You can also revisit the alternate Tokyos via the reactor if you so choose. Uh, the stores in Infernal Tokyo have inherited uh, some really good items. All right. Uh, three, two, one, time. GG. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Well done. Thank you very much. You know, thank Go you on. everyone for the GGs. No, going over a little less, a little overestimate isn't anyone's favorite thing to do. But I mean, considering uh, you died, what double your your quote unquote estimate for a good run? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, since I had fifteen deaths, and I was guessing eight was uh, about that. So yeah. <laughs> so thirty five dollars total. Yeah, $35 to charity. I'll uh, be sure to send that out before I pass out because it's now 7 a.m. where I am. <laughs> Alrighty, thank you so much. Do you have any final shout-outs or um, requests yeah. or anything? Yeah, just uh, shout-outs to the SMT speedrunning community. Uh, shout-outs to Coolzo especially. Uh, this game is pretty much his baby. Uh, a lot of the... Uh, most of the speedrun stuff and stuff is all him. Uh, comes up with amazing strats that are quite consistent and uh, runs very, very well. Awesome dude, super helpful. Helped me out a lot when I was learning this run. Uh, Cools was awesome. The entire SMT speedrunning community, shout outs to them for being a great group of people to, uh, to hang out with and to uh, be a part of their community. Also, shout outs to all of the, uh, all the admins and mods and stuff for making this marathon possible. Had a ton of fun. Very glad I could run in it, and uh, thanks for having me. And, uh, yeah, I'll be around in chat, but uh, I'll catch you all later. All right. Thank you very much, Freedom Pulse. So coming up next, we have Monster Sanctuary New Game Plus Glitchless by Shawnee7188, so stay tuned.